गुड इवनिंग डॉक्टर्स आई एम आडिबल आई एम क्लियर या गुड इवनिंग शांस हेलो लोकेश हेलो जावेद या वेलकम बैक हेलो जिमी या हेलो मेडी जाब हेलो यूट्यूब इन हेलो राज या हेलो शेषाद हाय बाइसला आई एम गुड साइनाग हेलो हेलो उत्पल या देन गुड इवनिंग या लाइक गुड इवनिंग फॉर एवरीवन एंड टुडे इट्स अवर फर्स्ट आईबीक्यूबीएस रिवीजन एंड इट्स अ वर्शन टू या आई एम गुड जिमी थैंक यू हाउ अबाउट यू या इट्स अवर वर्शन टू ऑफ अवर आईबीक्यूबीएस रिवीजन एंड दिस सेशन इट्स कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ टू पार्ट्स फर्स्ट पार्ट विल बी डूइंग फ्रॉम टू विल बी डन टुडे एंड द सेकंड पार्ट विल बी ऑन द अपकमिंग डे बाय टुमारो ओके फाइन and today we'll be completing um, mainly of the preclinical and the basic uh, basic subjects okay and it will be consisting of anatomy physiology biochemistry pathology uh, forensic medicine and few parts of anesthesia and psm also okay this will be our uh, total um, subjects which are covering means for the day today fine yeah hi nazmul Yeah, yeah, sure. Like there will be a few questions which will be uh, image based, and it will be most probably it will be from this session. Fine. Yeah, that is the motive of the session, and the session will be consisting of means like today's session we have a break in between. Yeah, ha, Hindi to bol sakte hain koi na, but uh, we'll try to be more universal with uh, English. Agar jo bhi pneumonia ke agar ag, apko koi bhi doubt hai na, to ap puch sakte. We can. Uh, Um, hi Surya, and we can talk in Hindi, and we can describe them in Hindi. Fine, this will be the motto. Hi, yeah, Surya. It will. These are the basics of this session is to uh, get a good score and get to clear um, your FMG exam. Okay, that's the basis of this sessions. Fine, and this session it will be of today's session. It will be of around four hour forty five minutes to five hour fifteen minutes, and there will be a sh short break in between for fifteen minutes. Fine. and if you insist we'll discuss yeah um we'll discuss about this uh, in detail also fine and if you have any doubts you just put up in the comment section or else keep it with you um we'll discuss about your doubts at the end of the session fine yeah mm. teshina like don't worry about the pdf the pdf will be shared in dr banu prakash sir group okay fine and don't worry about anything just uh, be focused be focused about the session we'll start learning um by the way so Uh, with this flow we'll get uh, rid of everything and you will get the pdf for sure in the group okay fine don't worry about the pdf and just keep on answering fine and without wasting much time we'll start with our session okay fine the first image for the day could anyone tell me yeah hi but to prakash like could anyone tell me whether this is a ct image or mri image Yeah, the paper level, yeah, correct sir, man. It's a MRI image. Yeah, correct. Nani, it's a MRI image. Could anyone describe me what which type of uh, MRI is this? Is it a T1 weighted MRI or a T2 weighted MRI? Yeah, like many of you are attempting it, just uh, uh, see much more clearly. Like look into the circle spaces and look into the ventricles. Shubhashri, look into the ventricles and circle spaces. Yeah, correct, Ashwin. Yeah, Rajeshwari, are you getting it correct? And others, you are also getting it correct. Fine. Yeah, just look into the circle spaces. Yeah, if you are able to see this image or if you are able to appreciate this image, it's a T2 weighted MRI image. Yeah, correct, Lokesh. Yeah, Jason. Yeah, you are getting it correct. Yeah, Gaurav. Yeah, correct. Yeah, it's a T2 weighted MRI image. And like, uh, if you see this recent FMG patterns, you are able to know that like they will be asking uh, questions. Questions like mainly they will be asking at least one number of like n number of questions, but at least minimum one question will be asked from this uh, transverse section of the CNS. Fine. So uh, with the day, we'll progress with this anatomical landmarks of this 
part fine one minute there's a small glitch in my pen let me correct Yeah, fine. Let's move on. Yeah, hi, Ubesh. Yeah, nice to hear from you. Yeah. If you see this image, like mainly they will be asking about the landmarks. If you see this images, could anyone tell me what is this structure which is being represented or marked here? Yeah, this is what? This is the caudate lobe. This is the caudate lobe. So, if you see this adjacent to this ventricles, this adjacent to the ventricles, if you will able to see this type of nucleus, this nucleus which is what which is the caudate nucleus or which is what which is the caudate lobe fine if there is any damage to this caudate lobe could anyone tell me in which condition does it result in yeah correct lokesh ashwin yeah gaurav you are getting it correct if just remember if any damage to this caudate lobe it will result into the condition known as chorea okay it will result into this condition known as chorea. And if you come down, if you are able to see this lens shaped nucleus, could anyone tell me what is the name of this lens shaped nucleus? Yeah, guys, try. Don't hesitate to answer. Yeah, try. This is what? Yeah, correct. Yeah, guys. Yeah, Ashwin. Yeah, yeah Jason. Yeah, you are getting it correct. It is what it is there. Lentiform nucleus. It is the lentiform nucleus. Okay, fine. And this lentiform nucleus, it will be consisting of two parts. Yeah, Lokesh, yeah, Hafiza, yeah, Dilshad, yeah, we're getting it correct. And if there, if you see this lentiform nucleus, it will be made up of two parts. One is this globus pallidus and this putamen. Globus pallidus and the putamen. Just remember. And if you come down, if you are to see, this is the third ventricle. And adjacent to the third ventricle, there will be a structure known as thalamus. Just remember, adjacent to the third ventricle, there will be a thalamus. Yeah, yeah, correct, guys. And if you are able to see, in between this caudate nucleus and this lentiform nucleus, you will be able to appreciate some structure. Like this structure, it is what it is the internal capsule. It is the internal capsule. Just remember, it is the internal capsule. And there will be two limbs. There will be an anterior limb of the internal capsule and there will be a posterior limb. Okay. It is the anterior part and it is the posterior part. Just remember. Fine. Just don't forget this uh, image, just keep a remind about it. Fine. With this understanding, we'll move on to our next part. Okay. If you see this image, this is the sagittal section. And we know in the sagittal section, it will cut the body into the right and left. Fine. Yeah, location, we're getting it correct. Fine. Yeah. And like and sometimes they will ask you very simple questions, but don't don't get tricked. Okay. If you see this structure, this is what this is the cerebellum. And if you see some structure which is be having some kind of belly fine if you see this kind of belly which will be what which will be what which will be the pons and and the next to the pons the structure which is below the pons which will be what it will be the medulla fine could anyone tell me with which foramen by or by which foramen yeah thank you yogesh yeah nice ashwin yeah if you are able to see this uh, medulla this medulla will be coming out through which foramen it will be what it will be by the foramen known as foramen of magnum. Okay? Just remember. Fine. And next, if you see, they will ask sometimes, they will ask one more question. Yeah. Above to this pons, it will be a midbrain. Observe. Fine. And above to this pons, there will be a midbrain. Fine. This is the midbrain structures. And there will be a, one more structure known as carpus callosum. If you see this carpus callosum, this carpus callosum, it will be consisting of two parts. The anterior part, it will be what? Carpus callosum, it will be consisting of three parts. The anterior part it is known as genu. It is the genu of carpus callosum, and there will be the posterior part which is known as the splenium of the carpus callosum. Whereas the last part, the part which is joining this genu and the splenium, it will be what? It will be the it will be the body of this carpus callosum. Yeah, yeah, but to Prakash, it's correct, yeah. Fine. Yeah. Like I think so few of you guys you are just watching this video in a uh, Latin part of it. So just Click this live button and just be uh, live with us. Fine. And if you move to the next slide, you will be able to see this CSF flow. 
So, you know, the CSF, it will be formed from this lateral ventricles and from the lateral ventricles, it will be flowing to this, yeah, yeah, Ashwin, there will be the fourth ventricle, it will be from this pons and the cerebellum, correct, yeah. If you see this lateral ventricle, this lat from this lateral ventricle, it will come to this third ventricle and from the third ventricle, it will go to the fourth ventricle and fourth ventricle, it will start flowing into this central canal of the spinal cord, fine. From this lateral ventricle to the third ventricle, it, it will come from this lateral ventricle to the third ventricle by a foramen known as foramen of Monroe, fine, Monroe. And from this third ventricle to the fourth ventricle, it will come by this foramen known as or duct known as aqueduct of Sylvius, aqueduct of Sylvius, fine. Next, from the fourth ventricle, it will be flowing into this central canal of the spinal cord and it will be connecting to the connecting to the adjacent CSF losing structures, fine. Yeah, location, yeah, it will, there will be two of, uh, two foramens, like one will be like foramen of Mon Majindi and there will be Leshka, just remember, fine. Leshka and Majindi. Just remember these two things, fine. Yeah, correct, Ashwin. And the Leshka, it will be, just remember, they, they will sometimes make you to confuse. It will be the lateral most structure. It will be the lateral one. Just remember. Fine. This is all about this CSF flowing structures. And we know if there is any condition, means there might be any tumor which may cause obstruction and it may lead to this condition known as hydrocephalus. Fine. And this type of obstructive hy hydrocephalus will be uh, in this type of ob obstructive hydrocephalus, there will be enlargement of this proximal structures. Okay. Fine. Just remember. Yeah. M for medial and L for lateral. Correct location. Fine. With this understanding, we will move on to our next part. If you see our next part, it will be the circle of villus. Okay, it will be the circle of villus. And if you see the circle of villus, we know it will be, no, like it is up updated one, like you will be able to see this updated slides uh, in the up upcoming slides, fine. Yeah, yeah, utopian, yeah, it is correct, it is the circle of villus. And we know, the circle of villus, it will be formed from this, mainly from this artery, which is what, which is the internal carotid artery, okay, and between this posterior cerebral artery. And we know this internal cerebral artery, it will be giving, means our internal carotid artery, it will be giving the branches as this middle cerebral artery and the anterior cerebral artery, fine. And between this anterior cerebral artery and this anterior cerebral artery, uh, and this posterior cerebral artery, there will be two connecting branches, fine? Yeah, yeah, correct, Chaudhary, it will be like, there is the MCA is not a part of the circle of villus, fine? And this is what, this is the posterior cerebral artery, which will be forming from this basilar artery, okay? This is the basilar artery, fine? And these are the small, small branches, which are known as what? Which are known as what? Pointing branches, pointing branches. And this basilar artery, it will be formed from this two vertebral arteries vertebral arteries and this two vertebral arteries it will be coming from this yeah this yeah correct yeah location you are getting it correct and this two vertebral arteries it will be coming from the foramen known as like it will be passing two foramens like it will be coming from this cervical vertebra with a foramen known as foramen transversum and on the and on the upper aspect when it's come inside it will be traveling with the foramen known as foramen of magnum like we studied right the same foramen which is being uh, giving passing to this same spinal cord and the medulla, it is the same foramen of mangram in which this vertebral artery too also passes. And this vertebral artery on anterior side and anterior side, it will be giving a branches known as anterior spinal artery. Whereas in posterior, it will give a branch known as posterior inferior cerebellar artery. Fine, it, is, it will give a branches known as posterior inferior cerebellar artery. Fine. And, and if you see, this is the posterior communicating artery and this is the anterior communicating artery and ACA will give you a, yeah sure like I will tell you like which are the important questions which can be asked also yeah sure yeah like and it will give you branches like in the ophthalmic up fine and just a one more only one thing you need to remember about the circle of villus it is what which of the following artery won't be forming the circle of villus just remember MCA won't form the circle of villus fine and the artery forming will be this ICA, ACA, ACOM, PCOM and the PCA. Just remember, fine. Just, these are the arteries which will be forming this circle of villus. Just remember and 
<clears throat> and if there is an aneurysm or any of these things, most commonly it will be at, in and around the circle of villus. And if there is any rupture, yeah, correct. Yeah, correct, Lokesh. Yeah. If there is an aneurysmal rupture, it will be resulting in the subarachnoid hemorrhage. And could anyone tell me what is the name of this headache you will be able to see in a case of subarachnoid hemorrhage? Waiting for your answers, guys. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, Utopian. Yeah, Gaurav. Yeah, signing it is known as what? Thunderclap headache. Okay, fine. It is the worst headache of their life. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Nani, yeah, location is correct. Yeah, Jaimin. Yeah, it is what it is known as what? Thunderclap headache. Nice, guys. Like, that's awesome. Like, just keep the spirit, keep it going. Fine. And with the same thing, when you move on to the next part, <coughs> sorry, you'll be able to see this different types of foramens. Like, uh, there are uh, means like, there are few means few times they don't want to make you answer the uh, make you answer the questions much easily so sometimes they will give this type of images and and first we'll start with this from means or this plate which is known as what cribriform plate if you see this cribriform plate what is the nerve which is being passed from this cribriform plate yeah it forms the crest known as crestagli yeah it is the first yeah, yeah, got it is correct. It is the first canal now, which is what which is the olfactory now. Next one, it is the optic foramen. If you see this one, this is the optic foramen, and we know in the optic foramen <coughs> there will be passing of this cranial now, too, which is the optic now. Yeah, correct, Lokish, yeah, Garo. Yeah, you are getting it correct, correct, Jamin. And next one, it is the superior orbital fissure. And if you see the superior orbital fissure, the superior orbital fissure mainly supplies the nerve which supplies the eyeball, means uh, which supplies the muscles for the eyeball movement we know there is this eyeball will be supplied by this nerves of cranial number three and then la6 and so4 by the mnemonic means the sixth cranial nerve and the fourth cranial nerve and the sensory suppletions yeah 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 god correct yeah rose yeah alpha yeah, correct yeah and it also supplies this sensory supply which is what which is the which is the ophthalmic division of the mandibular uh, ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve which is what which is the v1 now okay fine and next one there are three foramens which are means which are in concurrent yeah correct Gaurav. yeah if there are three foramens which are in current can mean concurrent the set remember as rose fine there is also one more guy means one more are you known as rose i just saw fine yeah there is also known as rose or rose fine if you see this is what this is the foramen of rotundum okay and this is what this is the foramen of oval and we know that foramen oval there is a structures which are passed by can be remembered by this mnemonics known as male fine and in which in this three the common is that the superior orbital foramen and the foramen of rotundum and oval all of this will be having this branches of this trigeminal now yeah like yes is for it is the spinosum correct if you see this is the spinosum one okay and all of this they will be giving this or this uh, transversing this uh, branches of the trigeminal nerve and v1 it will be from this superior orbital fissure v2 which is what which is the maxillary branch will be from this foramen of rotundum whereas ovally will give this branches of v3 which is what which is the mandibular nerve take care remember like it is a male so if it is a male means he, he will be always also known as man so just remember it is also known as male and man fine next one we know foramen of spinosum and it is being repeatedly tested like for example they will give you a case scenario in which there is a recent history of road traffic accident in which um yeah the other structures uh nice rows the other structure it's uh they are the accessory meningeal artery lesser petrosal nerve on the emissary veins take a correct correct rows fine okay fine if you see this spinosum they will give this typical history of recent history of road traffic accident and with this road traffic accident they will give this foramen which is being um uh, transversing a uh, vascular structure is being damaged and this damage lead to which type of hemorrhage fine and we know the spinosum will give rise to which of the means give passage to which of the following arteries are the veins could anyone answer in the comment section and if you know this artery you know this will be leading to cause of condition known as extra dural hemorrhage yeah correct Lokesh correct yeah 
there is also like nervous spinosis yeah middle meningeal artery yeah main that's what i need to hear like yeah correct location correct gaurav it is what it is the mini, middle meningeal artery yeah we also know about this structure known as sterion in which also like posterior to it the middle meningeal artery which passes and means there is it also passes through this foramen known as foramen spinosum if there is any damage to it it will result into this condition known as extra dural hemorrhage yeah it is what it is a idly shaped hemorrhage yeah fine we'll study this too yeah yeah, extra dural hemorrhage, it is a idly shaped hemorrhage. Yeah, nice gauro. Fine. I think so. You remember this mnemonic. Fine. Next, if you see, this is what this is the internal acoustic canal or this internal acoustic meatus. And this internal acoustic canal, uh, obviously, like it is acoust, means like it is a hearing one. Yeah, it is a lens shape too. Yeah, correct. Yeah. If you see this, this will be giving rise to two nerves, like are giving flow to these two nerves known as seventh cranial nerve and the eighth cranial nerve. Fine. The internal acoustic canal. And just remember why it's important because in a case of acoustic schonoma or vestibular schonoma, you will be able to see that um, the, the one of the sign is what is that compression of this seventh cranial nerve and it can lead to the cranial nerve palsy also. So, just remember this around this internal aqu acoustic canal, um, there will be or into the internal acoustic canal, it will be the seventh and eighth nerve which will be passing. Yeah, correct, Rose, it will produce this um, bilateral ice cream cone appearance or this ice cream cone appearance on. Um, contrast MRI, contrast enhanced MRI. Fine. Next one, if you are able to see, this is what this is this jugular foramen in which the rest 9, 10, and 11. 11 passes, which is what which is the accessory now. And there are two parts of accessory now one is the cranial part and the spinal part. And the cranial part of this accessory now, which passes through this jugular foramen. Okay. Next one will be this hypoglossal kernel. And we know hypoglossal kernel will give means will give passage to this yeah correct Gaurav will give passage to this snow which is what which is the 12th cranial now which is the hypoglossal now next we know this is the foramen of magnum and we know we already saw that the medulla passes through this and also the vertebral artery and also this spinal part of the spinal part of and also the spinal part of accessory now fine yeah correct rose sir please share blank pdf mm. Mm. yeah sure like um i'm not sure like whether it is shared now like because it's too late um i will ask the team like if possible i will share you the blank pdf in the break fine and the um, fill down also like the another one also will be um shared to you okay so don't worry about it fine i will ask the team to share as soon as possible like or else i will share you this thing in a break fine okay exam prep with this understanding, we'll move on to the next part. And in recent also, uh, there is a trend of asking about this uh, transverse section of the CNS. And also, they are they are repeatedly asking about this cadaveric images of this, um, either this thoracic cavity or this abdominal cavity or some part of the pelvis also. Fine. If you see this image, you'll be able to see it is a, it is the cadaveric image of this thoracic transverse section. That is the thorax image. And you will be able to see this structure which is being adjacent to the adjacent to the vertebra could anyone tell me yeah correct Lokesh what is this structure you are waiting for your answers yeah yeah correct true self yeah it is what, what is the it is the iota and could anyone tell me what is this iota is it ascending iota descending iota yeah Lokesh correct yeah it is what it is the what is the descending iota Fine. It is a descending iota. And if the iota is being descending, means there's, there should be some part in which the iota must be ascending. So, this is what? This is the ascending iota. This is the ascending iota. Fine. Next one. And behind this ascending iota, yeah, Gaurav, yeah, Lokesh, correct? Yeah. And if you see this, posted to this iota, there are these trunks which are known as pulmonary trunk or this main pulmonary artery. Fine. Next one. If you see this muscular structure which is being compressed, it is being compressed and which is at the around the superior level, around the T4 level because the arch is now like uh, below the T4 level because if you are able to see there is no formation of this arch whereas this iota which, which is being already formed. So, it will be somewhat near to that level of T4, T5. So, it will be what? It will be like, yeah, no, the IVC will be the, the smaller one, it will be the IVC, fine. Whereas this one, this compressed one, Okay, it will be what it will be the esophagus. Fine, esophagus. Just remember this. Fine, and the most of this vascular structure it will be remain uh, closer to the bones. Fine. 
because it's uh, it's over the superior aspect it will be very small and is possible sometimes it won't be even visible because it's more superior section because we know ivc it will uh, end uh, in more inferior aspect even fine and this will be what this will be the this will be the esophagus just remember don't get confused because the small small questions they will ask and will get confused fine with this understanding we'll move on to our next part if you see this image the if you see this image what is the most anterior most chamber of this heart You are waiting for your answers? Yeah, for azagus means just remember it will be mostly they will giving means they will be giving this they won't be uh, it will be a, a transverse section uh, section it will be difficult to identify mostly they will be asking in the uh, diaphragmatic level or they will be asking in the anterior posterior level or in the whole body level they will be asking okay so don't worry don't get confused yeah correct it is what it is the right ventricle it is the most anterior most chamber okay anterior most chamber fine and we know the posterior most chamber it will be what it is the left atrium okay it will be the left atrium so and we know this left atrium it will be around this level means or it will be near to the structure known as esophagus fine so if there is any enlargement of this left atrium this can present as a dysphagia so if there is any left atrial hypertrophy this can present as esophageal conditions known as like dysphagia just remember okay the esophageal dysphagia and this is what this is the yeah correct sir yeah this is what this is the iota which is what which is the descending descending iota which which will be adjacent to the vertebrae and if you we'll see this small structure it is what it is the inferior vena cava it will be the inferior vena cava fine with this understanding we'll move on to the next part you are sitting in opd uh, they will be giving this question like the a patient is presenting with uh, some complaints or this features of some uh, respiratory difficulties on chest x ray on chest x ray pa view you are able to see this kind of appearance fine you, you are not able to see this costophrenic angle there is a blunting of this costophrenic angle okay there is a blunting of this costophrenic angle what is the invest means like, like no uh, locus just look into the Im image image properly fine yeah, like first before answering it just look into the image like if it is pneumothorax it will be a deep sulcus sign fine okay like we get confused but don't get confused fine if there is any pneumothorax it will be a deep sulcus sign but if there is any any fluid collection or if there is any pleural effusion the costophrenic angle will be blunting okay there is a two different terms if there is any blunting of this costophrenic angle it will be seen in a case of it will be seen in a case of effusions whereas the deep sulcus sign it will be seen in a case of pneumothorax fine and if there is any case of pleural effusion pleural effusion you will be able to means you need to do means what are the mnemonic explaining which of the cranial nerves are present adherence to them like means uh, Najib Abdul Samad explaining of like I couldn't get your questions just uh, um, uh, uh, kindly reframe it so that I can uh, like I can um, give you a more pro appropriate answer yeah if there is if you're able to see some levels it will be what it will be a hydronemothorax whereas if you're able to see just a level or just a ellis curve formation it will be what it will be just hydrothorax fine and for this yeah correct uh, location and if you're able to just see this ellis curve it will be a hydrothorax fine and in the case of hydrothorax we'll do this procedure which is known as what thoracocentesis thoracocentesis and this thoracocentesis it will be it will be um uh, they'll be asking these questions in a case of thoracocentesis, where you will able to where you will insert this needle in the upper part of the lower rib or this lower part of the upper rib what is what will be your answer answer in the comment section yeah correct location yeah we can we can do it in the 50 ics like mostly we'll do it on the posterior surface like in, near to the inferior border of the scapula which will be around the eight intercostal space yeah it will be the upper yeah, yeah correct adash yeah rose yeah absal yes yes i and exam prep location yeah, you were getting it correct it will be what it will be the upper part of the lower rib. it will be the upper part of the lower rib. fine 
because we know in the lower part there will be a neurovascular bundles to avoid damage to it will do in the upper part of the lower rib just remember this fine with this understanding we'll move on to our next part if you see this image it's a it's a barium swallow of the esophagus and this esophagus you will be able to see some type of constrictions we know there are few normal constriction yeah yeah correct yeah correct others yeah correct if you able to see there are few normal constrictions and few constrictions of this esophagus which will be formed when there is any abnormalities and if you able to see the first constriction it will be what it will be there will be physiology the first constriction it will be what it will be the constriction at the level of cricopharynx fine next one will be around the same level like one will be at the level of 9 inches and from the incisor and next one will be at the level of 11 incisors 11 inches from the incisors and if you see arch of aorta will be at the level of around the level of l4 which will be forming this second one fine and third one will be by the left it's not a main bronchus it is the left it is the left bronchus left main bronchus you can tell it us it's not the main trachea it is the left main bronchus yeah the yeah, correct rose it's the 25 cm from the aortic arch yeah yeah means like inches you can convert into the uh, centimeters even okay fine yeah third one will be that the level of 40 cm or 11 inches from the um, incisors fine next one will be at the level which is entering into the diaphragm which will be entering into the diaphragm okay could anyone tell me at which diaphragmatic level the esophagus enters yeah correct sir mark Yeah, guys, don't get confused. Yeah, fine. Yeah, and don't worry. Like, uh, uh, we'll we'll study about this, this uh, diaphragmatic opening. You will so that you will be uh, like more thorough with it. Fine. If you see this, means next we'll study this that only. Like, esophagus will be at the level of T10. Okay, esophagus will be entering at the level of T10. Okay, yeah, T8 will be the IVC. Correct example. <coughs> yeah, yeah. If you see. If you see this image, the first constriction it will be by this iota. Next one it will be by this. In, in this image, if you able to see, it is the constriction of the iota. Next one will be the left main bronchus. Okay, and we know this constriction. This is what this is a diaphragmatic constriction. And before this diaphragmatic constriction, if you able to see, if there is any infringement, we study the posteriormost heart structure. It will be this what it is the left atrium. If there is any left atrial hypertrophy, it leads to this compression over the esophagus and can cause some type of constrictions okay fine just remember these things a yeah, correct rsr <coughs> yeah and next one if you able to see this is the this is the image this is the image of this uh, diaphragm or cadaveric diaphragm which is showing this openings and first one we know which has been remembered by this mnemonic known as voice of, voice of america first one it will, it will be what it is the vena caval opening next one will be the esophageal opening next one will be the Iotic opening, fine. If you see this veno caval opening, yeah, correct, Adash. Yeah, yes, I, yeah, now you are getting it correct. Yeah, Lokesh, correct. Yeah, RSR, you are getting it correct. If you see this vena caval opening, it will be at the level of T8. Next one, if you see this esophageal opening, it will be at the level of T10. Next one, this aortic opening, it will be at the level of T12. And if you see this vena caval opening, means we know by the name, the vena cava, it will be passing through this opening, and there will be few more structures. You can remember by this mnemonic known as R I P R RIP. Fine. I it's for it will be for IVC and R P for it will be for it will be the right phrenic nerve. It is the right phrenic nerve. Next one it is the esophageal opening. Could anyone tell me? Yeah, correct rose. Yeah. You could anyone tell me what is the structures along with esophagus which will be forming or passing through this T10 opening? Waiting for your answers, guys. Yeah, main, yeah, you will get the right, means like you can lead to the passage of this right gastric artery also. Yeah, the main one which we are, means which we are, ex we are expecting in the questions, it will be what it will be the vagus nerve. So just remember, ease of vagus will give passage to this nerve known as vagus nerve. Fine, vagus nerve, okay. Don't confuse with azygous, like yeah, azygous gastric branches of the, yeah, like in iota, means aortic, um, the branches of this esophagus from this iota also will get passes through this, yeah, fine, yeah, correct, guys, fine. Next, if you see this aortic opening, 
in this aortic opening there will be passage of this aorta and there also will be passage of this thoracic duct okay there also will be the passage of this thoracic duct just show under this one fine and there also will be passage of this azygous vein okay don't confuse with this fine the, here the azygous vein will pass whereas esophageal opening there will be passage of this vagus fine just remember next one you will able to see this transverse section of this abdomen could anyone tell me what is this structure which is be in green in color a correct arrow sir correct rose waiting for answers guys keep on answering yeah it is what a yeah, correct rose yeah it is will be this what it is the gallbladder fine it is the gallbladder and if you see this is the means this is more superior transverse section like so if you are able to see this is a small part of the liver okay it is a small part of the liver and if you see this image this is what this is the stomach means you will able to see this air filled structure yeah correct rahul correct lopesh correct nagma yeah correct baisla yeah correct a yeah, correct size yeah you are getting it correct fine and and we already studied this is what this is the vertebra and we know this adjacent to this vertebra what is this structure which is being passing or what is this structure a correct baisla it is what it is the it is the aorta which will be what which is the descending aorta fine it is not the ascending aorta because ascending aorta it will be from the heart and it will be ascending up and it will just come it will from the arch and it will come descending fine yeah correct sai yeah correct rose correct lokesha correct rashi and baisla fine and if you see this next image means there will will get confusion like whether the means like the muscular structure is esophagus or the ivc but whereas this level the level the stomach is already being formed so you will able to see this structure which is very large in structure along with com easily compressible it will be what it will be the inferior vena cava it will be the inferior vena cava just remember yeah correct uh, sashikala correct fine with this understanding we'll move on to the next part and recently they are started asking about this landmarks means they will give you about a small um, uh, landmark and they will ask you what is the vertebral level or what is the disc level they will be asking fine you able to see like last time they means like last to last time they asked this question means they mark this this part and they asked what is the disc or the what is the name of the disc level which is being um, which is being uh, into this um, superficial landmark so if you ask if they ask you about this jugular notch it will be located at around this t2 to t3 vertebra or it will be at the level of mm, vertebral disc between the t2 to t3 just remember these things okay fine next one if you see this image means we know this is what means <coughs> we know means about this iliac crest it will be forming this plane or this line known as tubercular line and this tubercular line it will be around this t4 means around this l3 to l4 and we know around this l3 to l4 we also in need of uh, diagnosing some conditions like meningitis uh, yeah correct location yeah in, in such conditions achalasia means some um, like i couldn't understand your questions kindly reframe it and uh, post it up the yeah, umbilical umbilicus uh, is also like it was more uh, superior uh, like it will be around the l3 and l4 fine and and posterior to this l3 and l4 we know like we will be um, doing this known as like uh, in case of any uh, meningitis to be diagnosed we will do this spinal puncture or this lumbar puncture and for this we will use this iliac crest as this landmark and we will use this line known as tophis line in which we used to withdraw this um, samples of the csf and will send for the investigations okay just remember these things fine next one as we talked before also like this is what this is the inferior border of the scapula and it will be near correspond to this level of t7 vertebra fine near correspond to the level of t7 vertebra and here where means like are below this levels we do this pleural effusion fine yeah correct side yeah you are getting it correct next one if you see this image you'll be able to see around the level of means around the level of l3 there is a origin of this artery could anyone tell me what is this artery is yeah correct arrow sir like i think so guys few of you are not in a exact light just uh, like click on your live button so that you will be in uh, aligned with the class fine if you see this structures we know the abdominal aorta it will be entering at the level of t12 once it enters it will give different type of branches fine and starting from the t12 
uh, till the till it bifurcates at the level of between L4 to L5. Fine. And if you see this initial, the first branches which is the given by this, it will be what? It will be the celiac plexus. And next to it, it will be giving this branch known as superior mesenteric artery. And the superior mesenteric artery, it will be given at the level of L1. So next time there will be a uh, marker structure which will be adjacent to this uh, L1, and they will be asking what is the um, artery which is being um, lies beneath it. Okay. Fine, it is will be what it is the superior mesenteric artery, a correct uh, rose. Fine. Next one, if you see this L3 means around the border of L3, it will be giving a branches known as inferior mesenteric artery. And we know this inferior mesenteric artery, okay, means this artery will provence the yeah, inferior artery is the correct correct side. If you see this inferior mesenteric artery, this inferior mesenteric artery it will prevent this ascent of this kidney in a case of horseshoe kidney. So remember it will provence the ascent of horseshoe kidneys okay horseshoe kidneys so they will ask this way like in a, they can give you a horseshoe image and they can um, they can mark you the superficial location and they can ask you fine no like it's uh, means as as we know like uh, it's not a ex uh, means it will be at the level of l3 and l4 like it's not exactly because based on the location we do uh, we go along it so it will be around the l3 and l4 fine And next one, if you see this L1, means like L1 level, there will be formation of the superior mesenteric artery. And there is a syndrome known as CAS syndrome, in which the superior art mesenteric artery it will go and compress. Means this will be originating from this iota. Fine. This is superior mesenteric artery. And due to this excess, excess loss of fat or a sudden loss in the fat or in case of any application of hip spica or any femur fracture, will apply some spica. And in case of such things, the superior mesenteric artery goes on and compresses this duodenum, okay, duodenum and can cause obstruction even, okay, and can cause obstruction even. Just remember these things, okay, fine, this, this, these are the quite might be asked because they can give a history and they can ask uh, like retrospectively, like what is the name of this, um, like name of the structure which, uh, which is responsible for it, they can ask you, fine, like it is known as CAST syndrome, C-A-S-T. Because there is also multiple names of this syndrome. One of the name is the cast syndrome because because of this application of this cast around the hip. Okay, in a case of hip means femur fracture. Fine, we'll apply a cast known as hip spica. Okay, just remember these things. Fine. With this understanding, we'll move on to the next part. Could anyone tell me what is this name of the muscle or like what is the name of this sign known as? Yeah, correct. Yeah, correct. Sai, correct location. It is what it is known as. What it is known as winging of scapula. Okay, it is known as what it is known as winging of scapula. And we know this winging of scapula. It's due to the damage to this now known as nerve to serratus anterior, or also known as long thoracic now. Yeah, correct. Sai, yeah, correct. Rose. Yeah, or uh, it is also known as nerve of bell. Fine. And damaged. Uh, to this structure, it will result into this uh, condition known as winging of scapula. Correct, Lokesh? Yeah, you are getting it correct. Um, Najib uh, Abdel Samit, uh, I think so you are watching in the, this video in a more later version. Just click the live button and so that you will be in track with us. Yeah, correct, Abdul Malik. Correct, correct by Chuck. Yeah, fine. It will be what? It is the image to this uh, long thoracic nerve which is lead to this condition known as winging of scapula. And we know this, uh, this there is a muscle known as boxer's muscle. Which is what which is the serratus anterior fine and next one if you are able to see if there is an adduction internal rotation and the extension at the level of elbow and the internal means like flexion at the level of wrist joint it, this will be manifestation of which of the following palsies correct size it is will be what it will be the edge palsy it will be the edge palsy yeah also known as yeah it will be the damage yeah correct mm, location rose and uh, shashikala it will be what? It will be the damage to this C5 to C6 of this upper trunk of brachial plexus. It will result to this condition known as Ebb's palsy. Okay, fine. Which is also known as policeman, policeman tip deformity. Fine. Or waiter's tip deformity. Yeah, correct, by sir. 
yeah correct uh, kp choudhury abdul malik sai correct you are getting it correct fine with this understanding we'll move on to the next part if you see now now they can mark your muscle and they can ask you what is the muscle which is being responsible like, or they can show you some borders or they can ask you what is the border this uh, which muscle is making this border fine if you see like they can ask you this two muscles just remember these two muscles rest you if you want you can remember fine this is what the superior one it will be what it is the rhomboid major and the next one is the rhomboid first one the superior one it is the rhomboid minor and next one it is what it is the rhomboid major okay these are the two muscles you want to remember and if you want to remember one more it will be what it will be the levator scapulae and all of this muscles it will be attached to this medial border of the scapula fine all of these muscles it will be attached to this medial border of the scapula next one like what they will ask you regarding this muscle and this posterior aspect it will be what yeah correct yeah correct arrows fine <clears throat> yeah levator scapulae they asked in a pg yeah so they can ask you about this rhomboidal minor and rhomboidal major and most of these things they will be attached to this medial aspect of this scapula and they can they can help in the tilt and the elevation of the scapula just remember next one they can ask you there is a triangle of auscultation okay there is a triangle of auscultation you you can means in which there is just there is no um uh, there is no musculature or less musculature over it so that you can hear this lung sounds very much clearly so it is known as what it is known as triangle of auscultation and this triangle of auscultation it will be formed by these two muscles border with these two muscles and the one bone okay it will be what it will be by this trapezius and the latissimus dorsi it will be by this trapezius and this latissimus dorsi and other border the next border will be found by the scapula just remember so since there is no muscular less musculature over this or less tissue over this it can provide a good window for us to listen so so we can listen over here to get a proper uh, lung sounds fine just remember this one fine with this understanding we'll move on to the next part if you see this <coughs> yeah if you see this images like they will be asking uh, about this uh, relation to the humerus if you see about this relation to the humerus if there is any we know the uh, structure which is being uh, passing near to the near to the surgical neck of humerus it will be what it is the axillary nerve and we know this axillary nerve will be supplying this axillary nerve will be supplying this two muscles what are the two muscles which is being supplied by this axillary muscle yeah correct Lokesh it will be what it is known as what this is what this is the regimental batch sign yeah correct sashikala it is the axillary nerve what are the two muscles yeah yeah correct again yeah correct sai it is what it is the deltoid and the teres minor and is deltoid and is the teres minor and just remember this deltoid we know it helps in the abduction of the shoulder and it also produces this counter you will be able to see this beautiful counter of the shoulder whereas here due to this paralysis the due to this paralysis the delta counter is lost a yeah, correct choudhury yeah correct rose and correct sashikala yeah this counter of this is lost fine and this will be seen in a case of axial nerve damage and this axial nerve damage will be most common in a case of surgical neck of humerus fracture next one you, because of this thing there will be a loss of sensation over this area known as regimental batch sign fine next one if you see around this shaft around this shaft of this humerus you will be able to see this one artery and a one nerve structure and this around this mid stuff fracture it will be producing to damage to this which now it will be dam uh, produce damage to this radial nerve yeah correct Lokesh correct KP Chaudhary and correct Rose yeah they will be producing damage to this nerve which is what which is the radial nerve and deep to this there will be a profunda brachii artery and we know if there is any damage to this radial nerve this will listen lead to this condition what is this condition radial nerve damage yeah correct location it is what it is the wrist drop it is the wrist drop fine it is the wrist drop because we know this most of this extensors of this uh, hands will be supplied by this uh, correct uh, side it will be supplied by this uh, radial nerve so it will lead to this wrist drop correct by shot fine next one if you see some more in inferiorly you will be able to see around the supracondyle means there will be a condyles okay and on the medial side of the condyle means there will be one nerve passing which is what which is the ulna nerve and we know we know if there is any damage if there is any damage to the lateral condyle means the lateral condyle won't grow so the me but the medial condyle tend to grow so this this thing this yeah 
yeah i like i will discuss about this median now on an yeah sure yeah if you able to see this this will be at the level of median uh, like around the level of medial side and if there is any damage to this one which is known as what lateral uh, condyle fracture this will lead to this condition in which lateral condyle won't grow whereas the medial will tend to grow and this lead to this kind of palsy yeah correct rose it will be lead to this condition known as tardy ulnar nerve palsy yeah ulnar also can lead to and in ulnar it can lead to different types of things it can lead to this thing known as claw okay claw hand means if just ulnar nerve is being damaged it will lead to this claw hand and you need to differentiate this claw hand from this benediction sign you know this claw hand it will be it will remain as a claw means it will remain as a claw as as any time okay fine there will be means if there is any claw hand means there will be always a claw hand fine yeah rose it is a incomplete claw hand and whereas in a case of medial nerve palsy when you tell them to make a breast there the formation of like it will looks like a claw but it there will be formation of this hand known as benediction hand so just remember how they are describing in the question so the description of this question also matters a yeah, correct rs are correct lokesh fine the next one which is will be given is the book test okay okay book test fine what's the con test what is the r r what is the name of this sign known as what is the name of this sign a yeah, correct himanshu what is the name of this sign could anyone tell me yeah medial plus ulnar it will be a, a complete claw, claw hand correct what is the name of this sign known as yeah there is a loss of this adductor function yeah everything you are getting it correct could anyone tell me the name of this um this sign yeah, it is a card test yeah correct it is known as from its sign okay from its sign okay just remember it is known as from its sign okay and it is yeah yeah correct it is known as what from its sign which is actually what this is actually what this is the book test we know that card test we know this pad and dot so we'll keep a card in between and this uh, leads to this adduction okay this will be the card test especially okay, correct fine and this sign is known as especially what i need is this sign this is known as what from its sign fine whereas this card uh, card test also will be positive in a case of alano palsy fine just remember and next one if you see around the supracondylar humerus fracture like already rose wrote written like this will lead to this damage to this nerve known as anterior interosseous nerve like more common than a median now fine more common than a median now fine just remember these things and we know in the case of median nerve palsy this hands will forms this known as benediction's hand benediction hands what is this name of this sign known as which muscle which is being tested here answer in the comment section yeah correct yeah guys yeah yes i were getting it correct yeah portion pen test yeah correct rose you are writing you are writing in a more descriptive manner correct yeah location you are getting it correct it is known as what this one is pen test fine and in which we are testing about the abductor functions okay and we know yeah we know uh the the adductor it will be supplied by this alna now whereas all other muscles of the thumb it will be supplied by this um will be supplied by this uh median now fine just remember these things next one if you see this is what this is the pointing index this will be what this is the pointing index this also this also seen in a case of median nerve damage and could anyone tell me in which of the following tunnel syndrome will you able to see this median nerve damage a yeah, correct rose correct lokesh waiting for more answers yeah it is what it is the kp chaudhary correct the yeah, correct sai it will be what it is the carpal tunnel syndrome it is it is seen in a case of carpal tunnel syndrome in which of the following nerve injury will able to see in a case of um uh, like uh, in a case of ulnar nerve injury what are the canals you will you will remember what is the name of this canal yeah it is what it is the yeah cubital tunnel syndrome then there is also one more canal it is uh, there is also damage to this canal known as guyans canal yeah correct guys it is the guyans canal it is the guyans canal just remember it is the guyans canal so these are the two they can lead to this ulnar these are the two canal in which this ulnar passes and it can lead to this ulnar palsy okay just remember fine with this understanding we'll move on to our next part fine and just remember about these things like this can be asked because they will give they will give this typical questions a patient is presenting you with a features of features of fall okay fall from a bike or something and uh, yeah correct and they will tell you there is a tenderness after a forced injury there will be a tenderness over this 
area. What is this area? Correct, guys. It is what it is the anatomical snuff box. Okay, it is the anatomical snuff box. And if there is any tenderness of this area, yeah, correct. Yeah, correct. Chaudhary, Rose, yeah, it is will be inside. It will be what? It is the it is the scaphoid fracture. And we know the content of this anatomical snuff box, it will be what? It is the radial artery. It will be the radial artery. Yes, Ashikala Kai, correct. And you know, the, like some questions it can be, uh, um, means if you don't know also, some questions can be answered in uh, in exam hall itself. Like they will ask you, they will come and mark this structure. Because uh, like once upon a time, they asked about this flexor tendon. So they can come and mark this structure also. They, what is this structure which is being responsible? You know, in the medial border of this anatomical snuff box, it will be formed by just one tendon, whereas this lateral border, this two lateral border, it will be formed by these two tendons. Fine, lateral border means you can grasp your hand you can, and you can check. In the medial border, it will be by this one tendon, whereas this lateral border, it will be by this two tendons. Fine. And if you see this medial border, it will be by this. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Rose, yeah, you, you wrote it uh, exactly correct. It will be what? Like, if you see this medial border, it will be found by just one tendon. Just remember, extends are used at two tendons. Like, there will be one longest tendon, one previous tendon. So, on a single stand, like on medial border, it will give this extensor policies longest tendon, whereas on the lateral border, it will give this extensor policies brevis. Whereas this abductor, it will be say as a single, so it will be, it will give this single one, which is what, which is the abductor policies longest. Fine. Just remember these things and you will be able to go with it. Fine. Yeah, correct, KP Chaudhary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there will be radial artery, which is the content correct fasciculus, correct three. Fine. With this understanding, we'll move on to the next part, which is this triangle, which is known as what? Femoral triangle. And in the case of femoral triangle, we know these things. Like we know, you know, there is this navel arrangement, like yeah, from laterally there will be a nerve, then followed by this artery, followed by this vein, vein, and and if there is any femoral canal formation, yeah, correct sashikala. Yeah, this um, more medially it will be what it will be the lymph node. Fine. Yeah, correct. From yeah, if it is from medial to lateral, it will be the V van formation. Fine. It will be the van formation. Okay. And next, if you see what they will ask you, like uh, these things, we know everyone means they will think everyone will know. But what they will ask you is that the medial border, the medial border of this femoral triangle will be formed from this by this muscle which is known as adductor longus. Could anyone tell me which border of this adductor longus will form this medial border? Medial uh, means like medial border. Medial border of this adductor longus or the lateral border of the adductor longus? Then we just check it out because th that is the trap. Okay, fine. We'll think like it's uh, means it will be the lateral border. But remember it is the medial border. Okay, it is the medial border. Okay, and Okay, yeah, correct rows. Yeah, yeah, means you didn't fall into the trap like you were, you were in place. Fine. If you see this medial border of this adductor longus, it will form this medial border. Fine. Not the lateral border. Next one, it is the sartorius. Sartorius from the lateral border means and this, it forms the lateral border of this femoral triangle. But this medial border of the sartorius will be forming. So, both of this muscles, medial border will be forming this medial and the lateral border. So, okay, there will be no lateral part of these muscles just remember fine and this base of this and this base of this uh, femoral triangle it will be found it will be found by this muscle known as iliacus and sos okay iliacus sos and this pectineus muscles okay iliacus sos and pectineus muscle just remember don't get confused fine this is the trap questions they will may ask you fine yeah my satarius it is also known as Honeymoon muscles, yeah, it is also known as talus muscle, correct. Because it helps in the honeymoon muscles, it helps in the abduction of this hip, fine, which, fine. And next, if you, if you see, what they will ask you about in the legs is that, what is the medial border, means like, means they will give you this cl typical clinic, uh, clinical scenario in which a patient is being, um, operator are being harvested for this great saphenous vein graft, which of the following, no, which might be injured, which can cause pain in later on. Fine. So just remember, it is a great. So remember, if there is any someone great, we'll name them. Okay. And the and in the name of them, we'll name some places. Fine. So we'll name this part means which will it will be supplied by this nerve, which is known as what the same saphenous nerve. Okay, saphenous nerve. Okay. And whereas the superior part, like whereas this dorsal aspect, it will be supplied by this. Superior peroneal nerve, whereas this first web space, just remember this only this first web space, 
it will be formed by this it will be supplied by this deep peroneal nerve and this lateral aspect it will be supplied by this nerve which is known as sural nerve okay it will be supplied by this nerve known as sural nerve okay don't get confused they are correct choudhury you yeah, are correct sir yeah you are getting it correct you are in track yeah sural now if they ask you in the questions um like the nerve being means the vessel being harvested for a cabg coronary artery bypass surgery and now the patient is presenting with complaints over this medial aspect of the leg which of the following nerve will be responsible they will mark this area and they will ask you also even so this will be the saphenous nerve yeah they yeah, are correct great saphenous nerve it will run along with this um great saphenous vein it will run, run along with this saphenous nerve whereas this short saphenous vein uh, it will run run along this sural nerve okay fine correct guys next one if you see like before they used to they have a trend of asking about this questions about this bones over the foot okay fine then this is what this is the calcaneum and this is the talus and they will they won't ask any other bones they will just particularly ask this bone could anyone tell me what is this bone Could anyone tell me what is this bone is? Yeah, it is. Yeah, guys, it is correct. It is what it is the navicular. Fine, it is the navicular bone. And above this, there is a three cuneiforms and one cuboid. Just remember, three cuneiforms and one cuboid. Okay, fine. Yeah, correct. It is what it is the navicular bone. Fine. Next one, they will ask you about this. They can mark and they will ask you about this reflexes and their nerve roots. If you see this image, this ankle reflex, it will be by this S1 and S2. Then it means it will go numerically. Yeah, correct Arasar, correct Lokesh, correct Chaudhary. You are getting it correct. Next one, if you move on to this from below to above, initially it will be by this S1 and S2. Next one it will be by this L3 and L4, which is what? Which is the patellar reflex. Okay. Next one it will be this flexor or this biceps reflex will be by this C5 and C6. And whereas this triceps reflex, it will be by this C7 and C8. Okay, triceps. Fine. Yeah, correct Arasar. And with this, they will, they'll, now they started asking about this histological questions, fine. If you see this histological images, okay, initially means they will, they will give and ask, what is this structure or what is this made up of, what is this made up of and what is this made up of. If you see, there is a formation of uniform deposition of this fibrins and there is a, gen means like properly aligned cells are the, Mm, properly aligned cells so yeah properly aligned chondrocytes it will be what it is the which type of uh, cartilage could anyone answer in the comment section uh, is uh, this which type of cartilage is this means it's a cartilage okay there are three types of cartilages one is elastic cartilage next one is hyaline cartilage next one is known as fibrinous cartilage fine could anyone tell me which type of cartilage is this Just remember, if there is any fibrin, more fibrin deposition, it will be what it is a fibrous cartilage. Okay, fibrous cartilage. Fine. Whereas you can just remember about your uh, school stories. Stay uh, till uh, means you are in school, like you will be uh, more prudent with uh, some kind of disciplines and everything. But when you become, when you completed your twelfth, you will be given more elasticity. So you will like to, you will try to explore everything in a single. So if you are able to see the single single type of single single type of cells fine single single type of cells is having small small means you are given much elasticity so this will be what this is the elastic cartilages this is the elastic cartilage image and if you see later on you explored many things now you just came to a conclusion okay once you come to a conclusion conclusion you just want to settle down up so you want to get marriage and you want to settle down up so you'll become a couple so so initially you'll be in uh, like you'll be more disciplined then you will be given some spaces and at last you'll be with your couples or your, with your friends like you're enjoying so this will be what this will be the hyaline cartilages okay and could anyone tell me when spina is made up of which of the following type of cartilage is it a elastic cartilage yeah nest of cells yeah correct it is if you see this nest or the family or the fronts of cells it will be this hyaline cartilages spina is made up of which of the following type of cartilages you can also just do it and answer it yeah, correct rows, it is will be what it is the elastic cartilage. Fine. And most of this and most of this vocal cartilages or this uh, thyroid cartilage, they will be made up of this hyaline cartilage, whereas our epiglottis, 
this will be made up of this elastic cartilages okay like thyroid is made up of hyaline cartilage whereas this epiglottis will be made up of this elastic cartilage just remember yeah correct yeah correct kp choudhury it's you are getting it correct lokesh correct yeah raja rajeshwari is correct fine with this understanding we'll move on to our next part fine just about few joints you need to just remember if, if they ask you any of the joints which is present in the central axis means just remember about the central axis if there is any adjacent to the central axis because we know this is the central bone which is sternum and this is the center which is what it is the pubic symphysis like most of the structures or most of the joints at at the center it will be a secondary so if it is at center it will be a secondary one and what is does its secondary signifies is that there will be a cartilage here and there will be a cartilage here in between there is a something so s for s s for secondary and s for something okay s for sen center fine or s for sound center fine so it will be some fibrous material between the center so most of this at this midline it will be formed in a secondary type of cartilaginous joint example is yeah correct kp choudhury it will be what it is the pubic symphysis fine pubic symphysis fine next one if you able to see this is the primary type of cartilage and primary we know there is there is no one in between just a cartilaginous joint okay and it will be formed adjacent to the like there will be a sterno um, means there will be joints between these sternum and the ribs whereas this one just this fibrous joints it will be forming this sutures and this gums like gum fibrous joints and this sutures they will be forming this fibrous joints okay fibrous joints fibrous joints just remember like they will can they can give, mark and ask you like what is the type of joints which is being present uh, between this vertebra means this intervertebral discs like uh, are near this articular facies they can ask you they like most of them it will be what yeah correct kp chowdhury it will be a Mm, secondary cartilaginous joints fine and just remember few joints based on the movements fine fine on you must need to you must there is no chance of negligence that you you forgot this thing like between the malus and incus which type of synovial joint is being formed could you even answer in the comment section between malleus and incus which type of joint is being formed yes uh, so no like try in a nice try janvi but uh, it's not a pivot joint just uh, have one more try we have you have three more op options left it's also not a hinge joint a nice try rsr mm, try rose one more try like uh, most of them there will be a um just try one more you can remember as a miss so just remember between the malus and incus it will forms this saddle type of joints okay it is also a synovial joint okay fine it is a saddle type of joints okay okay whereas incus and stapedius it will form this like the questions they will ask you we know uh, yeah, yeah correct asutosh yeah, yeah rajeshwari now you are getting it correct rose you are getting it correct if you see uh, this there are uh, mainly three ball and socket joints like will al always need to remember yeah now you got uh, correct uh, janvi like this inferior stapedial it will be it is a ball and socket joint okay it is a ball and socket joint you know like uh, there will be this glenohumeral joint and this um, astabula joint and this one all of this three are this ball and socket joint just remember okay fine yeah nice rose um, nice asutosh you had a nice like uh, good answers fine keep going and this is all about this anatomy you need to remember about the main images part fine with this understanding we'll move on to just few parts of physiology like we won't um, um yeah, means we won't get a deep diving we'll just uh, see a superficial one fine and if you see in the case of physiology we need to know about the cell junctions if you see some sort of gaps okay it is what it is the gap junctions and this junctions they will mostly they will mark in the image what they will ask you what is the composition this gap junctions will be made up of this type of proteins known as connections or connection proteins fine yeah sure yeah we'll upload this unnoted pdf without any changes will be given yeah physio <laughs> yeah nice uh, emoji lokesh fine yeah this will be made up of what connections okay this will be made up of this type of proteins known as connections and next one this means these are all mostly on this adjacent borders of the lateral borders fine yeah heart valves also there will be um, connections will be present means like it will be most means based on the cell type this uh, 
uh, this junction may be uh, vary. Okay, fine. And next one will be this desmoglins, like desmoglins, which will be made up of this desmoglins. We know there is a um, there is a disease known as Pampigus vulgaris, which we study tomorrow. Fine, Pampigus vulgaris which will be having this antibodies against this um, um, against this desmoglin one and desmoglin ten. Yeah, this desmoglins mainly it will help in this connection of this keratinocytes. Yeah, correct, uh, correct dose. Like fine. It will be what it is the desmoglin and next one it is the adherent means there are some few tight junctions and like and near to the tight junctions which is what which is the adherent junctions and this adherent junctions it will be made up of a compound known as e cadherin and this e if there is loss of this e cadherin means this can lead to this anaplastic changes so in a case of gastric carcinoma like um, in a case of diffuse gastric carcinoma there will be loss of this e cadherin or e cadherin mutation next one is the tight junctions and remember to Grasp it tight, you need to occlude it. Fine. Yeah. Tight junction, it will be for this, like it can forms like uh, barriers, any of these barriers in barriers and prevents this uh, like least liking of leakage. Fine. And this will be made up of this components known as occluding. Fine. Whereas this basal layer, it will be formed by this hemidesmosomes. Hemidesmosomes. Okay. You just need to remember these things about this image. Fine. Just don't get into a deep dive. Okay, just remember these things. Fine. Ne next one, just a cardiac cycle. I have just given for your reference. If you need anything, you can just grasp it from it. Fine. Next one, we'll ask about this JVP because till now, like most of the things, if they ask about JVP, they will give you in a history. Like for example, they will they can give you a history of cardiac tamponade. Like uh, like if there is any if there is any recent history of RTA. Okay, recent history of any RTA, and they will. Uh, give you this a uh, typical triad where this where there is a JVP will be increased there will be muffled heart sounds fine so, and there will be hypotension and what is the name of this triad you will see in a case of tamponade cardiac tamponade could anyone answer in the comment section yeah correct rose yeah this other triad features yeah correct it is almost what it is known as Bex triad okay it's known as Bex triad and in a case of cardiac tamponade we will able to see this absent of y descent. So, there will be absent y descent. Okay. First, like, um, means we will directly dive into the pathology or like we will get a small or a small glimpse about this usual one and then we will directly dive into the pathological one. We know like A, it is because of this atrial contraction. Fine. And C, it is because of this cusp bulge. Fine. B is because of this ventricular film. Okay. Just it is simple things you just need to remember. And next means you need to mostly remember about this pathological ones. If you are able to see this absent, if there is absent of this A waves, it signifies that there is no atrial contraction. In the case of atrial fibrillation, there will be no contraction. So, it will be leading to this absent A waves. And if you are able to see this canon type of A waves, where you will able to see this canon type of A waves? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah, guys, if there is any like, uh, like stenosis, you will be able to see the large A waves. Fine. Like if there is any mismatch between this A3 and ventricular contraction, you will be able to see this type of canon scanon A waves. Like large A waves will be seen in a case of any stenosis conditions. Whereas if you able to you want to see this canon A waves, it will be seen in a case of C for C, it will be seen in a case of complete heart block. Remember, it will be seen in a case of condition known as complete heart block. So you will be able to see the small A wave and this is a big A wave which is known as what canon A waves. Next one, the C wave and this V image, it will be bridged together. And the C V wave will be formed during this condition known as tricuspid regurgitation. So, this giant type of C V wave will be seen in a case of tricuspid regurgitation. Okay. Okay. Just remember these three things. Uh, this is what you need to remember about this JVP. Fine. And if you want to remember just one more about this constrictive pericarditis, there will be deep X and deep Y. Just remember. Fine. Deep X are mostly of deep Y. Just remember. Fine. These are the things you need to remember about the JVP findings. Next one, we'll move on to this action potential or means action potential. And there is just a simple difference between area. There is a major difference between this SA node potential or this atrial potential and the ventricular potential. And if you know this is a single difference, you will be able to treat the means treat them uh, arrhythmias in a much perfect manner also. And you can understand and you can answer them if they being asked. Yeah, automaticity seen in a case of western node. Yeah, correct, guys. Yeah, correct, Rose. Yeah, and 
and means it's mainly for this management and for the exam uh, solving applica applications fine and if you see this this we know there is a funny leaky channels in the um, SNO okay which which leads to the initiation of this potential and if you see this pre-potential phase this pre-potential phase it will be because of this sodium ion just remember it will be because of this sodium ion next one if you see next one after this pre um, pre uh, potentiation phase then there will be a it will be reaching this threshold stimulus and after this reaching this threshold stimulus it will be um, forming this depolarization wave curve means depolarization curve then there will be repolarization remember the significant is that the depolarization of this atria it will be by this calcium channel so in the case of any atrial arrhythmias you can try calcium channel blockers fine whereas this repolarization it will be by this potassium channel blockers and once there is a Mm, repolarization it will it will uh, fall be below this threshold so okay then it will uh, start the cycle from the a fine yeah and one more thing is that there is no latency because there will be no latency in a case of sn because they will be producing these waves very uh, very fluently okay so there will be no latency just remember these things next one is the zero phase if you see this phase it will be produced by this sodium influx just remember this pre potentiation phase in a case of sn what is sodium whereas this it will be by this depolarization by this calcium where here the depolarization will be by this sodium okay next one once the sodium comes in once there is a enough number of polarization will being happened then the potassium channel will open fine on this there starts this initial phase of depolarization fine then this calcium ca means initially the potassium goes out fine and the calcium start coming and this leads to this phase known as plateau phase okay next after this plateau phase then this leads to this and it will go um, to this depolarization phase by this potassium efflux fine and it will re return to this resting potential fine or below this threshold level or sub threshold stimulus okay fine these are the main differentiation you need to remember like because this depolarization by this calcium this is the most significant point you need to remember okay this understanding will move on to some flow volume loops if you see this flow volume loops fine in this flow volume loops you just need like it's a kind of mnemonic types you just need to memorize it. like this is how a normal flow volume loop and this is what this is the inspiration curve and this is the expiration curve fine that is the expiration curve and based on this loop we can tell where there is obstruction and which type of pathology is this and we know in a case of any restrictive lung diseases in a case of early stages or if there is any just any airflow obstruction or any uh, uh, obstructive lung diseases that formation of the scoop over the respiratory phase so this formation of this scoop will be seen in a case of obstructive lung diseases could anyone tell me any of these examples of this obstructive lung diseases waiting for answers in the chat box Yeah, correct rose yeah it is what it is the copd and asthma yeah and in this conditions you will be able to see this yeah correct raj rajeshwari yeah janvi i were getting it correct it is will be what it will be the copd which is actually what which is this obstructive lung disease fine and whereas in a case of any restrictive lung disease you will be able to see this small type of graph the graph will be similar whereas the graph will be looking much smaller so it will be seen in a case of restrictive lung disease and this most of these things you will be able to identify whereas here comes the confusion like in a case of any intrathoracic obstruction or any extrathoracic obstruction, um, this um, <coughs> this curve means derangers. If you see, if there is any extrathoracic obstruction, this extrathoracic obstruction it will cause flattening of this curve over this inspiratory curve. So, if there is any extrathoracic obstruction, it will cause us this intrathoracic or this inspiratory flattening. If there is any intrathoracic, it will lead to this. Um, expiratory flattening so it will lead to this expiratory flattening fine and if there is any fixed obstruction for example if there is any fixed foreign body this will lead to this flattening of this both inspiratory and expiratory curve okay it lead to this <coughs> yeah Rose. sorry <coughs> is this trick enough <coughs> will you able to remember now like Yeah, fine. Means like the same is this intra means opposite means I E. So if you see any 
intrathoracic obstruction there is a flattening of this expiratory cow if there is an extra thoracic there is a flattening of this intra means like inspiration just remember inspiration if there is any fixed obstruction it will cause flattening of this both okay just remember and the example of the fixed one it is the foreign body obstruction fine correct answer next one we'll move on to the few parts of biochemistry if you see a child who is having this features of hepatomegaly hepatomegaly along with features of failure to thrive and a features of repeated features of hypoglycemia and an examination you are able to find also increased uric acid levels all of these features are this typical for this yeah like typical for this glycogen storage is yeah correct location it is the like it's most commonly it is the type one which is the one garki disease like so it will be most commonly means these are the typical features of this glycogen storage diseases and we know this glycogen storage which is what which is the one garki disease it is due to this deficiency of this enzyme known as glucose 6 phosphatase fine glucose 6 phosphatase yeah just remember the correct basal yeah generally yeah we can see dolic phases but it will be more typical for this uh, uh, mucopolymer sacridosis okay the yeah, correct rsa and next one it is the pompous disease if you see this pompous disease it will be because of this enzyme deficient known as lysosomal alpha 1,4 glucosidase fine are also known as acid maltase yeah fine yeah you can um, you can remember by this mnemonic warm pump cori and make a tide are like it's based on your convenience you can remember like yeah, nice uh, mnemonic by the location yeah, nice fine if you see this pump is you need to just remember this second one second one it mainly affects the heart if you see a uh, glucogen storage disease along with the features of any cardiomegaly or any cardiac conditions it will be, it will be because of this pump is yeah correct generally the other name is what it is the acid maltase fine next one if you see c for coris you just remember c d which is the coris disease it is because of this debranching enzyme fine next one as a b which is what which is the anderson this is it's because of this branching enzyme if there is any debranching enzyme deficiency there is a formation of this dextrin kinds they'll just uh, they will they won't be enoughly debranched and there will be improper deposition of this glycogen fine yeah correct a b c d if you remember it is correct next one mccord this m5 m it will be a muscle glycogen phosphatase it will it is due to the deficiency of this muscle glycogen phosphatase so it will especially affect this muscles and they will give this history of excess intolerance fine and hers it's the hepatic one when hers is the hepatic one if there is any uh, if there is any hepatic glycogen phosphorylase uh, de means deficiency it will lead to this condition known as hers disease fine in hers there will the muscles will remain unaffected just uh, remember about the simple things fine next one if you able to see this kind of deposition deposition over years they're known as ochronosis nosis and this turning of this urine means once the urine is being exposed to this uh, air this turn um, this urine is being turned into black color fine and this turning this phenomena and this deposition of this uh, components in the um, are these pigments in the multiple cartilages and in the joint spaces and in the eyes which this is you will think of yeah correct locus uh, yeah rock yeah rsr yeah rose it is what it is the alkaptonuria it is the alkapto nuria and we know which enzyme is responsible which enzyme deficiency is responsible for this alkapto nuria yeah guys it is what it is due to the deficiency of homogeneous oxidase deficiency okay it is due to the deficiency of homogeneous oxidase deficiency okay they are correct rose they are correct rock they are correct janvi yeah fine yeah you are getting it correct fine with this understanding we'll move on to the next part if you see this image if you see a blonde if you, if you see a child with blonde hair along with more fair con more fair means like it's uh, the child is being more white when compared to the family members and along with some features of mental retardation and these things and along with some features of sometimes features of a mousy or a musty odor of urine of urine what you will think of yeah yeah guys i have already flooding with answers yeah locus yeah rose yeah rock yeah rsr yeah janvi yeah basa you are getting it correct it is what it is the phenyl ketonuria and we know this phenyl ketonuria it's due to the deficiency of phenyl alanine hydroxylase 
okay it is due to the deficiency of phenylalanine hydroxylase and next if you see to detect this just don't confuse this thing uh, with the um, alkaprenuria means this to detect this will use this urine samples which is where to detect this will do this test known as ferric chloride test which looks similar to the urine samples but it is uh, but it is not the same it is known as what ferric chloride test okay just remember yeah we also do butyric test also yeah correct janvi fine yeah with this understanding we'll move on to the next part if, this, if, if you see this the same type of features see a more fast skin and if you see some ocular features okay and if there is any absence of this melanin pigment this will be suggesting of which of the following diseases a correct Lokesh, correct karthi correct rock yeah, it is what a janvi i were getting correct it is known as what it is known as albinism and could anyone tell me what is the name of the enzyme which is being responsible yeah 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 rose it is what it is the tyrosinase is it tyrosinase or tyrosine hydroxylase yeah it's just a tyrosinase just remember it is the tyrosinase okay tyrosinase don't get confused yeah guys you are means you are not falling into trap you are just exactly like standing where you want yeah just keep going like just uh, will be coming with flying colors fine next one if you see about this enzymes if you see in a case of enzymes it yeah, means you need to remember this uh, plots if you see this line weaver bog plots means you need to remember about these two things if you see about this competitive incubation if you see this competitive incubation how you can remember this that means competitive incubation it looks like a cross okay competitive incubation crosses because it crosses at the level of yeah correct uh, location yeah it will be crossing at the level of Vmax. So, or half the Vmax, it will be crossing. So, the Vmax will remains the same. Okay. Means if you see, if there is no incubator, if there is incubator also, the Vmax remains the same. So, we know in the case of complete incubation, the Vmax remains same, whereas Km will be increased. Fine. Remember, Km will be increased. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, guys, correct. Yeah, Rose. And if you see this crop cross, it will be a complete incubation. Whereas, if you see this in a case of non complete incubation, the Km remains same, okay. The Km remains same, okay. Whereas, the Vmax will be decreased, okay. Vmax will be decreased, whereas this Km remains same. So, just remember one thing which is the cross of this complete incubation. If you remember this cross, like you no need to remember about this any of the cells, fine. Yeah, correct rows. Next one, if you see this image, this image is due to the deficiency of which of the following. Waiting for your answers in the comment section. Yeah, guys. Yeah, it is what it is known as. Yeah, correct. Uh, Karthi, yeah, Alpia, yeah, Rose, yeah, Rock, yeah, Lokesh. It is what it is known as. What it is known as? White hot spot. And we know this white hot spot is due to the deficiency of vitamin A. Means at which stage of this deficiency we have this X classification, right? Yeah, is it X on A or X on something? Arasa, just wait, wait, have patience. We'll look into the next image. Yeah, it is X and B. It's not the X and O. Yeah, correct, Sai. You are getting it correct. Yes, Truthi. It is X and B. It's not the X and A. Yeah. Yeah, Rose. Yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. The X and B. Just remember, it is due to this vitamin A deficiency. And this vitamin A deficiency, it will be uh, staged as X and B. It is not 11. It is X and B. Fine. And if the child is less than, if you are if you're, if you're bringing a child who is having a similar feature, if the child is less than one year so how much dose of vitamin a you will give orally or if it is more than or equal to one year how much you will give i yeah, will move on to the next next wait 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 have patience yeah just remember it is a one lakh and two lakh okay it is a one lakh and two lakh dosages fine if it is less than one year will give one lakh it is a oral dosage so if there is a uh, less than, if it is uh, less than one year, will give one lakh orally, and if there is a more than one year, it will give two lakhs. Okay, more than or equal. Okay, it's a oral dosage. Okay, don't get confused. For, for that, we'll give this uh, spoons also, in which first depression will uh, means will be measuring at the level of one lakh, and second one will be at the level of two lakhs. Okay, and next one, it is what it is the rickety rosary. It is the rickety rosary. That's what we are already previously putting with answers. Yeah, it will be given on the 0, 1, and 14 days. Yeah, guys, correct. 0, 1, and 14 days. And uh, the vitamin A supplementation will be starting um, from the 9th month itself. Fine. Yeah, 
if there is a weight also signifies yeah we can give to to correct guys you are absolutely awesome yeah you are you are like means you are up to the mark you are just uh, being ready for the exam it's the it's just the nbe just need to conduct the exam, exam as soon as possible fine and if you see this uh, recurritic rosary it is due to the deficiency of vitamin d and we said we will study this uh, more in depth and when we discuss in the case of pediatrics fine next one if you see if you see a chronic alcoholic is presenting you with features of some kind of dementia okay dementia just dementia and and he's having some um uh, and he's having some features clinical features suggestive of heart failure fine and and you do you do you did a ct and you will be able to see this type of appearances or a cardiomegaly means in which of the following vitamin deficiency will be able to see this deficient means see these features yeah guys yeah rose yeah karthik yeah rock yeah lokesh you are getting it correct it is due to this deficiency of thiamine okay thiamine deficiency lead to this kind of features and there are two types of beriberi okay beriberi and there are two types of beriberi one there is wet beriberi wet beriberi which involves the heart whereas this dry beriberi it will involves this cns fine it will it will in, have this involvement of the cns yeah yeah rock yeah next one is the castles necklace yeah it is it can be seen in a case of uh, mice eaters because of this lack of this uh, tryptophan and it is due to this deficiency of this niacin okay niacin okay and we know this if there is a niacin deficiency it can lead to the decrease in the thiamine also because niacin forms the thiamine okay like no, sorry uh, not the like it can be seen in a case of it's not thiamine it's it can be seen in a case of tryptophan deficiency okay just remember because in a case of myosin like mice eaters there will be a decreased um up means are decreased availability of this tryptophan okay fine yeah it will be having this features of these dermatitis dementia and diarrhea okay the first feature will be the diarrhea first feature will be the diarrhea and finally it will be it can lead to this death and and in which one of the following diseases you will able to see this eye of tiger appearance yeah correct rock yeah eye of tiger appearance yeah rose yeah that is the fourth d death where you will see this eye of tiger appearance yeah, that is all eye appearance we will see in a case of cmv where you will able to see this in a case of mri where you will see this eye of tiger appearance vanakam ajit Yeah, fine. If you see this eye of tiger appearance, it will be seen in the case of pantothenate kinase deficiency. Okay, just remember. Okay, okay, pantothenate kinase deficiency. Just remember. Fine, don't get confused. Next one, if you are able to see this features of glossitis, chelosis, and itching, this will be due to the deficiency of means like mainly due to the deficiency of vitamin B12. Fine, okay. Which is the which is the riboflavin deficiency, whereas vitamin B3, which is the neosin deficiency, which which will be presenting with this features of Castle's necklace. Yeah, correct rock, correct rose, correct locus, correct sign. Yeah, you are getting it correct. Next one, in which of the following vitamin deficiency will lead to this formation of this myelo meningocele? Myelo meningocele. Which of the following deficiency? Was waiting for your live video for two weeks. Who believe that ninety percent of them will be from your video? Thanks. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, thank you, Akshar. Thank you for waiting. Like, uh, hope so your wait uh, will fulfill. Okay, I am also hoping so that uh, more images will be asked from this session and that will be a uh, good for you. Fine. Thank you. Yeah, correct rock, correct rockish, correct medic. Yeah, it is just due to the B vitamin B nine deficiency, which is what which is the folic acid deficiency, which is the folic acid deficiency. And if there is a normal female, yeah. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Krishna. Thank you. And if you see this uh, vitamin B9, which is the folic acid deficiency, what is the normal level of supplementation? Like, how much folic acid we need to give usually? Yeah, normally we need to we need to supplement with four hundred micrograms. Whereas in a case of anemia mukta bharat, we used to give us a five hundred mg. Okay, just remember. Normally we need to there is no risk. We need to give us four hundred uh, micrograms. Whereas in a case of high risk patients or if there is any female with diabetes mellitus and any other things we need to give us 4 mgs okay 4 milligram we need to give okay whereas in a case of anemia anemia mukt program okay in a case of anemia mukt bharat program we used to give us 60 milligram of iron along with 
500 micrograms of folic acid just remember yeah yeah correct uh, yeah correct jandi fine rock and others also you are getting it correct yeah correct medic it is what it is yeah it, you can it can be 4000 mm, mcg means which is equal to the 4 milligrams fine with this understanding we'll move on to the next part okay first tell me is this a normal um, normal image of an eye or if there is there any significance of this image Yeah, Lokesh, yeah, straight away into the answers. Yeah, it is what? It is the yeah, correct Lokesh rose, rock and uh, Karthik rose and Baisla. Yeah, you are getting it correct. It is what? It is the KF rings. It is not the normal one. It is the KF rings, which will be seen in a case of Wilson's disease. Wilson's disease. And we know this Wilson's disease, it is due to the mutation of which of the following genes? You know like version 2 is only enough like uh, like it's just addition of few more information from the video version 1 okay so this will be enough you no need to watch the previous videos this will be enough yeah it is the ATP B7 okay it will be what it is the ATP B7 just remember yeah it is it is the ATP 7B okay it is the eight due to the mutation of ATP 7B and if you able to see means this is the, due to the over deposition of this copper yeah correct me medic Neelam Srivi and Rhea and RSR, you are getting it correct. And if you see this image, where you will able to see this kinky hair means that this, this, what is deposited? It is due to the deposition of copper, copper deposition. Means it deposits over the Desmond's membrane. Okay. And it is also known as ocular lentiform degeneration because it dent uh, means because it lead to this ocular features along with this chorea. Okay. And the uh, lentiform. Uh, and it also deposit into the lentiform nucleus yeah in cns and imaging you will able to see this panda sign because uh, it won't take up the signals fine and next if you see this kinky this spiky hairs okay and it is due to the deficiency of copper what is the name of this uh, this is known as yeah correct rsr it is known as what kinky hair which is seen in a case of menkes disease it is due to deficiency of copper. Remember, it is due to the deficiency of copper, and this is due to this mutation over this ATP 7AG. Okay, this okay, it is due to the ATP 7A gene. Yeah, correct. Janvi, Neelam Srivi, yeah, anonymous. Yeah, you are getting it correct. Priya also, you are getting it correct. Next one, yeah, these are the few things you need to remember. Next one, if you see a patient which is presenting with this features of this. Before and after image, the features of hepatosplenomegaly and along with this images. Yeah, I am good, Amit. How are you? Some like now it's biochemistry going on. Next uh, upcoming, it will be the patho one. Fine. Oh, it is not kidneyism. So if you see this image, and means these two images are being correlated. Okay, fine. Okay, just correlate these two images. This is what this is the crumpled tissue paper appearance. Where you will see this? Ha huh, Vidya Shor, yeah, I'm, I like I, I know you. Yeah, it is what it is what it is the Gaucher's disease. It is the Gaucher's disease. Okay, it is known as what? It is known as Gaucher's disease. But anyone tell me what is the uh, deficiency? Yeah, Quashikar and Marasmus also looks the same. Like tomorrow we'll see, like how the quashaker looks like because quashaker it will be also the belly enlargement but it will be seen with other features also fine like for example um um hair features like flat sign and there will be flaky pain dermatosis also fine and this is what this is the gorgeous disease which is due to the beta glucosidase deficiency okay just remember yeah guys yeah correct ajit fine and this is all about this biochemistry unit remember fine with this understanding, we'll move on to our next part. Yeah, correct, Janvi. It is what it is the beta glucosidase. Fine. With this understanding, we'll move on to the next part of pathology. Fine. After this pathology, we'll have a short break for 10 to 15 minutes. Fine. 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 Now, in we'll be starting with the pathology, and we know initially, uh, like there will be a um, normal cell, there will be a cell injury. And following this cell injury, there will be a two types. There will be a reversible cell injury and there will be a irreversible cell, cell injury. Fine. Mm. And how will you able to find? 
next what is the what is the first image okay what is the first image for, for example what is the first image you see in a case of reversible cell injury under microscope what is the first image or first thing you will able to see in a case of reversible cell injury yeah it is what it is the blood formation because of the cellular swelling if you see this blood formation it is the first sign of cellular injury okay fine so initially there will be a irreversible cellular injury means after some uh, after some time this reversible will become um, irreversible and if if it doesn't becomes reversible uh, if it doesn't reverse itself it can lead to this um, uh, thank you ashwin thank you ashwin and it can lead to this irreversible cell injury fine and initially there will be blood formation and there will be a ribosomal detachment and there will be also will be the formation of nuclear clumps these are the changes you will able to see in a case of reversible cell injury fine yeah rock there will be amorphous nucleus uh, amorphous deposition in the cell but there will be a means less deposition in a case of reversible whereas in a case of irreversible cell, cell injury there will be significant deposition will be seen fine whereas if you we'll move on to this irreversible cell injury there will this blood formation this leads to the lysis of this blood means this cell membrane will be lysed and there will be lysis of this nucleus also if you able to see this how this normal nucleus looks like and initially in a case of reversible it leads to this clumping and then this clumping is more prominent and it is known as what pycnosis once it being neck pycnosed this will be broken into small fragments known as karyorexis and once it is being broken it's of no use so it will, must be lysed fine so like if you have any doubts like if you have any random doubts uh, we'll answer at the end of the session fine don't worry okay we'll, your, all of your queries will be asked but uh, just have some patience fine and karyolysis it will be uh, the end of this stage fine and if you see this type of irreversible cell injury it can lead to the either apoptosis or necrosis fine apoptosis we know it's a programmed cell death so in a case of apoptosis if you see this will lead to this type of pattern like mostly like this is a non specific one but apoptosis can lead to this type of pattern known as yeah correct milan suvi this one as what this is known as step ladder pattern and this step step ladder pattern is because of that it is programmed so it will go and cut in a particular sequences okay so it will be uh, seen in a case of apoptosis because it is a programmed cell death fine and if you are able to see this smear pattern the smear pattern will be seen in a case of necrosis okay and we know in a case of apoptosis there will be no lysis of the cell membrane the cell membrane will be preserved or the cell membrane will be intact okay and the cell size will become small okay fine whereas in a case of necrosis there will be a inflammation and lysis of the cell fine inflammation and the lysis of the cell ya medic ya janvi ya baisla ya rock you are getting it correct yeah and the marker of this apoptosis it is what it is the anaxin anaxin 5 yeah correct fine correct like like uh, do it do it with purpose like uh, like uh, if you ask me like uh, proper images will be at least 20 or 25 will be just a image like minimum images will be expected okay minimum will be 25 and maximum it can go up to 40 and mm, so like in each of the questions if you see at least one means like every fourth question will be having some features of the images means if you study this pdfs and if you listen to this classes you will able to understand not only the images and you will able to understand about the descriptions of the images if you know the description if they given you the same thing for example they will be given uh, means in questions uh, some uh, alcoholic patient will be given some vitamin deficiency will means like cardiac enlargement will be given so it, this will be pointing out towards to this image which is having shown to you as a cardiac enlargement so this will point you towards this and this will make you to answer this question this can be seen in a case of time and deficiency so this is how you can answer so either they can ask you as an image or else they can ask you as a description okay yeah yeah correct and ms this is what that's why we are describing it if you just see image and uh, and i tell you this is the thing and it won't work it won't uh, last for so long so that's why i'm just describing it which will help you to solve this questions fine i think so your doubt is being cleared now next we'll move on to the type of necrosis if you see this type of necrosis okay fine if you see this type of necrosis if sometimes means are like in some organs in some places yeah correct janvi it is what like if you see this architecture if it is maintained or if it is lost 
the anonymous yeah if you see this maintained architecture if you see this maintained architecture and which is seen in a case of solid organs and the mechanism is what it is the coagulation of proteins and this type of necrosis is which type of necrosis yeah you're welcome do it with purpose yeah yeah medic yeah nijay yeah it is what it is the coagulative necrosis it is the coagulative coagulative necrosis and this type of coagulative necrosis okay it's most commonly seen in a case of solid organs like solid organs like kidney heart will be showing this mm, this type of necrosis yeah correct by sla correct ria yeah, i were getting it correct next if you see this architecture in which architecture means necrosis in which architecture is being lost you will not be able to see this architecture this will be seen in a case of liquefactive necrosis and we know the main mechanism the main mechanism it is what it is the enzymatic digestion it is the enzymatic digestion okay just remember it is what it is the enzymatic digestion okay don't forget yeah correct rsr correct janvi and this type of liquefactive uh, um, necrosis will be seen in a case of brain or in a case of abscess formations okay abscess formation fine next one we'll see some special type of necrosis means in special some cases could anyone tell me what is this type of necrosis the necrosis of the lungs like in a specific infections or in a special infections correct by yeah correct Ria. correct yeah, it is what it is the correct locash correct nija it is what it is the caseous necrosis also known as cheesy necrosis which will be seen in a case of tb infection which will be seen in a case of tb infection and this will be due to the presence of mycolic acid mycolic acid some random question what is the name of the staining method you will be using to identify this tb a correct ajit correct janvi Yeah, 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 correct RSR, yeah, correct anonymous Zoho. So, it is what it is the uh, AFB staining, it is what it is the acid first staining. Okay, just remember. Next one, if you're able to see, there is a case of pancreatitis must be given. And in a case of pancreatitis, you'll be able to see this momentum which is being deposited with this small, small chalky white material. Okay, if you're able to see this deposition of this small um, chalky, chalky material, which is due to because of this enzymes which is being digesting this fat, and it is what it is the fat necrosis. Okay, and it is and it is pathologically seen in a case of means pathologically seen in a case of any trauma over the high fat areas okay correct janvi correct do it with purpose correct doc karthik fine it is what it is the this fat necrosis it will be seen in a case of in momentum in a case of pancreatitis okay whereas in a case of any uh, trauma to the breast or trauma to the gluteal region it can lead to this fat necrosis yeah, correct location correct ria fine with this understanding we will move on to few more types of necrosis if you see this is what this is a blood vessel okay and if you see this around this blood vessel if there is some kind of fibrin deposition okay if there is some kind of fibrin deposition which type of necrosis is this a correct by a correct nijai correct janvi it is what it is the fibrinoid necrosis it is the fibrinoid necrosis it is the fibrinoid necrosis fine it is what it is the fibrinoid necrosis and this fibrinoid necrosis it can be seen in a case of few diseases especially like polyarthritis nodosa, rheumatic heart diseases, okay, rheumatic heart diseases, and in a case of malignant hypertension, also sometimes we will be able to see this, fine. Yeah, pass will be pink in color, yeah, it, it can take the uh, stain, yeah, it can be seen in a case of SLE, yeah, correct. Mainly it will be seen in a case of polyarthritis nodosa and rheumatic heart diseases, correct, correct, Nijay, correct, Baisla, fine. Next one, it is what it is there this type of necrosis it is known as what dry gangrene and wet gangrene just remember like uh, there will be dry days right in which like liquids won't be available okay yeah in those days uh, in those days the husbands will return to their family correctly okay just remember like are the uh, means just uh, they will return to this family because they are dry they means they know what they're happening and they know where they need to stand and what their limit is whereas in a case of some wet days are in in which days the liquor is available like they will be going and roaming and they will be drinking and they won't be knowing their limits and they don't know where they will go and where they will sleep so if they are not within or if they don't know the limit so it will be what it is the wet gangrene and if they know the limits so it will be what it is a dry gangrene so remember
he won't see means means he will be in a limit whereas in a case of wet day he won't be in a limit okay just remember it is a mnemonic to remember if you are unable to differentiate between this dry gangrene and a wet gangrene okay just remember these things fine this is the case of dry gangrene of this upper limb this is the wet gangrene fine just remember yeah Yes, I, I think just like few mnemonics might be cope you to learn because uh, sometimes I do get some confusion so I used to make it so if you uh, found it useful you can use food uh, you can make use of it in your whole life right yeah uh, yeah thank you Sakir yeah uh, nice to see you here yeah, fine. next we'll move on uh, with some staining procedures if you able to see there is a one on one side there is a stratified squamous epithelium and next side there is a pseudo stratified Colmar epithelium okay and there is a in between there is a intestinalized epithelium means there is a columnar epithelium along with go blood cells in which of the following conditions you will be able to see this thing yeah sure yeah yeah Lokish. yeah it is what yeah correct Janvi it is seen in a case of Barrett's esophagus Barrett's esophagus and we know yeah thank you Absal uh, yeah, yeah, correct location. Yeah, correct by like it is the columnar metaplasia along with this go blood cells, and it is what it is seen in a case of Barrett's esophagus. And we know in a case of to identify this Barrett's esophagus, there is a presence of this go blood cells, and this go blood cell will secrete this acid mucin, and this acid mucin will be stained by this stain. What is the name of this stain? Could anyone tell me? Yeah, correct. Zoho, it is what it is the metaplasia topic, which metaplasia, and see it is what it is the intestinal metaplasia. Like it's, what is the stain which we use? Yeah, correct, Nijay. It is what this is the alcyon blue. Okay, alcyon blue, which will be staining this, which will be staining this acidic mucin and it will stain this into this blue color. Fine, just remember. Yeah, correct, Medinetic. Fine. Next, if you are able to see, next images, we are just staining the fat. Fine. Yeah, yeah, correct, Sakit. If we are staining the fat. And to remember about this fat, we know like everyone, like who need means like who are having the fat, like they want to lose it. So just remember. We'll use this stain known as loss stain or we need, because we need to lose the stain so just remember o for oil red o so oil red o and next one yes for sudan black b okay so this oil red o and sudan black b will be used for this lipids known as so they'll be staining these fats or this lipids so just remember these are the fat stains yeah correct medic uh, rio and sakir and baisla and janvi yeah you are getting it correct fine next one if you're able to see there are some two perinuclear pigments means these two perinuclear, perinuclear uh, pigments they uh, go side by side so we don't know like exactly how we need to differentiate so means with grossly we cannot differentiate in a much better so we need to stain them fine and while staining if you able to see this perinuclear pigment means means which is around the nucleus so this perinuclear pigment perinuclear pigment means in description itself they have given like repeated transfusion and there is a perinuclear pigment which is which is being stained and it is also refractile refractile and it is being stained with this stain and it is showing blue color okay what is this must be what is this stain must be it is what it is the pearls prussian blue okay so what is this perinuclear pigment must be is it a lipofuscin or it is the hemosiderin yeah correct Nijay. correct Lokesh yeah it will be what it will be the it will be the hemosiderin so it will be hemosiderin it will be hemosiderin stain with pearls Persian blue next one if you able to see there is a perinuclear pigment Oops. Yeah, no worries there is like sometimes you will get confused so that's what that's why the session is the main motive of the session because this is to uh, means like uh, in a description of equations will easily guide means like will easily guide it through a wrong way whereas if there is an image given and the proper description if you go, go along with you, you, you will never go wrong okay and if there is a perinuclear pigment and if you stain with oil red o then it will be which pigment yakriti yakarthik yeah, base light will be what? It is the lipofuscin. Lipofuscin. It is also known as what? It is also known as wear and tear pigment. Wear and tear pigment. We know this lipids will be uh, stained with which stain? Which will be stained with the oil red. So that's why we can. That's where we can differentiate this hemosiderin from this pigment. Fine. 
Next one, if you are able to see this image, <coughs> okay, this is the pulse pressure blue which is being stained with this chemosiderin pigment, okay, chemosiderin. Then, if you are able to see this, there are two mesen stains. Which of the following mesen stains will we use to stain the Yakriti? Which of the following uh, mesen stains will we use to stain this uh, melanin? Could anyone answer in the comment section? Yeah. To differentiate between this hemosiderin and the lipofusion, that's what I told. Hemosiderin, it will be first thing. It will be refractile in nature. First thing, it will be refractile in nature. This is the thing. Okay, on microscope, they will be on description. They will be given. It will be refractile in nature. And on staining, it will be stained with pearls, Prussian blue. Fine. It is what it is the feature of hemosiderin. Fine. Whereas in the case of lipofusion, they will give the history of old age people. Means because this is a wear and tear pigment. Okay. So, it, there will be history of old age people. And it will be stained with this stain which is known as oil red woe, okay, or any lipid stains like soda and black blue, fine. This is the thing you need to understand, fine. Uh, yeah, there is a, this mouse and stains like, yeah, correct guys, you are getting it correct. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Her name is Zoho. Like, fine, yeah, correct. Yeah, Nijay, Janvi, Medic. Yeah, it is what it is the Mason Fontana stain. It is the Mason Fontana which is being Fontana which is being used for staining this melanin okay melanin fine next one if you are able to see there is we use one more mason stain which is known as what which is known as known as mason trichrome and this mason trichrome will be used to stain this granulation tissue because once there is a wound it will be healing yeah correct uh, yeah correct rose yeah correct janvi it will be it is what it is a mason trichrome which is used to differentiate this collagen along with the smooth muscles and there are to differentiate between this neovascularizing new vessels. So, vessels, collagens and smooth muscles to differentiate it will use this mason trichrome stain. Okay, just remember. Fine. With this understanding, we will move on to our next part. Fine. Means there is a patient who is presenting with chronic, I mean history of chronic hypertension. Okay. Chronic hypertension means on like, on like, um, on, on examining for some other reasons, you took some biopsy and you are able to see this blood vessels. Okay, you will be able to see this blood vessels, and in this blood vessels, you will be able to see this some deposition of this calcium. Okay, so deposition of this calcium. Which of the following stain you will use to stain it? Uh, which of the following stain is first used here, which will show black in color, which will stain the calcium into black color? Yeah, guys, answer. Remember, it is uh, it is not alizarin. Alizarin red, yes. Okay, so it is a alizarin red. So it will stain the calcium as red. So it's a name. So if you couldn't understand it, just read the name. It is alizarin red. Yes. So so it will be what? It will stain the calcium into red color. Okay, yeah, correct. Yeah, one closer. One means like Lokesh Baisa, Nijai. Yeah, Medic Nithik. Yeah, Janvi. Yeah, you are getting it correct. It is what? It is the one cosa. It is the one cosa stain. Remember, one cosa stain. Remember this one cosa stain. Since you can remember this V K C or K B C. Okay, V K C means this one cosa stain, it will stain this calcium into a kala color. Means it will stain the calcium into a black color. Means are the uh, black uh, in Hindi it is on a scala and C for calcium. Okay, C for calcium. So it is what it is the one one cosa stain which stains the calcium into black color. Okay, just remember. Next one or else you can remember it as K B C also. Means like cosa, black, and calcium. And these are the two stains which is being used for calcium. And we know there are two types of calcification. Okay, there will be a dystrophic calcifications and there is a metastatic calcifications. We know this dystrophic calcification will be happening in dead cells or in or in um, living cells. Yeah, thank you, Baisla. Thank you for your compliments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct, Janvi. This dystrophic calcification will be happening in a case of dead cells. And here the calcium levels will be. The calcium levels will be normal. Whereas in a case of metastatic, yeah, correct uh, location. In a case of metastatic calcification, the calcium will be high. Whereas it will be depositing into this living cells. Fine, it will be depositing into this living cells. Fine. Fine. And the example of this dystrophic calcification, a famous, a famous histopathological finding. It is what it is the samoma. Samoma bodies. It is what it is the samoma bodies. And we know the samoma bodies will be uh, seen in a conditions which can be remembered by this mnemonic known as PSM. Okay, so it is what it is the papillary carcinoma thyroid, 
and serous cyst adenoma of ovary okay and meningioma and mesothelium mesothelioma yeah correct location yeah it is the onion skinning yeah correct Rhea, it is the yeah, psm2 or uh, um you can remember yeah yeah Rhea, you are getting it correct fine it is what it is seen in a case of some body so just remember they can give you like it means they, they can describe you the features of papillary carcinoma thyroid and they can ask you what is the type of calcification which can be seen you can remember it's a tumor so you will think of it as a metastatic so it, but it is not a metastatic it is a dystrophic calcifications fine yeah, correct Kirti. Yeah, but means metastatic it repre represents few cancers. For example, in the case of RCC, you will be able to see this metastatic um, calcification and in the case of hyperparathyroidism. Fine. Hyperparathyroidism. Okay, just remember. Okay, don't get confused with this uh, bias names of metastatic. Fine. Next one. Next one, this is what this is what this is the neutrophil entrapment traps. Fine. In the case of some kind of um, some kind of uh, if there is any huge sepsis or if there is any uncompensatable sepsis or any uh, huge infection which is being going on, in those conditions, our um, body will use this peculiar mechanism known as and it's neutrophil entrapment traps, means in which the neutrophil lays traps and it will grasp these microorganisms and it will kill itself, yeah, correct me, it will kill itself and also this organism. So, it is known as what? Neutrophil entrapment traps. In this unit, remember, it will be occur by this mechanism known as citrullinization okay it will be formed by this mechanism known as citrullinization and it is also known as beneficial beneficial suicide okay means why it is known as beneficial suicide because at the end of this nets procedure nets yeah like yeah it, it will yeah it's uh, aggravates the SLA correct journey and it's known as beneficial suicide and uh, because it uh, at the end of this thing the um, neutrophil will be dying okay fine the neutrophil will die at the end of this fine with this understanding we'll move on to the next part if you see this image you will be able to see some kind of giant cell okay giant cells and if you see this giant cells okay means in this giant cell if you are able to see some multiple nuclei which are arranged in a shape of horseshoe okay horseshoe in which of the following what first of all what is the name of this giant cell is this a lang hans giant cell or langer hans giant cell could you answer could you guys answer in the comment section yeah lokesh yeah janvi yeah remember like janvi is a that's what the trap you have fallen yeah Rhea, you have just step uh, means like that means you were not fallen into it it is what it is the lang hans remember that's what that's what the main motive of the session fine means they will give you you know exactly what is the answer but the first option will be written as langer hans so you will go means you will mark and and immensely you won't i mean you subconsciously you won't remember also when you come out of exam hall you remember there is also one more option your friends will be discussing so don't get don't get the silly mistakes to be happen so remember this is what this is the lang hans giant cell fine whereas langer hans langer hans remember langer remember as der so langer is seen in a case of any derma means in skin so it is what it is a Normal antigen presenting cells, which is what it is the seen in a case of dermatology are in the skin, which is what it is known as Langer hand cells. Whereas Lang hand cells are the giant cells which seen in a case of TB. Okay, don't get confused. And we know, yeah, in spinosome layer will be seen in uh, in skin, yeah, uh, especially in the spinosome layer, we'll see this. Fine. Next one, if you see, if there is a if there is a inclusions over this inside the cell and both inside and outside the cell, okay, following an infection, what is the name of this giant cell? Yellow Kish Kirti, Baisla, Mediknik. Don't worry, Janvi. Yeah, come back. We'll give means uh, means <coughs> have a good comeback. Yeah, yeah, you are getting it correct. It is known as what? Vardin Finkeldi, Finkeldi giant cells. And this Vardin Finkeldi giant cells, it will be seen in a case of measles. It will be seen in a case of measles. Just remember, it will be seen in a case of measles. And this measles, we know, this measles can produce a seen a symptom known as subsclerosing panencephalitis just remember measles can produce a symptoms known as subsclerosing panencephalitis fine and this measles can produce a type of pneumonia the pneumonia caused by measles it is known as what it is known as hex pneumonia it's known as hex pneumonia fine next one if you able to see this is a zank smear remember it is a zank smear means this smears or this zank zank smears they are used in this dermatological examinations fine yeah 
and in this zinc cement you are able to see multiple nucleus. In which of the following conditions you will be able to see this multiple nucleus in a in a zinc smear? Could anyone answer in the comment section? Yeah, guys, it is what you will you will be able to see this multinucleated giant cells. Um, yeah, correct, Obala. You will be able to see this multiple nucleated giant cells in a case of HSV infections. In a case of herpes simplex infections, you will be able to see this multinucleated giant cells in the um, in the zinc smear. And next, it is the our favorite ovale appearance. Ovale appearance. Okay, it is the ovale appearance. And there are two ovale appearances. One means how will you be able to differentiate whether it is a reed Sternberg cell or a CMV? Because they will means some means like some exams they will just give this image and they will ask you what is the means like what is this cell? They won't ask you. They won't give any description of this. Mm, they won't give any uh, descriptions of this. Mm, of this image are the conditions fine so if you are able to see this red if you are able to see the center is red so remember red for reed so red for reed so reed sternberg cell will be seen in a case of hodgkin's lymphoma which will be center will be red in color okay yeah dark eyes will be in the case of cmv yeah correct yeah correct jan jan v correct baisla yeah obla correct yeah kirti yeah correct yeah lokesh yeah we are getting correct if you are able to see this blue color cells will be seen in a case of this blue color cells will be seen in a case of CMV infections. Fine, CMV infections will be able to see this. Like they will be uh, giving this um, condition, for example, they can tell you um, so there is a mm, there is a serpent, means they, they can tell you that there is a HIV positive patient and he is presenting with some chorioretinitis and there is a pizza pre chorioretinitis which will be caused by this CMV. Fine, yeah, it is what it is known as what is you know, Philip. Correct, correct, guys. I am getting it correct. Fine. Next one will move on to the this chart. Means like at least they will ask like minimum one question from this chart it will be sure. Either they will ask you as image based questions or they can ask you as a history or they can they can ask you about a condition. Yeah, location in HIV will be able to see this CD4 counts which is being less. Fine. And first thing you need to think it is the means first thing you need to differentiate it is the X link dominant and the recessive one. If you see this X link dominant condition, remember who will be dominant like you can you can mimic right like a male will be a it's a male dominant society it's a male dominant society no it's it's no more so previously even disease know it so it's not a dominant males are not the dominant so the in the Hindu prince itself it no the dominance is the female one so in a case of excellent dominant diseases they are most commonly seen in a case of female so it is the father to all daughters it is the father to all daughters yeah correct correct basila yeah correct kirti yeah like you are getting correct, it is the, the dominant one, it is the female one, fine. So, and this dominant one will be seen in a case of just few conditions. For example, Ravi. You can remember by this mnemonic as Ravi, okay. Red syndrome, Alport syndrome, Alport syndrome, and then vitamin D resistant rickets and incognitia pigmentae. Okay, incognita pigment. Yeah, correct by Isla. You are getting it correct. It is okay, fine. Next, this is what this is in a case of X link dominant. You can be able to see, right? This is a female, okay, and this is a male, okay. If you see this image, you will be able to see from this male, all of this female or this from father to all daughters will be affected. There is no son, the son will be spared here, fine. Next one is the recessive. If females are dominant, obviously, you know, the males will be recessive. So, here. There will be a females from mother, it will be to this all the sons. There will be so no females will be affected. Okay, just remember. Fine. So it is a X link recessive disorder. Fine. Next one. Then first you differentiated uh, this X link dominant and recessive one. Next you are going to differentiate between the autosomal recessive and the autosomal dominant. How will you differentiate by these two things? First is this gender and this generations. Fine. Everything for everything. First of all, you thought about this gender. And you segregated this auto the X link dominant and the recessive one. Next one you are going to um, differentiate this autosomal dominant and the recessive one. In the case of autosomal dominant number, there is no gender differentiation. There is a no gender differentiation. Whereas what is the differentiation is the factor is the generation. Okay. What is this generation? Is this if there is any skipping of this generation? If there is any skip, it will be what it is autosomal recessive one. But yeah, correct location. <laughs> or if there is any if there is no skip, it will be autosomal dominant. If you see this chart, you need to look into the families. You no need to look into this uh, 
means uh, uh, means who are residing near to the families or who are coming as new to the family. So just remember, if you see this is the family one. So if you see this family, the one part which is being skipped. So if it is skipped, so it will be autosomal recessive. Okay, so don't count this one because they are coming externally. Okay, so be vigilant with this because one of this FMG exam they ask this image means which looks similar to that autosomal dominant. But if you see if you see clearly, you will able to see it is the family, but he is coming outside. So it is what it is a autosomal recessive one. Fine. The class will be till like around till uh, 11 p.m. or 11:30 or um like around till that time we'll uh, close this class because okay fine and like pathology is almost at this end and next part it will be uh, taking 1 hour 45 minutes and 2 hours around fine so and we'll be taking a small break after this pathology fine fine and would anyone tell me what is this investigation which is being done here okay bye Sla. what is the name of this investigation waiting for your answers guys It is known as what? It is known as fluorescent in situ hybridization, known as fish. Okay, and in this fish, yeah, correct. Uh, synthil, it is known as what? It is known as fish. And this fish will be done, yeah, correct, Nijay. Yeah, fish sky. Mm, yeah, it is known as fish. Yeah, correct, correct. This fish will be done for a means, um, done for a known gene locus. Means like done in a case of gene locus which is being known. Means like we know this exact location of the zone, then we do this fish. Fine. Just remember, fine. And in which of the following conditions you will able to see this BCR ABL gene fusion? Means like the distant correlation. Yeah, means in few means in a case of karyotyping, we won't uh, able to identify this microarray and the small translocations. For those conditions, we'll be able to do this fish and we'll identify it. Yeah. yeah, correct. In which of the following conditions you'll able to see this BCR ABL fusion? Yeah, guys, you you should like you should be much fast in answering it. Yeah, waiting for your answers, guys. Yeah, it might be anti apoptotic yeah, correct. But but what is this BCR ABL fusion? What is this one? This will be seen in a case of which condition? It will be seen in a case of CML. Just remember, it will be seen in a case of CML and this CML in, in a case of this BCR ABL fusion. Okay. Okay, okay, don't worry, like uh, it's, it's a human mind will tend to forget, don't worry, okay. BCR ABL fusion means 9 is to 22 translocation, um, Philadelphia chromosome, you must be reading, right. So, it is what it is seen in a case of CML, okay, don't forget, okay. So, sometimes we will get forget, but when you see, because your exams are option based, you will be able to remember this option and you can see the answers in front of you. So, you can, you won't be having these issues, okay, don't worry. Yeah, sure, yeah, Lokesh, yeah. <laughs> For every question, I should bring uh, answers from next time onwards. Fine, I will try. Next, if you see this image, next will means this about this this image unit remember. Next one, if you see few syndromes like and their clinical features, fine. If you see this image, we have to see this is what this is the dry the Down syndrome. And if you see Down syndrome, it is due to the trisomy of 21. Fine. Trisomy of 21. And if there is a trisomy of 21, we'll study this with along with a small story. If you see this trisomy of 21, means he is down, means at the age of 21, he is down, means he is sad. Why he is sad? Because, mm, because he is he's single now. Means he is single now because someone broken his heart. Okay. Just remember, he is single and he is broken his heart. So, if he is single, means means he will be written, means he will be having ID card that he is single. How he will be having this ID card or identity card? Because it will be, um, there will be single simian crease in this hand. So, if it is having, he will be a single. So, just remember, so single simian crease. Single simian crease. Why is being see he is single now? Because his heart has been broken. Okay. So, just imagine it is as a, it has a heart and it is being broken. Okay. Why it is being broken? Because he has been committed before, but someone has translocated it. Fine. Yeah. Hand only that is known as simian crease, single simian crease. Because in in the case of Down syndrome, you will able to see this thing known as Robertsonian translocation. Okay, Robertsonian translocation. You will able to see in this conditions and this heart breaking means because Robertsonian translocated his girlfriend, so he's become single now. Fine. And then if you able to see why his heart is broken because he's having some endocardial 
endocardial cushion defect defect okay he means he is having endocardial cushion defect fine and when you are correct correct medical lithic it is endocardial cushion defect so he want to forget everything so in the case of down syndrome down syndrome the most common cause of leukemia it is what it is the ALL. So, he want to forget all, forget all about this uh, events which is being happened, but he is not able to forg forget. So, the God given him some, um, some things so that he, he can get this pre-senile Alzheimer's, okay. He will be getting um, this most common leukemia which is the ALL and he will be having this pre-senile Alzheimer's and since he is single and he is so depressed, he do not want to go out. So, he will be roaming inside the room. So, he will be always wearing the sandals. So, he will be having this sandal toe. So, he will be having this sandal toe gaps. Okay. Just remember these things by this mnemonic down because Robert Sonnen translocated his girlfriend heart broken. Yeah. M type, it is the most common and if it is less than 3 years, AML, AML, it is not ALL, it is AML, M7, it is the most common one. Okay. If it is less than 3 years, if it is more than R, if they are asking most common, it will be ALL. Okay. Fine. The Robert Sonnen translocated his girlfriend. So, his heart is broken because of endocardial cushion defect. Fine. So, he want to forget all. So, the most common ALL is, most common leukemia is ALL. And next, um, he want to forget all. So, he will be having this pre genial Alzheimer's. Fine. With this understanding, we will move on to the next part. Okay. And we know, like Down syndrome, we told it is a boy story. Now, we will just come to this story of a girl. Okay. Which is what? Which is a turner. And she is a, remember, she is a short girl. Okay. She is a short girl. And she is studying in a quite um, quite a big class like maybe in a 10th or 11th but she looks very short and she looks very means uh, she means she didn't attain any um, any minarchy or um, she is lacking the secondary sexual characteristics okay so since she is short everyone start to believe him okay everyone will start to call oh 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 that girl is going that girl is going going like that okay fine yeah, sure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Kriti. Like, I, I hope so it will help you out. So, like, everyone is calling this her as O. Okay. So, you just remember it is because of the 45XO. So, everyone calling as O. One day, she got um, much offended and she want to replay the match. She want to, she want to turn. So, what she want to do? She want to turn. So, yeah, she is uh, IQ normal. That's why she is in school, right? Okay. Her IQ will be normal. IQ will be normal. Fine. She want to turn. So, it is a turner syndrome, but she is unable to turn. Why? Because she will be having this low means webs. So, we will be having this webbed neck. So, so because of this webbed neck, she is unable to turn. Okay. So, but she is not heartbroken like him. But she, because she is already committed with someone known as Nonan. Okay. So, the male variant of this turner syndrome, it is known as Nonan syndrome, which is due to the, which is due to the involvement of this chromosome number 12. Okay. And and both of them they combine they make some streak so why what in which they will be making streak so because both of them they will be having some cardiac conditions as she is female she will be having this bicuspid aortic wall and the coactation of iota she will be having this bicuspid aortic wall and the coactation of iota and if as he's it's a male so like she thinks like whatever decision he makes it must be right so the male he will be having some right sided heart lesions like pulmonary stenosis Okay, pulmonary stenosis, and since they are both of them, they are having this heart problems. They will be making streak, so she will be having a streaky ovary. She will be having a streaky ovary. So remember, it's a small girl. Everyone is bullying us. Oh, oh, oh. So she wanted to turn. It's a turner syndrome, but she couldn't turn because of the web neck, and and mm, <clears throat> and uh, she's committed um, because uh, both of them they will be uh, committed with the guy known as Nonan because both of them they will be having the similar features and mm, as He's, she thinks he's right, so he'll be having some right sided heart lesions like pulmonary stenosis, but she'll be having this heart lesions of bicuspid aortic valve and the coactation of iota. And both of them they'll be having this heart condition, so they'll be maintaining the streak, so she'll be having a streak over it. Okay, fine. Um, this is a story in which you can remember about this Turner syndrome. Fine, like this is about the Turner syndrome, you can remember about. And with this understanding, I, I think so this thing will help you out. With this understanding, we'll move on to our next part. Okay, these are the two stories. Uh, which I had for these two things, fine. Yeah, thank you, Baisla. Fine, with this understanding, we'll move on to the next part. If you're able to see the features of cleft lip, cleft palate, along with P, every P things, this will be seen in a case of Patao syndrome, okay. And we know Patao syndrome is due to the trisomy of 13, okay. It is due to the trisomy of 13, it is will be what it is the Patao syndrome, fine. And it will there will be a presence of this 
two things known as this rocker bottom support along with this cardiac defects known as VSD. Fine. Next one, if you able to see this Edward syndrome, in the case of Edward syndrome, you will be able to see this presence of this prominent occiput known as elongated foot and along with that, so he means like in this condition, you will be able to see this, yeah, the correct bicella, correct crei, correct RSR, correct nijai, this Edward will be because of trisomy 18 and there will be the same, VSD will be there and same rocker bottom foot. In both of this condition, there will be this features of rocker bottom foot will be there and he will be having the extra harsh kidneys. And we studied before which of the following artery will prevent this ascent of this harsh kidneys. Yeah, yeah, Dennis Brown splint has been he will be used for this rocker bottom foot. Yeah, we'll study this in a tomorrow session. Like we'll have this, we are having this images of the same. Fine. Can anyone tell me what is the name of this artery which is being responsible uh, for preventing this ascent of this Edwards in means like uh, ascent of this harsh kidney? Yeah, Nijay, it will be the inferior mesenteric artery. It is the inferior mesenteric artery and we know it is at the level of L3. So, remember, it is the yeah, correct location, correct storm shaker, it is a uh, like correct bisla, it is what it is the inferior mesenteric artery, which is the level of L3. And correct, correct rows, correct, correct metric, it is the inferior mesenteric artery. Next one, if you see a male with the features of gynecomasia and along with features of small testes and features of mental retardation or decreased IQ okay and these are all will be the these are all will be the features of yeah 47 xxy these are all the features of which of the following condition yeah guys correct yeah kirti it is what it is seen in the case of cleany filters cleany filters syndrome okay just remember these are all the features of cleany filter syndrome yeah just remember yeah correct doc arthic correct bicella correct kirti fine with this understanding, we'll move on to the next. And in the case of um, in the case of vasculitis, you know to remember which of the following vasculitis will be having this temporal headache, okay, and will be manifesting in most commonly in males in the old age. What is the name of this? Yeah, yeah, Rose, they will be having this tall stature. Yeah, yeah, location is what it is the temporal arteritis, temporal arteritis, also known as giant cell, giant cell arteritis. Okay, fine. And there will be a splitting of this internal elastic lamina. Means on, on microscopy, you will be able to see this splitting. On microscopic examination, you will be able to see this splitting of internal elastic lamina. Fine, just remember. Next, if you are able to see a correct rose, correct rhea, correct location, you are getting it, the diagnosis correct, the same. They, they will be giving this typical history of um, this uh, the nodulic uh, sensation felt over this temporal region or they will give you this image so this is the descriptive image or else this thing they can give fine and there will be a features of giant cells you will able to able to see appreciate here and and if you able to see some of the vasculitis which has been yeah unilateral head attack correct yeah in the in which you will able to see this involvement of this aortic arch which of the following vasculitis will involve this aortic arch and produces this uh, means Aortic arch syndrome means also known as pulseless disease. What is the name of the disease? Yeah, skull cancers. Yeah, correct nature. It is what it is known as Takayasu arteritis. It is known as what? It is known as Takayasu arteritis. Yeah, correct location, correct Dakarti. It is what it is known as what? It is known as Takayasu arteritis. Fine. And, and if you able to see, see a child, which is means like child is being 5 to 15 years of age and who is presenting with more than uh, or less than 5 years more than 5 days of fever yeah harikai though yeah it's correct yeah it can be seen yeah yeah bacilla and the child is also presenting with fever and along with few features for example there is a features of conjunctivitis there is a presence of this rash okay there is a presence of this criteria known as cream criteria conjunctivitis rash and there is a erythema and along with the edema okay and there is a lymph adenopathy, there is a lymph adenopathy and a mucosal involvement. This is one of the strawberry tongue. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, rose, yeah, baisla, yeah, ria, yeah, karti, yeah, nija, yeah, you are getting it correct. Yeah, Lokesh, it is what, yeah, harika, it is what it is the Kawasaki disease. Kawasaki disease. And we know for this Kawasaki disease, we use this immunoglobulin IVIG as a treatment. Okay, we'll use this IVIG as a treatment. There will be formation of this 
Okay. Yeah, there will be features of this strawberry tongue. Two conditions will be able to see the strawberry tongue. One is the scarlet fever, next one is the Kawasaki disease. Fine. Or else, in a case of strawberry vagina, will be seen in a case of trichomoniasis. Okay, just current. Yeah, yeah, we'll give high dose aspirin because they are high prone for uh, generation of this MI and aneurysms. Fine. With this understanding, we'll move on to the next cardiology part. If you see, there is an asymmetrical, <laughs> sorry, asymmetrical septal hypertrophy okay along with this this ventricles means left ventricle is being a, in a shape of banana shaped ventricle banana shaped ventricular cavity will be seen in a case of which of the following yeah guys correct yeah founding with answers yeah rose arun harika means opuku and lokesh medic nitik baisla lokesh yeah harika yeah baisla you are getting it correct it is known as what banana shaped ventricles and it will be seen in a case of HOCM, fine, and it is due to the mutation of which of the following gene? It will be due to the mutation of beta myosin heavy chain. Okay, could anyone tell me what is the chromosome on which this gene is present in? What is the chromosome number this gene is present in? Yeah, remember, it is this. Uh, beta myosin he he heavy chain will be present in the chromosome number 14 fine and fine if there is any just a just a hypertrophy if there is just hypertrophy of this ventricle you will be able to see this type of this type of nuclei known as box car nuclei box car nuclei will be just seen in a case of hypertrophy just hypertrophy whereas in a case of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy yeah not uh, rose it's not 23 yeah correct by side it is 14 yeah fine not our own it's not 11 it's 14 okay harika it's not 5 okay just don't confuse it's 14 okay remember remember for till your life uh, it's hcm it's the chromosome number 14 fine now, if you see it's just a hypertrophy it will lead to this box car appearance whereas if there is an hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy means there is a huge hypertrophy so it will lead to this myocyte disarray okay there is a haphazard deposition or haphazard deposition or haphazard proliferation or haphazard hypertrophy of this muscle leading to this type of histological features fine next one fine just remember this thing next one if you are able to see this type of dilated cardiomyopathy if there is a uh, history of alcoholic uh, given or if there is any um, titan gene mutation okay titan gene mutation this will be resulting in this type of cardiomyopathy known as dilated cardiomyopathy fine yeah correct harika and in this you will be able to see this type of nucleus they are known as ninja star nucleus ninja star nuclei fine they are known as ninja star nuclei fine yeah correct result yeah correct you are getting it correct fine next we will just see about few images of this infective endocarditis if you know this means like endocarditis especially endocarditis it might be of different types if you see this type <coughs> If you see, see them, see this uh, rheumatic heart disease. This rheumatic heart disease mostly the vegetations will be present on the superior surface. There will be small, small vegetation. It's not a big one. There will be small, small vegetations will be uh, present along the line of closure. So the small one they will be present on the line of closure. Whereas if you see this infective endocarditis one, yeah, correct, Baisla. If you see this infective endocarditis one, there is a large one. It is a large one, and it is a large, bulky, and it is a friable one. Means means they can dislodge and can cause embolism okay fine it is the this they can dislodge and can cause embolism yeah correct Aaron? yeah most common valve to be involved in the case of rh it will be a metal valve involvement there will be a initially there will be a regurgitation followed by a stenosis and it can uh, lead to this mouth appearance and a fish mouth appearance even fine and next one is nbt also known as marantric marantric endocarditis means this is not a this is not because of any of the infection or any of this uh, phenomena it is because of this mm, it is because of this pathological fibrin clots formations for example in a case of uh, aml in which if there is a pathological clots or pathological fibrins and platelets being formed this leads to the formation of nbt also known as marantric endocarditis so there also will be this small fibril vegetations and it will be also along the line of closure so just remember rhd and the nbt both of them they will be having this same features but in RHD, it will be small lesions, whereas in a case of NBT, it will be a more larger when compared to the RHD. Okay. Whereas in a case of SLE, means means LSE, ligament sac endocarditis, will be seen in a case of SLE. You will be able to see both sides. Okay. SLE, remember, for side by side. Yeah, correct, Rose. 
yeah lip lens sac endocarditis will be seen in the case of sle so it will be seen on the both surface of this walls okay just remember and this is the rhd one and we know this rhd <coughs> there is a body known as arch of bodies can be seen okay arch of bodies can be seen fine and the most common valve to be involved that is the metral valve okay metral valve okay and we know the most common organism is responsible for this infective endocarditis it is what it is the staph aureus that is the staph aureus fine with this understanding we'll move on to the next part you see the respiratory part means in asthma there might be the means yeah you will able to see this yeah correct guys and if you able to see this type of spirals known as cushman spirals this is actually what which are this tracheal mucosal lines yeah correct shakib yeah um, yeah correct shakib yeah it is what it is known as cushman spirals which will be which is actually what which is the mucosal of this trachea okay fine yeah three c's which is seen in a case of asthma next one is this is what what is the name of this things name of this crystals yeah locus yeah correct arrows yeah, you are getting it correct what is the name of this crystals this known as charcot laden crystals they are known as charcot laden crystals okay these are actually what they are from this eosinophils okay these are they are actually from this eosinophils which is made up of the galactin pen fine next one this is these are the bodies known as criola bodies this criola bodies what is this criola bodies made up of the correct arun baisla rose shakib yeah ria yeah these are like, these are actually what this criola bodies which are actually what which can look like something similar to of multinuclear giant cells in zanks mayer of hsv okay but you need to see the history also right in rare occasions they will just give images and they will ask but in most of the cases they will be they will be giving a proper history and they will be asking fine yeah it is what it is the epithelium mucus plus along with this epithelial cells yeah correct acephaly yeah it is epithelial cells just to remember fine and so what three all about is fine then with this understanding we'll move on to the next part if you see this image if you see this image in a case of sarcoidosis you'll able to see this type of bodies known as asteroid bodies okay asteroid bodies and along with this asteroid bodies what is the other type of bodies you'll able to see in a case of sarcoidosis yes i can correct yeah, it is known as what schumann bodies it is known as what schumann bodies okay and in, in most of the cases of pneumoconiosis you will able to see this type of bodies known as ferruginous bodies ferruginous bodies okay because over this there will be deposition means our body will go and deposit the iron and we can stain this iron using the prussian blue so they are known as ferruginous bodies yeah yeah guys yeah rsr acephaly yeah rose alifa alifa you are getting it correct and this if there is a ferruginous bodies present along with this you will able to see this pleural plaques pleural plaques and gross and also and next you will able to see this feathery pleural plaques pleural plaques all will be seen in a case of which one of the following pneumoconiosis this three will be typical for which of the following pneumoconiosis yeah remember this three of this it will be typical for yeah asbestosis it will be typical for yeah guys correct shakib correct it and rose yeah you are getting it right this one is seen in a case of asbestosis fine and remember this asbestosis involves this base so it remember this base of this lungs and will be having this pleural lesions and what is the most specific type of carcinoma you will able to see in a case of uh, asbestosis what is the most specific one listen to the question carefully most specific yeah correct check it is known as what mesothelioma Whereas most common if they ask the it will be the bronco alveolar cancer also known as also the adenocarcinoma yeah radhika yeah rsr you are getting it correct it is what it is the mesothelioma which is the most specific one yeah lokesh the most common one is the adenocarcinoma yeah shakib it is the adenocarcinoma which is the most common one okay fine this understanding will move on to the tumor part of this um or the ca part of the lungs yeah correct arun <coughs> if you able to see this uh, means onion field deposition in it means in a tumor means it means remember it's not a means in a lung tumor okay it's not any other tumor if you see this thing in a lung tumor it will be what it is a keratin pulse correct rose keratin pulse yeah bacilla yeah shakib yeah it will be seen in a case of squamous cell carcinoma 
and if you able to see this there is alveoli and just one side only the tumor cells are being getting deposited so this is known as what butterfly and friends also known as lepidic pattern will be seen in a case of which of the following conditions yeah guys remember this will be seen in a case of bronco alveolar carcinoma just remember next if you able to see some kind of vessel involvement okay if you see a lung tumor which is being involved into this vessel and showing this this blue small small cells and the small small cells which is being involving into this yeah correct or it is known as what azopardi effect which will be seen in a case of azopardi effect effect which will be seen in a case of which will be seen in a case of small cell lung cancer okay which will be seen in a case of small cell lung cancer just remember fine with this understanding we'll move on to the kidney part fine in kidney if you able to see if you able to see uh, means you need to differ differentiate yeah, correct rhea correct basilar correct acephaly fine if you able to, we need to differentiate this type of renal stones and this renal stones they'll be either they'll be giving this features or they'll be giving this images as their features fine and if you see first one if you able to see this one if you able to see the cysteine stones you'll we'll able to see this six are the hexagonal crystals and this hexagonal crystals will be seen in a case of cysteine stones fine next one if you able to see this coffin lid coffin lid type of cells take if you able to see this coffin lid type of cells will means coffin lid type of crystals will be seen in yeah correct uh, lalit kumar yeah if you able to in which condition you able to see this coffin lid cells coffin lid crystals yeah guys yeah yeah in the chakki video seen in a case of stag horn calculi which is what which is the triple phosphate stones okay could anyone tell me what is the most common organism which is being causing infection um means infectious organism responsible for this formation of this stagon stones or stagon calculi yeah correct triple phosphate stones correct lalit yeah it is what it is the protease and it will be producing this enzyme known as ureas okay they will be positive for ureas so okay fine yeah radhika don't means like don't get confused it's not equal it's protease fine next one if you able to see this type of envelope type of envelope type of crystals it will be seen in a case of which of the following uh, means yeah it's silent clear yeah correct this will be seen in a case of which which type of crystals will be having this envelope shape yeah remember it is the calcium oxalate dihydrate and if you able to see this dumbbell shaped it will be seen in a case of calcium oxalate monohydrate so if sometimes you'll be having confusion like which is this calcium oxalate monohydrate or calcium oxalate dihydrate fine both of them are calcium crystals only if you just remember if you are just if you are means if you went into college and if you are if you staying single or if you are still single then means what do you need to do means um, you need to build up your body so if you are single if you are mono you need to lift the dumbbells and you need to build your body so if you are mono you need to limp, yeah you need to lift the dumbbells or you can remember as mono is dumb which is uh, which is more mean meanful like friend okay fine and if you if you are single you are building your body of course you will get committed once you get committed you need to uh, you need to you need to um, have a proper communication so in previous times to have a proper communications we need to send letters means you need to send via envelopes so this envelope type of crystals will be seen in a case of dioxalate so between two you will able to communicate so this will be okay you just you can remember okay to communicate you are giving letters okay just remember fine and next one this rhomboid means this rhomboid type of crystals will be seen in a case of uric acid stones okay could anyone tell me is uric acid stones are um, are radiolucent or they are um, radio opaque stones yeah shakib yeah radhika yeah they are what they are radiolucent so they will be radiolucent in nature so they are radiolucent stones fine that is this calcium oxalate and stored stones we can easily we can we can easily see with the image because they are radio opaque in nature right next one will some to will come to the some cars if you see this cars yeah karthi yeah arun yeah basila yeah shakib yeah we are getting it correct if you see this type of cars in cars they are usually usually because of it's a normal phenomena means because of this presence of proteins in the loop of henle known as tom hansfeld protein okay 
and if this if there is a no any problem like if just a cast uh, means if just just a produced cast we won't think much but if you in, in the appearance of cast if you able to see this muddy brown cast muddy brown cast in which condition you able to see this muddy brown cast could anyone answer me in the, in the chat section yeah correct basilla in which condition you able to see this muddy brown cast remember it will be seen in a case of acute tubular necrosis it will be seen in a case of acute tubular necrosis and if you able to see this wbcs wbcs it will be seen in a case of glomerulonephritis like for example any of this nephrotic syndrome yeah correct check any of this nephrotic syndrome or nephritic syndrome will be having this wbc cross okay and and especially in a case of nephritic syndrome okay in a case of nephritic syndrome you will be able to see this rbc cross yeah thank you thank you Sat satyam it's nice to hear rsr yeah pyelonephritis or any of these infections it will be having this uh, wbc cross fine fine and uh, then wbc cast will be seen in a case of nephrotic syndrome so okay and nephrotic syndrome will be able to see this uh, features of hoo ha okay there will be hematuria there will be oliguria there will be hematuria there will be oliguria and there will be hypertension and there will be azotemia just remember these are the features yeah this mm, yeah pratik uh, batman like this pdf of this session will be uh, shared in dr banu prakash sir group once the session will be over yeah correct um, yeah glomerulonephritic especially glomerulonephritis especially the nephritic syndrome component will be having this rbc cast fine okay. with this understanding we'll move on to the next part <coughs> and in uncertainty means there is some certain situations you need to um, just see the image and you need to know whether it is a normal or abnormal one in one of the neat pg examinations they asked this this image in which is which was absolutely normal one they just asked what is the pathology behind this okay so first image if you able to see this is absolutely normal glomeruli okay so once you see like um, don't uh, means don't uh, see as a um, see as an answer perspective just see and observe the images so if there is any changes if there is no any deposition like this any nodular glomerulosclerosis if there is no any changes or if there is no any crescentic deposition so it will be a normal one so if you able to see this if you able to see this nodular deposition in the case of diabetic nephropathic patient so it will be known as what which lesion yeah guys correct someone told yeah it is known as kw lesion okay it is known as kenstein wilson's lesion okay it is actually what which is a nodular glomerulosclerosis next in which of the following condition you will be able to see this crescent shape of this glomerular right crescent shape where you will be able to see yeah basilla yeah mohit chabi shahib it is correct it is it will be seen in a case of rpgm fine it will be seen in a case of rpgm next means there is a child who is presenting you with a frothy urine fine it's not the urine which is being turning into black it's a frothy urine the child is presenting with and he is having um this there is a edema there is anasarca means um edema over the all over his body means swelling all over his body and on on normal microscopy you couldn't find anything but whereas on electron microscopy you will be able to observe this poroscytes which are being fused together yeah guys you are getting it correct shakib um and lokesh um, means shakib Lokesh, yeah, initially work means getting it. Don't get confused. Like it's a edema means uh, edema and frothy urine means there is a protein being lost. Means it's a nephrotic syndrome. So the most common cause of nephrotic syndrome in a children it will be what? It is the minimal change disease. And in electron microscopy of the minimal change disease, you will be able to see this appearance known as effacement, effacement of podocytes. Okay, effacement of podocytes. And we know this minimal change disease will be having this excellent response to the steroids okay yeah pratik yeah <clears throat> rsr radhika basila shakib yeah yeah nice nice answers fine i'm just um, like like i'm in a blue blow right now like you're getting it correct with most of the questions so don't worry fine and a patient is presenting with features of fever hematuria and a flank mass okay and means all of these things are the triad of which of the following you know yeah guys yeah this three this three uh, they are known as two lead triad which is be seen in a case of rcc and we know the most common cause of rcc yeah, correct shakib it will be it is what it is the clear cell variant of clear cell you will able to see the cells are completely clear so it is what it is the yeah, correct karthik yeah, correct basilite is what it is the 
clear cell carcinoma of the RCC, clear cell variant of the RCC and which is being associated with the syndrome known as one hippel lindau syndrome. Okay, it, is, it will be associated with the syndrome known as one hippel lindau syndrome and it will be having the involvement of chromosome number 3. Take it just a moment, fine. With this understanding, we will move on to the, on the next image. In the case of, there is a features of this RCC along with this, there is the appearance of this plant cell appearance. Which of the following RCC will be having this plant cell appearance? Yeah, reticulia, yeah, you are getting it correct. It will be seen in a case of chromophore RCC. Fine, you will be seeing this plant cell appearance in a case of chromophobe RCC. Fine, just remember these things. With this understanding, we will move on to the next part. If you see this GMH, if there is a chronic diarrhea along with features of malabsorption, and then duodenal biopsy, you will be able to see this past positive macrophages. Past positive macrophages. Fine. What is the diagnosis of this condition? In which condition you will be able to see this past positive macrophages and the lamina propria? Yeah, correct. It is, it is seen in a case of Buppel's disease. It will be seen in a case of Buppel's disease. Fine. Where in which you will be able to see this. Yeah, correct. Now, it is not ulcerative colitis, it is not celiac. Like, let me clarify you. because um, this macrophages, they will be eating this Trypanema plate bacteria. So, when this bacteria inside this macrophages, they will uptake this pastin, okay, and they will turn pink in color, fine. They will uptake the pastin and they will turn pink in color and this will be exclusively seen in a case of Trypanema plate, okay. Whereas, means like, um, whereas if you are able to see, there is, there must be villi, but if you are able to see, there is a atrophy of the villus. There is a atrophy of villus along with the scripts which has being a yeah, thank you <laughs> yeah there is a crypt hyperplasia okay there is a crypt hyperplasia and this both of these features will be seen in a case of which condition yeah correct shakib and dark karthik it's now it is the celiac disease okay celiac disease and we know the celiac disease will be having some association with this gluten so we'll avoid this bro in diet so okay so we'll avoid this bro in diet fine yeah correct radhika yeah it is the celiac disease fine and then and the dermatological variant will study in the upcoming sessions which is what is the dermatitis herpetiformis fine yeah yeah basila yeah karthik fine with this understanding we'll move on to the next part this is where you will able to see this last time you answered right crypt abscess in which means in some conditions you'll able to see this crypt abscess along with some of the features of bloody diarrhea yeah yeah, I forgot like there is a presence of anti tissue transglutaminase antibodies along with the, they will be positive for positive for anti endomysial antibodies. Endomysial antibodies. Yeah, correct. Siraj, yeah, correct. We need to avoid the bro. Okay, if you are able to see this image, you will be able to see this presence of this crypt abscess. Crypt abscess along with this continuous involvement with clinical features of bloody diarrhea with the clinical features of bloody diarrhea and the most common part to be involved is rectum and this all of this following along with this formation of the small small pseudo polyps pseudo polyps okay will be seen in a case of which condition yeah lead pipe appearance yeah will be seen yeah correct shakib yeah uh, lokesh yeah light yeah karthik yeah it will be seen in a case of ulcerative colitis okay we will able to see this uh, um, <clears throat> bloody diarrhea, fine, and there will be a lead pipe appearance because of this loss of hastations, fine. And if you are able to see this formation of strictures, and there will be means the cobblestone will is, is not shown here, but there is a means since there is a skip lesions, strictures, skip lesions, cobblestone, um, cobblestone mucosa, along with um, along with the fissure fistulas. Will be seen in a case of which is Crohn's disease. Fine. Yeah, correct. Shakib. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Means ulcerative colitis, it will be positive for P and K. Okay, yeah, Shakib. Yeah, Lalit. Yeah, Shweta. Tani thing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, dopamine. Dopamine. Yeah, fine. Yeah. And this you will be able to see this. Granuloma formation also in a case of occasionating granuloma will be seen in a case of a thank you dopamine will be seen in a case of Crohn's disease. Fine, this will be seen in a case of Crohn's disease. And could anyone tell me? Yeah, the most common site will be the 
terminal ileum when the most common site will be terminal ileum what is the most uh, structure which is to be spared in the case of crohn's disease could anyone tell me spare structure in crohn's disease is yeah it will be what it will be the rectum and the antibody which is being responsible yeah correct mm, correct little bit an rsr and the antibody which is being responsible will, will be the anti saccharomyces cerevisiae antibody fine just to write in the asca antibodies fine with this understanding we will move on to our next part if you see this type of arborizing arborizing polyp in which of the following conditions you will be able to see this arborizing polyp yeah rsr correct yeah we are getting it correct yeah, correct. We will be seeing in this condition in case of Tude Jagger syndrome. Could anyone tell me what is the gene which is being mutated in the case of Tude Jagger syndrome? Yeah, correct. Bacillus radica. And this arborizing polyps, it also will be in the case of Tude Jagger syndrome, it will be as a Yashribam. Yeah, you are means and Shakib. Yeah, means your top notch. Like it is what it is the STK11 gene. Fine. And this arborizing polyp, it will be always also having this mucosal deposition or mucosal hyperpigmentation, hyperpigmentation known as lentigenes. Fine. Which of the in which of the following condition you will able to see this onion peel appearance of this um bile ducts? In which of the following condition you will able to see this onion peel appearance of this bile ducts? Yeah, guys. Yeah, it, yeah, Shakib, it is correct. It is what is the primary sclerosing cholangitis. And we know ulcerative colitis can be associated with this primary sclerosing cholangitis because both of them they show this same P and K positivity. Whereas we know vaginus can show both C and K and P and K positivity. Fine. C and K, P and K positivity, but most common it is the C and K part. Okay, fine. Yeah, correct, Rath. Uh, rock, correct, Nidhi, correct, Basila, correct, Lalit, correct, Shakib, correct, Siraj. Fine. Yeah, um, yeah, that's correct, Arun. Yeah, fine. With this, we'll move on to the some part of the CNS. Means, if you're able to see this type of flame cells or this kind of flame kind of appearance, which is known as what neurofibrillary tangles, is actually made up of this tau proteins. It will be seen in a case of Alzheimer's disease. There is the same Alzheimer's disease having one more feature known as Herana bodies. No. No, Nigri bodies, it's a different one. Nigri bodies, uh, like it means it also having this uh, similar uh, picture, but it will be there will be a history given and it will be seen in a case of cerebellum. Okay, it will be near to the Purkinje cells, you will be able to see. Fine, and this Hirona bodies also will be seen in a case of which is made up of actin, which also will be seen in a case of Alzheimer's disease. Fine, and which of the conditions today we studied? We had this Friesen Alzheimer's, yeah, neurofibrillary tangles and Hirona bodies are yeah, correct. In the case of Down syndrome, you will be having this pre senile Alzheimer's. Just remember, fine. With this understanding, we will move on to the next part. If you are able to see, yeah, correct, Shakib, yeah, correct, uh, Lokesh, yeah, correct, Arasa, yeah. If you are able to see this image, in which you will be able to see there is a butterfly like glioma, there is a butterfly like glioma, glioma, because of this involvement of this corpus callosum. Corpus callosum. Okay. What is the thing you will think of? Ya Shakib, Ya Meher, Ya Shubham, Ya Radhika, Ya Rock. It is what it is seen in a case of Ya Basila. It will be seen in a case of glioblastoma. Glioblastoma. And we know it is due to the wild type mutation of this isocitrate dehydrogenase. Okay. It is due to the isocitrate dehydrogenase, wild type mutation. And it is the and this glioblastoma multiforme. It is a hmm, Ya Lokesha, correct? Ya Rapunzel zone. Yeah, it will be it will be a grade 4 tumor it is a grade 4 brain tumor okay so it is a one of the malignant one fine just see next one if you able to see this one this is what this is a pink and this is a white if you see the center it is a pink just remember just remember this pink closets means like if you see means like it's just a it's just a male oriented study so females don't get offended so if you see if you see males, like um, if you see something, some rosettes which are having pink in, in the inside, means it is what it is pseudo rosettes. Pseudo rosettes, fine. And these are being compared with men. Why it is being compared with men? Because males will be having, ha having means like uh, males will be having in their heart as females. So, but okay, so the males will be having in their heart which which is females. And females they like the color pink. So 
females will having pink color in their heart and this like males will be having this pink color in their heart and this will be known as this pseudorosids it's also known as homer right pseudorosids fine yash ya lalit ya shubham ya thank you yeah fine and this will be seen in a case of pseudorosids and this will be seen in a case of three conditions like medulloblastoma ewing sarcoma and neuroblastoma fine and these are the three conditions you will able to see fine yeah, yeah that is the rb gene localization yeah correct lalit fine next it is the white if you able to see the transparent one the white one it is what it is the true rosette which will be seen in a case of retinoblastoma okay which will be seen in a case of 13q14 fine which is the local the local is the local is the 13q14 fine which is true rosette which is also known as fluxner Winterstener, also known as just remember it is fluxner white or white which is mean center if it is white so it will be a true rosette so it will be seen in a case of retinoblastoma fine it is uh, due to the r gene mutation fine just remember these things so this understanding will move on to the next part be able to see this palisading of this nuclei to the one side okay palisading of nucleus along with the two zones which is having this antennae a which is antennae b which is having less number of cells and antennae a which is having a lot of cells yeah as if you are okay, getting it correct it is known as what vestibular schwannoma that's known as previously known as acoustic neuroma fine and okay and this vestibular schwannoma will also will show this antennae antennae a and antennae b areas along with okay verruque bodies verruque bodies just remember fine and uh, yeah, correct. Arun, yeah, acoustic neuroma. It is also known as acoustic neuroma. Yeah, it can be associated with this NF2. Okay, NF2. Okay, the mismu tumors. And if you able to see this fried egg appearance, fried egg appearance along with this chicken wire calcifications. In which condition you are able to see this one? Yeah, in MRI, you are able to see this ice cream cone appearance. In which condition you are able to see this fried egg appearance along with this chicken wire calcifications? Yeah, Sveta, yeah, Karthik, yeah, Rock, yeah, Radhika, yeah, Somesh, yeah, Sifali, yeah, Nidhi, yeah, Rock, it will be seen in a case of oligodentroglioma. Oligodentroglioma. Fine. And next, if you able to see this Rosenthal fibers, Rosenthal fibers along with the cystic tumor at the medulla. Cystic tumor at the medulla. Or at the cerebellum. It will be seen in a case of which tumor? means mostly at the level of cerebellum it will be seen in means it will be due to which tumor yeah oh yeah that's correct only good introglioma yeah that's the previous one it is seen in a case of pilocytic astrocytoma astrocytoma just remember yeah it is most commonly seen in a case of children yeah correct Ria, shakib and asif ali yeah basila yeah fine yeah radhika just remember fine so this understanding will move on to the <coughs> blood path fine if you're able to see in a case of uh, Bone marrow biopsy will use this types of needle. If you are able to see this is a screw at the side, it is known as Salah noodle. So if you are able to see a screw at the side, it is known as Salah noodle. And if you are able to see this type of needle, it is known as Jamshidi needle. It is known as Jamshidi needle. And if you are not able to appreciate any screw, and it is made up of this two are made up of steel. Okay. And if, if you are not able to appreciate the side screw, it, which is uh, in a straight in the screw kind of thing, it is in a straight fashion, it is known as what? Klima needle. It is known as what? Klima needle. Okay, just remember. Ya Ria, Ya Rock, Ya Basila, correct. And in a case of peripheral smear, if any peripheral smear is given, if you are able to see this yellow kind of granules, this yellow kind of granules, just remember it will be typical for this eosinophils. It will be typical for this eosinophils. If any, if they give any image and if they contain this yellow granules, it will be eosinophils. Fine? Don't be confused with that. Next, if you are able to see a child who is having these features of hepatosplenomegaly or mainly a splenomegaly along with the features of chipmunk faces along with undiagnosed, you will able to see this microscopic, micro, <coughs> microscopic type of anemia picture. And you will be able to see this target cells. What you will think of? What you will think of? Yeah, guys, guys correct. Yeah, yeah, Shubham, um, yeah, Sveta, yeah, Radhika, yeah, Somesh, yeah, Arun. Will be think of beta thalassemia, which is what we think of thalassemia. And we know in a case of Mainzer index, thalassemia will be having Mainzer index less than thirty. 
fine. Next, if you are able to appreciate this type of blister cells are bite cells along with this along with this stain showing this Heinz bodies. Yeah, hair and sting on X-ray, correct? Means actually Rosenthal fibers, they are actually normal fibers. Uh, means uh, it's in normally it's appear in our brain. Means like it will be normally deposited. Whereas, whereas in a case of pilocytic astroma, it will be deposited in a fashion so that we can uh, we can see. Okay. So no need to remember much about it. Fine. Like no need to go in depth about it. Just remember this small concept that uh, like Rosenthal fibers uh, like in those pattern will be seen in a case of astrocytoma. Okay. Heinz bodies, bodies will be seen in a case of G6PD, fine, yeah, bite cells and these things will be seen in a case of G6PD deficiency and next if you able to see this macro ovulocytes along with this hyper segmented neutrophils, this macro ovulocytes along with hyper segmented neutrophils will be features of this vitamin B12 deficiency anemia, which is a type of megaloblastic anemia and this will also, uh, you are also able to see yeah, one more type of bodies known as Howell Jolly bodies. Howell Jolly bodies. Yeah, so Mesh, yeah, Basila, yeah, you are getting it correct. It is a type of megaloblastic anemia which is due to the vitamin B12 deficiency. Fine. And next, then, just a minute. And next, in the same condition, you will be able to see this, this type of, this type of rings known as cabot rings. Cabot rings also seen in a case of vitamin B12 deficiency and also in a case of sometimes in a case of splenectomy. Yeah, correct, Ria? Correct, RSR. Fine. And next, you will be able to see this type of ringed sideroblast. Ringed sideroblast means like around this, around this RBC or this around this um, RBC, you will be able to see, see this deposition of this iron. So, it will be seen, in, it will be known as ringed sidro, sideroblast. Yeah. Okay, fine. And this will be seen in a case of myelodysplastic syndrome. It will be seen in a case of myelodysplastic syndrome. Just remember. Fine. Yeah. And this same knuckle hyperpigmentation. Knuckle hyperpigmentation also seen in a case of vitamin B12 deficiency. Just remember these things. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ranjan. Yeah, Rose. Yeah, means, means there are two different entities. Means if you see this Heinz bodies, means if you see a case of G6P deficiency, there is a deficiency of this enzyme in this NADPH means means there is a, uh, this deficiency of this mm, enzyme lead to the deficiency of NADPH. So, if there is any deficiency of this there will be huge free radicals because this NADPH they will con NADH they will convert this free radicals and they will absorb it. If there is no free radical scavenger there will be huge free radicals and they will come and eat up this hemoglobin and they lead to this deposition as, as a hemoglobin debris fine. So, it will be what this will be Manifest Heinz bodies. This will be seen in a case of any um, reticulose reticulocyte staining. You will be able to see appreciate this Heinz bodies. Whereas this Howell Jolly bodies will be able to see in a case of normal Romanowski stain. Okay. This is how you are able to see. You will be able to differentiate this uh, Heinz bodies from this Howell Jolly bodies. Fine. I think so. This um, you are able to differentiate. It's known as Fluxner Wintestinal rosette. Remember, Fluxner Wintestinal rosette is not a it is a true rosette, fine. Whereas, whereas homorite pseudo rosettes, remember, homorite pseudo rosettes are pseudo rosettes, whereas fluxinal ventestinal rosettes, it is a true rosettes, fine. Yeah, in G6PD, there will be a history of mm, drug intake, just remember, fine. And this is how this normal cell de develops, and with this, we will move to the next part. If you are able to see, there is a all lineage, it means if there is a hyperproliferation of the, if there is any mm, hyperproliferation of this, all is all this lineage, and on examination, you will be able to see this type of rods known as R rods. You will be able to see, okay. And this will be typical for AML. And this R rods will be typically seen in a case of AML M3. It is actually what which is the PML RARA fusion. Yeah, guys, correct. It is not CML uh, Lalith, it is AML. Fine. Yeah, it is R rods. Correct, correct, Ranjan. It is the R rods which is what which is the PML RARA fusion which will be the 1517, which is, which is the 1517 fusion, just remember, fine, and fine, this is the R rods, and next, if you able to see this type of just lymphocytes, okay, if just the lymphocytes which are being, showing this appearance known as school girl, or a convent girl appearance, and a child, 
just having the features of fever along with bone pain. This will be typical for this ALL. Okay, this will be typical for this ALL. Remember, this is a child, so so it will be a features will be seen in a case of ALL. Fine. Let us if you are able to see this type of smudge cells, which is due to the absence of vimentin. Okay, and if there is a smudge cell which is due to this absence of vimentin, if they while preparing the slides, if they if they if they burst, it will lead to this formation of smudge, smudge cell will be seen in a case of CLL. It's also you can see there is a uniform, so it is also will be the lymphocytes. Fine, just remember. So yeah, Lalit, yeah, you are getting it correct. Yeah, Ranjan, yeah, correct. Yeah. In the case of CML, in the case of CML, we will be able to see 920. Yeah. Garden party appearance means in the case of AML or CML because uh, in the case of AML or CML, mostly all of the lineages will be uh, overgrown. So, there will be uh, all of the lineages just overgrown. So, it will show this garden party appearance. Whereas, this AML will show this school girl or the convent girl appearance. Fine. And mainly garden party will be seen in the case of CML. Just remember. Fine. And in the case of AML M4, AML M4 or any type of myelo monoblastic. Milo mono Blastic and Milo AML M4 and M5. Milo, Milo Monoblastic and Monocytic. Both of them they will show this gum hypertrophy. Okay. They will show this condition known as gum hypertrophy. And they also may show this one more condition known as leukemia cutis. Leukemia cutis. Just remember it is known as leukemia cutis. Okay. Just remember. Yes, yeah, Lalit. Next, if you able to see this type of this type of clover leaf or some kind of cerebriform appearance, also known as Shizari cells. Shizari cells. This will be seen in a case of which of the following condition? Which will be seen, seen in a case of Shizari syndrome, which is actually what? It is a T cell type of non Hodgkin's lymphoma. Fine? Yeah. And if you able to see this, yeah, correct. Yeah, AML M7, it is the it is the most common type which is be seen, means like our most common, most specific type which is being seen in a case of Down syndrome who is less than 3 years. Remember, Down syndrome with less than 3 years, you will think of AML M7. Okay. Fine. This is what this is the starry sky appearance. Starry sky appearance, which will be seen in a case of Burkitt's lymphoma. Okay, Burkitt's lymphoma. Just remember. Fine. Next, if you're able to see this type of hairy cells. Yeah, Ranjan, yeah, Rokesh, yeah, Arya, yeah, Starry Sky, yeah, along with this translocation of 814, yeah, correct location, yeah. Chloroma seen in a case of M2, okay, don't confuse, Chloroma seen in a case of M2, fine. And this is what, this is the hairy, hairy cells which will be seen in a case of hairy cell leukemia, okay, leukemia, which is actually a B type of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, just remember, okay, and most commonly seen in boys, fine. Yeah, there will be trap positive. Yeah, correct, guys. There will be trap positive and there will be anaxin A1 positive also. There will be a anaxin A1 positivity. Fine. Whereas anaxin 5 positive will be seen in a case of apoptosis. Fine. With this understanding, we will move on to the few more questions in path, few more images in pathology. If you are able to see this, both yeah, grape shaped, grape shaped inclusions will be known as what? Mulberry are the mode cells. Okay, grape, grape shaped one, they are known as mulberry other mode cells. Or if you are able to see this intranuclear inclusions, they are known as what? They are known as this Dutcher bodies. They are known as Dutcher bodies. And, and, yeah, and, 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 and serum electrophoresis, you will be able to see this M spike. Okay, M spike will be seen in a case of multiple myeloma. Okay, multiple myeloma. Whereas in a case of just, just for your reminder, I just bring, uh, brought this image. In the case of nephrotic syndrome, Okay, nephrotic syndrome, all of these proteins will be decreased. When, when usual, all of this following will be decreased except one protein which is this alpha 2 will be increased. Okay, this is the this is the proton, means this is the uh, pattern will be seen in a case of nephrotic syndrome, whereas this one will be seen in a case of multiple myeloma. Fine? Yeah. And it will lead to this amyloid light chain deposition. Fine? Amyloid light chain deposition. Claims that will be different flame cells will be seen and there will be a Dutcher bodies also. Yeah, guys, correct. Yeah, yeah Rabat, you are getting it correct. Yeah, Arun. Yeah, correct. And if you are able to see this type of appearance in which there is a central blood vessels and followed by this tumor cells, 
few muscles and there is a blood vessel in the center okay and there is a gap after it between this tissue uh, okay fine this tissue so this will be seen in a case of which of the following tumor first of all what is this type of body known as could anyone could, could, could anyone guide me through what is the name of this uh, bodies and in which tumor you will be able to see they are known as Schiller dual bodies remember they are, they are not uh, means in means this is what this is the Schiller dual bodies it is not granular cell it is seen in a case of yolk sac cell tumors ok fine it is Schiller dual bodies yeah those you are getting incorrect it is known as Schiller dual bodies which will be seen in a case of yolk sac it's yolk sac tumor whereas in a case of granular cell you will be able to see this collexular bodies and there will be a coffee means there is a grooving nuclear grooving will be seen fine and these are all about this pathology and we'll be having a short break and before that just remember like like if you're doing anything in your life fine mind fine so just don't try to go back and start uh, means you need to have a good beginning fine you just have to start means if it means you, till now you have been prepared for any exams for a long time fine and you are thinking like you cannot do it don't worry if you start now a proper revising now itself you will be able to clear the exam with good marks fine yeah it will be till around 12 fine yeah, it will be uh, till 12 there will be two more um, subjects le left fine two more uh, like two and two and a half more subjects left we'll have a short 10 minutes break and now it's exactly 10 42 and we'll meet up at around 10 55 fine if you have any questions we'll let you know okay and don't lose your hope uh, like we'll have a um, like we'll have few more sessions we'll have yeah sure yeah we'll increase the speed fine no problem like uh, then we'll be having the PSM, FMT and the, like if possible we'll have some part of anesthesia. Fine. Don't worry. Fine. We'll have a break now and then we'll meet up after 10 minutes.
Yeah, okay, guys, uh, then we'll start the session. Fine, yeah, sure, yeah. <clears throat> so fine, like, actually, actually, I forgot the subject. Like, next one, we'll be starting with microbiology and we're moving, out, moving on with PSM and FMT, fine? And then we'll call for the day and from the next session, we'll add up on, fine? This was the plan for the day. Like, next, we'll move on with microbiology, PSM, and uh, yeah, sure, yeah, let's go. And it'll be with somewhat, uh, if you're more active and we'll go with a more faster flow, and if there is a more faster flow, <clears throat> We'll complete the subjects much earlier and we'll, uh, we'll go to our home. Means like we go for the uh, means go to sleep much earlier. Fine. That's it. And with the same positivity, we'll move on to the next part. If you're able to see this image, you'll be able to <coughs> do this procedure known as this sorry. If you're able to see this image, yes, if you're able to see this image, you'll be able to see this type of straining, which is known as Gram straining. And in Gram straining, you need to remember just a uh, few things. One is that the Gram positive bacteria, the positive bacteria, positive will be purple in color, fine, whereas negative will, means we know, uh, means like red will be a negative, right? So just remember negative one will be red in color fine negative one will be red in color next is that means the staining steps if you see the staining steps initially means we'll add a blue dye because since the peptidoglycan layer of this gram positive bacteria it's thick so it can take up this blue light and it won't never it will never leave whereas this gram negative bacteria it will just take and leave so initially we'll add a blue dye then we'll undergo this iron treatment then we'll add a decolorizer, then we'll add a counter stain as safranin. Fine. So remember there is a mnemonic by a PM faculty known as come in and stain. Fine. Come in and stain. So initially the first stain will be the crystal violet. Fine. The first stain will be the crystal violet, and the last one will be the safranin stain. Fine. Just remember these things. Fine. With this understanding, we'll move on to the next part. If you see this staining, which is used to identify the mycobacterium tubercular bacillus, which is what which is known as zeal Nielsen staining, which is also known as acid first staining. Fine, which is also known as acid first staining. And in a case of acid first staining, we'll do these things in a reverse manner. For us, whereas this one here, the carbal fusion stain, which is actually what, which is a red stain or the pink stain, will add in the first in, in in the first go. Whereas last will add the blue stain. Fine. Whereas in last will add the Blue stain. Just remember these things, and here we'll use we'll use this um, sulfuric acid. So in between we'll use this sulfuric acid, like H2SO4. Okay. So we'll means there we'll um, we'll stabilize with iodine. Okay. Here we'll stabilize, and then we'll treat it with sulfuric acid. Then we'll lastly we'll stain with methylene blue. Fine. And this is how a zeal Nielsen st stain looks like. Fine. With this understanding, we'll move on to the next part. If you see this image, the, in this image, you need to remember just few things. One is that if there is in a conjugated pili, if there is a PLA formation, then if there is a PLA formation, then the genome will be transferred through this no, uh, this PLA known as conjugation. Whereas if there is any bacteriophage, if there is a bacteriophage involvement, so it is known as transduction. So remember, if there is any bacteriophage involvement, it will be known as transduction. Whereas if just it will, if it is taking from Outside it is known as just transformation. Yes, Veta, yes, Omesh, it is correct. If there is a bacteriophage, it is known as transduction. Okay. This is the thing which is being repeatedly tested. So just don't forget it. Fine. Next. If you see this image, in this image, you will be able to see they are testing some antibiotic sensitivity. Antibiotic sensitivity. Fine. In this antibiotic sensitivity will use this type of um, thing known as diff diffusion method known as. Kirby Bayer disc diffusion method. Just remember Kirby Bayer disc diffusion method. Fine, we'll use to know this anti um, antibiotic sensitivity. And if a uh, antibiotic sensitivity is sensitive, then the no organism will glow, grow closer to it. Whereas if it is resistant, the organism will grow closer to it. Just remember, if they will give us what is the name of this 
disk diffusion method. It is known as curvy wire disk diffusion method. Fine. With this understanding, we will move on to the next part. If you see a, if you see a history in which it is given, the organism shows golden colonies on nutrient agar. Along with this, the place in which you will able to see this gas bubbles present, which is what which is the catalase test positive along with this coagulase positive. Okay, coagulase positive. What is the organism you will think of? Yes, Omesh. What is the organism you will think of? Yeah, means if there is a uh, organism which is producing golden yellow colonies on this nutrient agar, means then you will think of Staph aureus. Means aureus aura means. It is a gold, so it is the Staph aureus, which is the catalyst and coagulase, both of it is positive. And we know it is the it is a location, yeah, yeah, bisla, and it is the most common cause of skin and soft tissue, skin and soft tissue infection, and it is the most common cause of endocarditis. We studied endocarditis, and it is also most common cause for osteomyelitis. Osteomyelitis, except in case of sickle cell anemia, we know sickle cell anemia. <coughs> It will be caused by the salmonella, and there are two types of um, coagulase positive. It is this is known as tube coagulase, and this is known as slide coagulase. Take a slide coagulase. Just you need to know just these things. Fine. If you know these things, these are the better things. Means these are the most things you need to know. Fine. That's it. With this understanding, we'll move on to the next part. If you see on this blood agar, if you able to see this complete hemolysis, it is known as beta hemolysis. If you able to see the half hemolysis, it is known as half, remember alpha, half alpha. Okay, so it is known as alpha hemolysis. Okay, whereas, whereas if there is a no or very minimal hemolysis, it is known as what? It is known as gamma hemolysis. So, mainly we will we'll discuss about this uh, alpha and beta hemolysis. There is a organisms which are classified as group A beta hemolytics. Okay. In, in group A beta hemolytic organisms. Could anyone tell me what is the example of this organism? Yes, Omesh, yeah, Baisla. <coughs> An example of group A beta hemolytic organism. Yeah, it can lead to PSGM. It can lead to rheumatic heart disease, rheumatic fever. What is the organism? We are talking about Radhika. Yeah, Divya Puja. Yeah, it is a type 3 hypersensitive reaction. Yeah, Divya, yeah. <clears throat> Which organism we are talking about? We are talking about this Streptococcus pyogenes. Okay, Streptococcus pyogenes. Just remember, we are talking about this organism known as Streptococcus pyogenes. Yeah, correct, so much. Fine. And in the same, <clears throat> if you are able to see in the same, if you see this group B, then it will be, there will be organism known as Streptococcus agalactica. Take a agalactica. And this Streptococcus agalactica will show this special type of test positivity. Yeah, they, they can show this at least so, and they will show this type of positivity known as camp test positive. There will be camp test positive. Yeah, correct Pratik. Yeah, they will show this cramp test positive. Okay, fine. These are about the beta hemolytics which we need to know which has been repeatedly tested in the exam. Next, if you see, next one, if you see this alpha hemolytics, alpha hemolytics like there might be an yeah, organism which is, which is there which is occurs in a diplococci and it is capsulated diplococci and it is capsulated and it is the most common cause of community acquired pneumonia what is the organism which we are talking about diplococci and means yeah 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 correct for patrick it is what it is what it is the streptococcus pneumonia okay pneumonia and okay and it also produces this Carom coin colonies. Carom coin colonies. Take a just remember. It also produces this. Yeah, correct location. It also produces this carom coin colonies. Yeah, correct divya. Then we also have there is also one streptococci, which is known as streptococcus viridens. And remember this streptococcus viridens are they are the most common cause of subacute bacterial endocarditis. Just remember this one point about this organism known as streptococcus viridens, which causes this subacute bacterial endocarditis. Fine. With this understanding, we'll move on to the next part. If you see, there is an organism which causes this time, type of HR and which shows Medusa head colonies and culture and also shows this string of pearls appearance and 
it also shows this inverted filtry appearance inverted filtry appearance on stab culture what is the organism you will think of <coughs> yeah comes it is what it is the bacillus anthrax what is the bacillus anthrax remember remember about this bacillus anthrax remember it is also this capsulated organism but it is we know it is a it is made up of glyco means uh, it is made up of glycopeptide capsule and means it will be differentiated from other capsules and we know this anthrax it is it is a aerobic organism so it will grow more on the upper surface but it will grow more on the upper surface so remember this organism you remember a small girl who is being um, who is being decorated or being dressed for this halloween she is having this uh, having this appearance of a witch okay which and in which head she is having this medusa head appearance and then she is having she is wearing a skirt which is of this inverted filter appearance and if she is a and if she is if she is a witch who is dressed dressed as then she will be having a means she will be old witch right so she will be having some sticks so remember it will show this appearance known as bamboo stick appearance because of this presence of this central spores okay because and it is a spore related organisms and since she is a witch she need to tell some mantra so she will be having this sting of pearls means in her hand okay she will be having the sting of pearls in her hand yeah correct divya and then she need means she is just for halloween right so she need to collect some chalk candies so this candies she is collecting in a plate in a plate so remember so it is she it will be calculated in a plate media okay plate media and it is aerobic in nature just remember these things will be solved about this bacillus anthrax fine next next if you see this image in which you will able to see this if this terminal spores terminal spores and which is being cultured in this robertson cooked meat media media and which is yeah a drumstick yeah terminal spores which is showing this drumstick appearance and it is more of anaerobic and aerobic and it is showing filtry appearance since it is anaerobic it will grow more on this lower surface okay so it is a filtry appearance and stab culture what is it what do you think of yeah guys yeah ria it's not carnivorum canis okay it is what it is the clostridium tetanum it is the clostridium tetanum just remember it is the clostridium tetanum fine with this understanding we'll move on to the next part if you see this image in which you'll able to see this chinese letter pattern chinese letter pattern along with this formation of this granules what is the name of this granules known as berbeck granules yeah correct radhika and and it is being cultured in this low flow serum serum slope yeah it is what it is known as what corynebacterium diphtheria it is what it is the corynebacterium diphtheria okay and it also have as one more specific culture media what is the name of this yeah it is also known as walton granules it is known as what it is stained with albert stain okay it is stained with albert stain and it is having this media known as potassium or uh, telluride agar telluride agar okay just made it is made up of this telluride agar next it is being stained stained with this albert stain for this metachromatic granules okay are this volatile granules fine yeah it leads to the formation of this pseudo membrane formation fine next you will able to see this type of test which is being mm, uh, being performed yeah correct uh, unicell gaming and <coughs> it is being uh, used to detect the toxin so it is known as what it is known as which test it is known as alex gel precipitation test fine yeah correct so much it is known as alex test correct fine this understanding will move on to the next part a child or any a child who is presenting with fever features of meningitis along with this rash what is the organism you will think of the causative what is the causative organism you will think of meningitis along with the rash you have full moonlight yeah it is what it is the neisseria meningitis the word is the neisseria meningitis and we know if you able to appreciate gram negative means negative means red color so it will be a pink color so if you able to appreciate the pink color gram negative organism okay which is what which is the neisseria gonorrhea okay neisseria gonorrhea fine it is the neisseria gonorrhea fine 
And next, if you see this Neisseria gonorrhea, it is having this perihepatic adhesions, okay, perihepatic adhesions leading to this string of violin sign, string of violin, okay, which is, which is, what is the name of this syndrome known as? Yeah, it is a divide, it can lead to the, yeah, it is, yeah, um, complication of this PID of Neisseria gonorrhea. What is this name of this syndrome known as? Yeah, guys. Yeah, Hassan. What is it? Yeah, yeah, correct. Unisol. It is known as Fitz Q syndrome. It is known as Fitz Q syndrome. Just remember. Fine. With this understanding, we will move on to the next part. If you are able to see organism which is comma in shape and having flagella and showing shooting star motility, shooting star are darting motility along with positive string test. What is this organism? What you will think of? Yeah, guys. Yeah, I am getting correct answers. It is what? It is the yeah, Patrick Rhea, Hal Lokesh. It is what? It is the Vibrio cholera. And Vibrio cholera, we know it is a salt loving organism. So, since it is a salt loving, so it can be stain, means it can be cultured in this TCBS agar. And in TCBS agar, it will show this yellow colonies. Okay, yellow colonies. Just remember. Is, okay, fine. And this, by this yellow colonies, we can differentiate this Vibrio cholera from this Vibrio. Parahemolytic, just remember, fine. Yeah, yeah, you are getting it's a local, yeah, full moon light, correct. Yeah, can't see. you are now getting it correct, fine. Next, you can see you saw a case which being come with the features of this kind of appearance of the skin, and pressing you will be able to see here this hair means air bubbles which are bursting, or some kind of air presence or crepitus presence. What do you will think of? You will think of a condition known as gas gangrene, and this gas gangrene will be caused by clostridium. Preferences, yeah, correct. Lokesh, yeah, correct. Ria, Divya, correct. Yeah, it is known as preferences. Right? It is known as close stadium preferences, and it will show three features. They are known as remember the superstar NTR. So they will show this Nagel's reaction, which is means like it will show the stromy fermentation on the litmus milk. It will show and yeah, and T for they will show this target hemolysis, and they will show this test known as reverse. Camp test positive. Reversed uh, camp test I mean, positive. Yeah, correct location. Yeah, correct divya. Correct, you are getting it correct. It is known as reverse camp test positive. And there is also one more feature of this quarantine bacterium. Okay. <clears throat> uh, no, no, sorry, it's not quite bacterium. Oh, there is one more feature of this clostridium, okay, which causes this diarrhea after antibiotic usage. And on examination, you are able to see this formation of the pseudomembranes over it. So, what do you will think of? It is known as pseudomembranous colitis. Pseudomembranous colitis, which will be caused by this, which will be caused by which organism? Clostridium difficile. Okay, Clostridium difficile. Under microscopy, you will be able to see this volcano, volcano type of eruption. So, you will be able to see this volcano eruption. Okay, they are correct, Patrick and Rhea. Correct, you are getting it correct. Next, we will move on to the next part. If you are able to see, this type of agar, which is known as buffered charcoal yeast agar, fine. Yeah, it means full moon light, which is the antibiotic associated diarrhea, especially from the second generation cephalosporins, fine. If you are able to see this by BCYE agar, means which will be cultural bulb for this legionella, okay. In case of legionella, it will be features with atypical pneumonia along with features of diarrhea, atypical pneumonia and diarrhea, fine, just remember this thing. Next, this is the Maconchi agar which is used to differentiate this lactose fermenters, lactose fermenters, fine. And then you will be able to see here, there is a typical example of a lactose fermentation in which you will be able to see this pink colonies, colonies, okay, which will be seen in a case, means which is also a lactose fermenting bacilli which shows this typical um, yeah, means legionella caused by this AC events. Yeah, thank you for remembering. It is the AC events. Okay, like this type of pink colonies will be produced by this Klebsiella, Klebsiella pneumonia. Okay, Klebsiella pneumonia. Just remember, fine. Yeah, Divya, yeah, Brescia, you are getting it correct. Fine. This is understanding. We move on to the next part. If you are able to see what is this type of what is this microscopy, first of all, could anyone guide me through it? What is the name of this microscopic? Ma Test. 
microscopy microscopy leave about proteus yeah, this is a proteus fine this is proteus okay what is this microscopy it is what it is the dark field microscopy it is known as what dark field microscopy it is what it is the dark field microscopy which will in which we are able to see see this type of curved or this this type of organisms which is what which is the means which is showing this corkscrew type of motility which is what yeah correct full moon light correct uh, ravat and correct somesh fine correct ria fine so it is what it is the spirochids family spirochids and one of them is the trypanema pallidum which causes the syphilis which causes the syphilis fine just remember these things fine next if you able to see this is what this is the proteus and what is the name of what what type of motility does does this proteus shows Yeah, guys, what type of motility does it shows? It shows this swarming motility. It shows this swarming motility. And if two to three species of this proteus they come together, okay, fine. Yeah, guys. Yeah, wow. Radhika, yeah, like, last of answers, Veta, Hasar, Hasanar, and Somesh and Divya. You yeah, are getting it correct. And if you are able to see two to three species, they are um, come and colliding each other. It is known as what? Dyne's phenomena. Dyne's phenomena. So, this is also seen in a case of proteus. Fine. Next. Next, pseudomon for pseudomonas, pseudomonas, we used to, we have this culture, means while culturing in a nutrient agar, it will produce two types of pigments. One of them is this pyorubin, next one is the pyocyanin. You know, cyanin, it produces this blue color pigments, whereas rubin, it produces the red color pigments. And we know, it is the most common cause, it is the most common cause of bacterial corneal ulcer. Okay, it is the most common cause of bacterial corneal ulcer. And we know, in, if it is a bacterial corneal ulcer, this will be a single and single ulcer with uniform border. Uniform border. Okay, just remember, yeah, you will be able to see this thing, which is what, which is this hypopia. Yeah, that's awesome. Like we're having this eagle eyes area. Fine. Yeah. With this understanding, we'll move on to the next part. We are able to see this mycology means yeah, means like mycology. It will be an easy kick for you because they will ask either the staining techniques or they will give the typical history. They won't go in depth, uh, they, they will never go in depth and they will ask something else. Fine. So, in the case of mycology, there are few staining techniques you need to know. One of them is this. This is the fluorescent stain which is used in the case of mycology. This is what? This is what this is known as calcofluor white. This is known as calcofluor white stain. Then, if you know any of this culture morphology, this culture morphology can be known by this stain known as lactophenol cotton blue okay lactophenol cotton blue and this will be showing this which is known as um, means this is this is what this is the lactophenol cotton blue that's why it's blue blue in color fine next yeah correct yeah um, means sda it is the culture media location correct and uh, somesh yeah it is the lactophenol cotton blue staining yeah correct aditya yeah patrick and ria puja yeah we are getting it correct fine and you will able to see this microconidias which is being moving upwards okay so this is what if if you know means if there is a smoke it will fumes up so if something is fuming out remember it is what it is the aspergillus fumigatus okay aspergillus fumigatus yeah correct anonymous zozo fine next if you able to see this type of blackish colonies if you able to see this type of blackish colonies and a stebulos dextrose agar this is the sd agar this is the most common uh, agar which is being used to cultivate the fungal organisms fine and this is what this is the Aspergillus niger. Fine. Next, if you are able to see a silver stain which is being used to used to stain this fungi, what you will think of? Yeah, 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 anonymous zuzu. Yeah, it is what? It is the gomari methamenamine silver stain. Okay. And in a case of gomari methamenamine silver stain, if you are able to see there is a acute angular branching, acute branching along with septae, it is what? It is the aspergillus. It is what is the aspergillus. Fine. Or else, if, yeah, yeah, you are flooding with answers, yeah, Divya, Riya, yeah, full, yeah, full moon light, Radhika, Divya. Yeah, guys, yeah, you are getting it correct. Yeah, acute angular branching around the 45 degrees. And we know if it is acute angle, everything will be by this, remember by this mnemonic of A. And if you flip through this A, it will known as V. So the drug of choice will be what the drug which is be used to treat, it will be the what? It will be the variconazole. Okay, it is the variconazole. Fine. Next one, if you are able to see 
this type of broad base, you know, fungi with a broad base along with this 90 degree branching, broad base with 90 degree branching. What do you will think of? Yalocasia, Yadivia, it is what? Yarrows, Alphia, it is what? It is the mucor mycosis. It is the mucor mycosis. Fine. And this fungus we can also stain with past stain. Fine. With this, we will move on to the next part. If if in a if in a severus dextrose agar, if you are able to see this type of white creamy colonies, white creamy colonies, what do you will think of? What is the organism you will think of? Yeah, Patrick. Yeah, Rosalfia, it is what it is the candida. It is the candida you will think of. Fine. And if you are able to see this tender, tender, boggy swelling overhead. You will think of which of the following type of clinic capitis? Yeah, correct. Yeah, burb sinus granules are they are seen in a case of Corynebacterium diphtherium. Tender boggy swelling will be seen in a case of Tinea capitis, Tinea capitis, which is actually the feature of the Kirion. Fine, Kirion. Yeah, correct. Let me check whether. Yeah, sorry, it's not. Sorry, sir. Thank you for correcting. It is not Burbex granules. Yeah, it is known as. Yeah, thank you for correcting. It is known as. <coughs> Volatile granules, also known as Burbs and granules. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, fine. Yeah. And if you able to see this same, this, this phenomena in which if you able to see this formation of the germ tube, if there is a yeah, tennis racket size uh, type of granules will be seen in a case of Langerhans histocytosis will be the burbs like uh, big burbeck granules. Fine. Just remember. Fine. This is what this is the germ tube formation. Formation which is also known as Reynolds phenomena. Right? It is also known as Reynolds phenomena. Next, if you are able to see this spaghetti and meatball appearance, which of the following conditions you are able to see this spaghetti and meatball appearance and this seborose de dextrose are showing this fried egg appearance, fried egg appearance on seborose dextrose agar. Yeah, it will be seen in a case of it's just porotrichosis, it will be seen in a case of Malassezia furfur, also known as Tinea vesicular. Okay, fine, it's also known as Tinea vesicular. Fine, just remember. Next one, we'll move on to the, move on to the part of, yeah, mono, yeah, it is Tinea vesicular, yeah, Leah, yeah, it's correct. Fine, next, we'll move on to the next part, which is this, dimorphic fungus. Dimorphic fungus, you know this mnemonic, like, body heat, Perfectly changes shape. Okay. B for blastomycosis, H for histoplasma, and P for paracoxidoidomycosis. And what is the one more P? Yeah, two from the eastern molds. Yeah, correct. Cold is mold. Yeah, 25 degree uh, if it is a cold, so it will be the mold. Yeah. Yeah, plab, yeah, guys, correct. The one more P is what? It is the, it is what? It is the penicillium marnefi. Fine. Next one is what? C for coccidioidomycosis. Coccidioidomycosis. Next one is the sporo, sporotrichosis. Take a sporotrich shankai. Fine. Yeah, guys, correct. Yeah, Patrick, Ria, Divya, you are getting it correct. Fine. And if you see, fine. And if you see, if you see this type of barrel shaped arthrospores along with this spores, small spores inside this one, like if you make the C a large sperum and a small, small spores inside it, it will be what? It will be the coccidio 
hydromycosis. Okay, it is the coccidia mycosis. It is also known as valley fever and desert rheumatism. Desert rheumatism. Just remember, fine. Just remember these two points. Next, if you are able to see this pilot wheel or Mickey Mouse appearance, where you will be able to see? Yeah, is with endospores correct? Yeah, pilot wheel or the Mickey Mouse appearance, where you will be able to see? Where you able to appreciate this appearance? Yeah, you will be seen in the case of Paracoxidio idomycosis. Okay, fine. Next, if you are able to see this image, then which you will be able to see this kind of broomstick kind of appearance of this organism along with this red pigmentation on culturing with pigmentation on SDA. In which of the following conditions you will be able to see this? Yeah, correct. Correct, Nijay. It is what it will be seen in a case of penicillium marnafi. Just remember, means just, just remember in a home, like it's like our mother used to take broomsticks for three reasons. One is to clean, the other is to beat us, and next is to beat the rats in the um, no blank period. Sorry, I forgot. Fine. Okay. So I will. Uh, sorry, I, means I forgot this. Um, um, I will. I will text them. Text the team to share you as soon as possible, and I will share you the unknown PDF as early as I could. Okay. Sorry, example. Fine. Okay, so so the so it the reservoir for this penicillium arnifi it is what it is there. It is the bamboo rats. It is the bamboo rats. Fine. Next, if you are able to see this type of tuberculate spores, tuberculate spores, it will be seen in a case of which disease? It will be seen in a case of which disease? A, a tuberculate macroconidia. Where you will be able to see? Uh, means like nice, nice mnemonic shubham like you need to beat the rat till, till it become red. Yeah, fine. You will be seen in a case of histoplasmosis. And this histoplasmosis will be able to, it is also known as Darling's disease, also known as Ohio's disease, also known as Caves disease. And it is being spread by the bats. Just remember, yeah, yeah, correct, Matrix, yeah, correct, yeah, correct, Nia Rijai. Fine. Okay. Then, if you are able to see this type of rosette formations, rosette formation, rosette formation following a traumatic means following a trauma, and there is a sub means like uh, <coughs> subcutaneous nodules which is in the lymphatic um, means in the line of lymphatics. What do you will think of? <coughs> yeah, you will think of sporotrichosis. What is the name of the phenomena you will be able to see in a case of sporotrichosis, guys? Rose Nijai. Yeah, guys, yeah, correct. Lymphatic spread. The phenomena known as splendor, splendid, splendor Hopley phenomena. Hopley phenomena. Okay, fine. Yeah, you will be able to see this one more bodies, but it is not shown here. It is known as asteroid bodies. Okay, asteroid bodies. Fine. And if you are able to see this kind of budding yeast kind of, yeah, it is also known as rose garden species. Yeah, correct rose. Yeah, yeah Manu, Divya, you are getting it correct. And if you are able to see this budding yeast kind of appearance, budding yeast or this figure of 8, okay, this will be seen in the case of blastomycosis. Okay, blastomycosis. Next, a simple question, like, is histoplasmosis is a dimorphic fungi? Yeah, correct Manu, correct Patrick, yeah, B looks like 8, yeah, correct, yeah, B looks like 8 also, you can remember. No, it is not a, the, this is the trap, like Patrick, you need to uh, listen, like because H for histoplasma we studied, we didn't studied any other things, right? First of all, tell me what is this name of this mm, bodies you will able to see? Yeah, it is what it is there. Yeah, 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 correct. 
this is what yeah this is known as what medullary bodies and what is the name of the disease it is the chromoblastomycosis is chromoblastomycosis is a dimorphic fungus No, it is not a dimorphic fungus. Remember, chromoblastomycosis it is not a dimorphic fungus, whereas histoplasma is a dimorphic fungus. Just remember, fine. Okay, do not get confused. Chromoblastomycosis, copper medullary bodies or copper bending bodies, also known as sclerotic bodies. Huh? Okay, then if you are able to see some kind of multiple discharging sinuses, discharging sinuses. And foot, and foot. What you will think of? Which disease you will think of? Yeah, mother of foot. Yeah, wart deletions. Yeah, are they correct? What you will think of? Yeah, you will think of Madura mycetoma or mycetoma foot, in which there are two types of mycetoma. There might be a U, which is because of fungus, and there is a actinomycetoma. This is because of this bacteria, which is actinomycetes. A yeah, correct FMG aspirant, correct Radhika, correct Aditya, correct Omkar, correct Lalit and full moonlight. Fine. Next, if you able to see, if the if you able to see yes, if you able to see this type of appearance on the nose, and there is a history of pan bathing um, in two days back, and along with this, you will able to see this type of small small spores. Inside, what you will think of? Is it is it what it is the rhinosporidiasis? Sporidiasis, okay, and it is most commonly seen in the coastal regions of Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry. And next, if you are able to see this, what is this type of what is this microscope? It is rhinosporidium seabury, fine, right? just remember, yeah, that's correct. This is what this is a India ink stain, which is a negative stain. Okay, in which we will able to see which appreciate which of the following organism, which is what it is the cryptococcus, okay, which is the cryptococcus, okay, and can cause meningitis, okay, it can cause cryptococcus meningitis, yeah, for capsule, we will use this negative strain or also known as India ink strain. And if you able to appreciate some kind of ping pong or crushed ping pong ball appearance, crushed ping pong ball appearance. Okay, if you are able to see this, appreciate this crushed ping pong ball appearance on a comari with a mint silver stain of a, of a bronchoalveolar lavage. What you will think of? You will think of PCP pneumonia or pneumocystis gyrovisi. Okay, pneumocystis gyrovisi. Just remember these two things. Next, if next we will move on to few parasitology images. When you are correct, Riya Divya. You are correct. If you are able to see this type of flask shaped ulcer. Along with this anchovy sauce appearance, sauce pus. Have you seen in a case of? Yeah. Have you seen in a case of which condition? Will be seen in a case of? Yeah, Nijay. You are getting incorrect. It is seen in a case of Entamoeba histolytica. Yeah, correct. FMG aspirin, Divya, Ria, Full Moonlight, and Aditya. Rose, you are getting incorrect. It is histolytica. Fine. Just remember. And for treatment, we will use this metronidazole. Yeah, correct. Harjit. Fine. Next, if you are able to see this image, in which there is a there is a falling leaf motility, falling leaf motility, and there is a like kind of angry man. Okay, yeah, thank you, uh, thank you from the aspirant. It's uh, boost me up. Fine. If you are able to see this type of falling leaf motility, also known as also in Hindi you can tell it as giradia. Okay, so remember GRDA Giradia. So remember GRDA will show this falling leaf motility. Fine. Yeah, angry looking man. Fine. Then if you are able to see this type of twitching motility, twitching motility, and there is a history of strawberry vagina. What do you will think of? Yeah, monkey, yeah, eight flagellas, yeah, correct. Yeah, FMG aspirant, yeah, akin snake. Yeah, it will be seen in a case of trichomonas vaginalis. Trichomonas vaginalis, and for treatment. Will give the same maternal result. Fine, just remember. Next, 
except the which is the only parasite which is being having the flagellus. Yeah, correct. Aditya, Rose, Jivya, FMG aspirant. Yes, Lalit. Yeah, Johnson. Yeah, correct. Right, is what it is the Balantidium coli. It is the only protozoa which having. Having this type of small, small, small type of flagellas. Okay, just remember. Next, if you are able to see this type of appearance, there is a history of washing contact lens in water and developed a ring shaped ulcer. What do you think of? Yeah, Palantidium coli. Yeah, it is what it is there. Acanthamoeba. Acanthamoeba. It is there. Acanthamoeba. Fine, just remember it is the acanthamoeba. Fine, yeah, correct rose. Yeah, Lalit. Yeah, yeah, it's a cilia. Fine, the cilia. Just remember. Next, if you are able to see this operculated eggs, operculated eggs, in which of the following means like most of the trematodes, most of the trematodes will be having this operculated eggs, except which of the following. Except this schistosoma, okay. The schistosomas will be having this spines. So this is the schistosoma will be having the spines. So schistosoma mansoni will be having this lateral spine, whereas hematobium will be having this terminal spine, japonicum will be having this rudimentary spine or the knob they will be having. Fine, just remember knob. Fine, yeah, guys, correct. And if you able to see this type of polar. Polar knobs along with this polar filaments. So remember, means like old is Nana. If Nana she is wearing specs, means these are two knobs and the specs to be connected with some rope. So it will be connected with some floral filaments. Yeah, so this will be seen in a case of H Nana. So this will be seen in a case of H Nana. Yeah, Lokesh, yeah, full moonlight. Yeah, Rose, yeah, Aditya. Yeah, we are getting it correct. Next, if you are able to see this type of lens shaped or lenticular shaped eggs. In which of the following conditions will be able to see this lens or lenticular shaped X? No, it's not treacherous structure. Means we have go, means like the next slide is treacherous structure. It is what it is there. Yeah. Yeah, it is what it, the lens on it is there. Enterobius, enterobius vermicularis. Vermicularis. Just remember enterobius vermicularis. Fine. And next, if you are able to see this type of terminals, terminal mucus. Means like mucus on this both sides, mucus on this bilateral mucal flux, okay, and and barrel shaped eggs, barrel shaped eggs. All of these are the features of trichurus trichura, okay. Now it is trichurus trichura, Patrick, FMG aspirant, Romkar, yeah, you are getting it correct, Rose, uh, Ravat, yeah, correct, yeah, yeah, it is also bile stain, fine. Next, if you are able to see. This type of hook clips and the segmentation which is being formed, okay. And this type of eggs will be seen in a case of which worms it will be seen in a case of hook worms, okay. Just remember it is a hook worm egg, okay. And next, there are two eggs one is a unfertilized egg and a fertilized egg, okay. If it is an unfertilized egg, yeah, unfertilized egg which is having this roughy means roughy bumpy. Uh, things whereas this fertilized one which is can become more smooth it is what it is yeah correct guys you are getting it correct yeah patrick mm, yeah you are getting it correct it is the egg of what ascariasis ascariasis okay so it is the ascariasis unfertilized and the fertilized egg fine yeah dimple patin yeah aditya you are getting it correct next we'll move on to few more parasites and we'll conclude with microbiology fine if you're able to see if there is a history of if there is a hiv patient Presenting with diarrhea. Fine. And then acid first training, you will be able to see this acid first positive organisms. Fine. Fine. Yeah. Zill Nielsen staining. There means you have been done. And in which you will be able to see a 4 to 8 micrometer of organism. It will be suggesting of which of the following organism. It will be showing the, you will be think of cryptosporin. Remember, crypto is so small. So, cryptocurrency, they will be either invisible or they will be so small. So, remember cryptosporidium, it is the very smallest one. So, it will be 4 to 8 in nature. Whereas cyclospora, 
it will be 8 to 10 nature and both are C remember C means it is a complete ring ok. So, it will be a complete ring in nature whereas isospora if you make this I you can make into a somewhat oval shape. So, oval shape it will be a isospora whereas others two they will be a they will be a round in nature ok. Just remember this point fine I think so it, it would help you out ok Patrick ok no ok Rose yeah fine with this we will uh, we'll move to the next point. If we, in a case of plasmodium, most of the plasmodium species they will be having this single ring, whereas, yeah, whereas this plasmodium falciparum will be having this multiple rings. Fine. Along with this, this gametocyte of the plasmodium. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, crypto small. Uh, then uh, means then cyclosporum it will be bigger. Then the biggest will be the oval one. Yeah, correct. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, headphones, the whole forms. Fine. Yeah. This is a ring forms fine. Then gametocytes you will be able to see this banana shape, banana shaped gametocytes. It will be seen in a case of plasmodium falciparum. Means like in this image, it is the only one you need to different, differentiate. Fine. Yeah, banana and falciparum and multiple bananas. Remember. Fine. Next, if you are able to see this single rings along with this Maltese cross appearance. Is both of these are the features of which of the following? Yeah, this will be seen in the case of babesiosis. Babesiosis. Yeah, animal, animal, rabat, FM Jasper and Rose. Yeah, we are getting it correct. Fine. This will be seen in the case of babesiosis. Fine. And if you see a child who is having this skin skin lesions along with the history of fever. Fine. So it will be what? It is a case of Kalazar. Okay. And this will be a case of cutaneous leishmaniasis. Okay, this will be a case of cutaneous leishmaniasis. Fine. Take okay, a which is also known as post Kalazar dermal leishmaniasis. Fine. Yeah, it will be spread by the uh, it will be spread by the sand fly and two drugs will be used multiforsin and liposomal amphotericin B. Fine. Whereas in case of this, we will be able to see the, this type of bodies known as LD bodies. LD bodies will be seen. Fine. And for diagnosing Kal Kalazar, okay. And for this, we will be able to see this LD bodies. Fine. Just two drugs will be, be able to use. One is Meltifosin and another one is Liposomal Amphotericin B. Fine. Just, yeah. And for diagnosing, we will use this ARC 39 antigen. Yeah, guys. Yeah. Correct. FMJ, Aspirant and Moonlight. Yeah, correct. Yeah, Aditya. You are getting it correct. Yeah. This is all, this is all about the microbiology. Then, uh, we will do uh, with more, more faster with the um, PSM and FMT. Okay, and we'll finish off around like um, around 12:30. Fine. So this will be the aim for us. And just stay connected. If you are fe feeling sleepy, uh, just lay in your beds and just uh, just go through this because this will be very important for your exams because your one mark can change your life from in to out. Fine. That's it. Yeah. Multiforsin it will use for this cutaneous leishmaniasis. Fine. Next we'll move on to the preventive and social medicine. Like, yeah, Lokesh, yeah, sure. Yeah, if you are able to see, there are two types of cohort studies. Means, means if you are going retrospectively, it is known as retrospective cohort study. Means in both of this, means you are starting, you will be starting with the, the conference process. Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, from Jasper. Yeah, fine. Means both of the, means in, means how will you able to cohort, differentiate from cohort from the case control it will be based on the exposure means in both of this retrospective and prospective the you will be starting from the exposure fine retrospective you go back fine whereas in a case of prospective cohort you will be means means you will go along with that time fine and in a case of case control you will just take a history fine you will just take a history and you will know about it fine in a case of cohort study you will able to get the incidence how do you will able to get the incidence take a rr and the population relative risk and the population attributable risk whereas in a case of case control means in a case control study means we'll just go and find the exposure means means we'll just take a history and we'll go and find the exposure whereas in a case of retrospective cohort like means we don't know yet the disease is origin or not but we know the exposure and these things so we'll go back means we will take this exposure and we will uh, trace back to the disease fine that is the main difference okay 
I think so this will start to search you out. Next if you see this case control you will just get this odds ratio. Okay, but you won't get any prevalence. Fine. You are welcome Rose. Fine. Next this is the same case control study means you will just get the um, odds ratio you won't get any incidence or any prevalence. Whereas this cross sectional study also known as snapshot study in which you will get this prevalence. Fine. In which you will get the prevalence and case control will use for rare diseases fine and the most famous most famous is what it is the Framingham heart study yeah case control it is also known as the cross product ratio correct fine yeah guys and in this in this late time you need to just know means about this yeah snapshot of this in this you need to just know about this late time late time means means after the means like actually it will be the before appearance of the symptoms to the usual time of diagnosis it is what it is the late time fine it is the before appearance um, of the symptoms to this usual time of diagnosis it is known as what late time just they will ask sometimes this uh, definition and they will give this a pointer and c pointer and they will ask you what is this fine you just need to uh, have a orientation about it fine next one we will go and look into the type of epidemics and uh, endemics fine if you are able to see there is all of these cases will be under this single incubation period and there is a rapid rise and rapid fall what is this one what is this this is what this is a single point source epidemic this is a single point source epidemic example is staph aureus food poisoning food poisoning fine and if you able to see multiple peaks multiple peaks the same same source and once the, once the source is being resolved, means being resolved and the disease starts decreasing and with multiple incubation period this will be seen in a case of single source multiple sing or common source multiple exposure okay okay then if you able to see means what is the means endemic means if there is a constant presence of a disease yeah example is this means example for this is typhoid mary typhoid mary or contaminated web or a milkman delivering uh, milk to all of these villages fine a single milkman fine if there is endemic means there is a constant presence of a disease whereas if if there is any epidemic means there is a sd plus 2 like if there is a usual plus more than 2 cases okay the sd plus 2 of this standard deviation so it will be known as epidemic just remember next if you able to see this is what this is the ilr isolated refrigerators will be kept at the level of phc and we know in in the middle will will keep this will keep this td vaccines and it will tell the efficacy of this um, isolated refrigerator or this maintenance of the cold chain next one on downside we'll keep this heat sensitive vaccines like opv mr j fine whereas in upside we'll able to keep this diluents and then hepatitis b and and the pentavalent vaccines fine next next if you able to see this type of vaccines means these are all what these are the vaccine viral monitors means if there is a single use viral vaccines means the vaccines which won't follow this open viral policy for example this mr vaccine like mera rota hua bacha means like mr vaccine and rota vaccine and covid vaccine this all of this they won't follow this vaccine viral policy okay yeah fine they, they won't follow this uh, open oil policy so for them the vaccine oil monitor will be kept on the lead fine whereas if there is any multi-use vials like for example a polio pentavalent for a hepatitis b they will be where the vvm will be kept at this side of this fine uh, fine just remember this if this vvm if the color of this inner is lighter then we can use it if it is same or if it is darker we won't use it fine like means the heat just remember this heat sensitive vac vaccines they will be kept at the down switch for example opv mr je bcg and rota they are they are heat sensitive fine whereas this one they are all free sensitive just remember okay yeah and this is what this is the dial thermometer and this is what this is the vaccine carrier fine and this is the ice box 
and in ice packs you can keep two two vaccine vials okay you can keep two vaccine vials next one means like uh, recently there is a increased trend of yeah yeah correct uh, if i'm just there in recently there is a increased trend of asking questions about this demographic graphs fine so just try to understand it in the case of stage 1 means in the case of stage 1 there will be both birth rate and a death rate means imagine means when a country is which is being formed or which is hugely developed there will be initial stages there will be a huge birth rate and death rate once with evolution with advancement of this medical techniques okay the death rate the death rate will tend to decrease whereas whereas this birth rate will will remain more fine whereas the birth rate will remain more okay whereas the at the end of stage 2 if you able to see the death rate will be declining so you will able to see this maximum maximum gap you will able to see between the death rate and the birth rate fine whereas this stay means this this demographic graph will start contract constricting from this stage 3 fine and because this since there is a development the birth rate means the yeah, means because of this inflation the birth rate also will become decrease so at stage 4 both of them will become low whereas still the birth rate will be more than the death rate whereas in stage 5 it will be inverse stage 5 there will be a less birth rate in which uh, means less birth, birth rate and death rate whereas this birth rate will be more less than compared to the death rate just remember yeah india said the stage 3 okay so maximum gap is at the level of late stage of stage 2 and stage 3 the demographic gap start decreasing and stage 4 there is a reversal fine these are the three things you need to remember about the this graphs fine if you see then let's move on to some instruments if you see this is what this is the infantometer next if you see this scale this is known as what salter scale next if you see this image this is what this is the shaki step so shaki step which is used to uh, measure the mid arm circumference yeah this infantometer will yeah correct yeah we can use just for till two years yeah for fmj aspirant yeah aditya you are getting it correct yeah rose yeah wow. there is a fluid answers yeah less than uh, if there is a less than uh, 11.5 will consider them as severe sam fine next one is the harpenden calipers harpenden calipers which will use to measure the skin fold thickness skin fold thickness fine next we'll move on to this type of things in the case of in schools we'll use this type of bench known as minus type desks so in schools we'll use this type of desk known as minus type of desks fine and we'll use one urinal for 60 children and one toilet for 100 children okay children okay just remember fine yeah we'll use this minus type of desks fine next the few instruments this is what this is the kata thermometer this used to measure this low wear velocity low air velocity this is what this is the globe this is used to measure this mean radiant heat next one it is the what what is this instrument sling psychrometer okay this is not a sling psychrometer yeah yeah location yeah fmg aspirant it is what it is the sling psychrometer which is which is used to measure this humidity yeah rose correct yeah and this is what this is the horax apparatus horax apparatus is used to measure this chlorine demand demand okay chlorine demand yeah correct aditya fine and if you use this for chlorine demand fine then means the component which is being used is the starch iodide means the chemical is the starch iodide starch iodide fine this is the chloroscope okay it's not fluorine it's chlorine demand fine just remember don't confuse pari it is the mm, chlorine okay chlorine okay this is the chloroscope which is used to know how much level of chlorine is there fine this is to measure how much is needed fine next if you see this is known as sociogram which is being used which is being drawn in a case of this is what this is the sociogram which is being drawn in a case of focused group discussions okay next this is what this is known as panel discussions it is done in tvs okay fine so there is yeah correct uh, pratpati correct rose 
correct Lokesh yeah so there is a no set order or set speech okay and next it is what it is the demonstration it's the demonstration of ORS yeah correct moonlight Ria and Prathapik fine next if you able to see this this is known as Lathirism and this is being caused by this um, plan known as Lathirus Sativus yeah Pari it's known as Lathirus Sativus and it is due to the toxin known as Bova okay Bova just remember these two things fine yeah it is lead to this neurolethirism next if you able to see this this is this plant is known as Argimon Mexica and it is adulterated with mustard oil as it is adulterated with this mustard oil this can lead to which of the following conditions it is not yellow oleander will means will you will show you this yellow oleander means it's not yellow oleander just see okay just see it's like this kind of of petals okay i will show you the yellow oleander in a just five more minutes like in means after five minutes fine just remember fine yeah the toxin is the sanguinarin sanguinarin fine and it will lead to which of the following condition it leads to epidemic drops fine and this is what this plant is known as crotal area and this crotal area it is not bova aditya it is what it is the sanguinarin okay if you are watching this video in a much faster just click the like button fine Okay, total area can lead to endemic ascites. Okay, it will lead to this endemic ascites. Fine. Next one, if you able to see this toxin which affecting the nuts, which is what which is the aflatoxin. Aflatoxin and this aflatoxin can lead to heart disease. Fine. Yeah, aflatoxin causing this peanuts and the nuts and can lead to this mm, heart disease. Yeah, correct Lokesh, FMG aspirant, Ria, Radhika, and Rose. Yeah, correct. So this will understand to this few vectors. If you able to see this is what this is the female anaphylis mosquito and if you see this female anaphylis mosquito it is a sophisticated mosquito yeah correct pariria it is what it is the sophisticated mosquito why it is sophisticated mosquito is because it is breeds in a breeds in a clean water and it will lay eggs alone and it will lie parallel to water surface okay these are the things yeah there will be no siphon tube and it will it will so that so that it will lay the x parallel to it fine so fine fine whereas others you can be able to see this siphon tube presence okay siphon tube presence fine next this is the female anaphylax mosquito we know this leads to the causage of malaria fine next one if you able to see this is what this is the this is the tiger mosquito are also known as aedes aegypti and it is also known as which mosquito? Yeah, guys. Yeah, full moon like. Yeah, Radhika. It is known as what? Shameless mosquito. Okay, shameless mosquito. And it will lead to the uh, and it will lead to the formation of like, causing a few diseases. You can be remembered by this mnemonic of dry chicken, chickens, dry chickens like dengue, Rift Valley fever yellow fever chikungunya and zika virus okay just remember fine it's not chicken pox it is chikungunya okay okay rose just just correct it okay fine like maybe it's it came as mistake fine and if you able to see this type of hunchbacks if you able to see this type of hunchback 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 seen Yeah, don't worry like yeah just there are few diseases you need to remember like for example in a case of anaphylis you need to remember about this um malaria whereas most of these it will be this aedes aegypti fine yeah you're welcome rose fine and if you see this hunchback you just remember the singers okay means mainly the um yeah mainly the hip hop singers if you see this hip hop singers they won't uh they won't sit and or stand like a normal one they will just having this hunchback and they will sit like this so they will be having this hunchback so remember and they will ask why 
who what so means in hindi why means it is q so it is known as what culex mosquito it is what is the culex mosquito and you know like just for this mnemonic sake so okay um just for this mnemonic sake so they will be like they will be dirty so they will breed in a dirty water and if you see other singers they will come alone and they will sing whereas this rap singers and they they won't come alone they won't sing okay they will come in a clusters okay so will they will they will lay eggs okay they will lay eggs, eggs in a cluster so they will and they will come in a cluster just remember fine yeah they will breed in a paddy fields also and this culex can uh, results in the japanese encephalitis fine and also this culex can cause us this filariasis fine this culex and the next one which is the mansonia which can which will lay eggs on the roots of this mansonia plant can cause filariasis okay these two things like filariasis will be caused by this culex and also by this mansonia fine remember this mansonia will be remember man man will be having a long legs fine yeah, and the sea water plants these are mansonia plants fine they will be having this long legs fine just remember next if you able to see this head it is known as what heart tick head present then remember it is a heart tick and if it is a heart tick then there will be remember this t will be present everywhere if it is a heart tick this is it will be tick t then tick encephalitis tick hemorrhagic fever and tularemia all of this will be having this t okay fine then if you able to unable to locate this head then it will be what this will be the soft tick and soft tick can be removed means the disease will be uh, remembered by this mnemonic known as qrs yeah i forgot like there is a one more disease thank you for thank you for, for more like like it also will cause a disease known as casinor forex this is in india fine just remember these things fine no it is not also caused by anaphylaxis only culex and the uh, mansonia will cause us this filariasis fine okay mithu kumar this qrs means soft tick will cause us q fever and relapsing fever so by this soft tick okay remember soft tick causes q fever and relapsing fever then if you move on if you able to see this louse if you be able to see this louse remember my instead of pert means keeping this louse as a pert remember pert okay so p for pediculosis e for epidemic type is r for relapsing fever and t for trench fever okay t for trench fever okay remember this guys a correct location then if you able to see this guys guy known as ridweed bug which causes this chagas this is also known as american trypozoonia virus fine next one this is the sand fly which causes this this is known as calazar also known as visceral leishmaniasis a yeah, correct location yeah, correct pari fine then if you able to see this organism known as rat flea which is responsible for this condition known as bubonic plague and endemic typhus remember this lews which causes epidemic typhus whereas this guy this rat flea causes this endemic typhus okay so don't get confused okay they will ask you which of the following um, organism are this vector will lead to this formation of this endemic typhus and epidemic typhus okay so don't get confused guys fine with this understanding we'll move on to the next part if you see this image okay how will you remember these things like yellow means if you know hindi like it's better to understand so if you know this patti plaster will go into pila okay means patti means or any of this patti means any of this bandages or any of this plasters or any of this gauze pieces which are soaked with um, this body fluids it will go into the pila means pila means yellow so it will go into the yellow one whereas red means red rubber or recyclable plastics will go into this red one red recyclable and rubber okay and the white translucer container it will be have means it will be um, used for the disposal of this blade and scalpels okay any sharp objects okay then blue it will be for this broken glass blue for the broken glass just remember glass and the metallic implants will go into the blue okay next if you come this is how a disaster management works initially there will be a disaster followed by this there will be a response and once there is a proper response we'll do a proper rehabilitation followed by will there is a prevention and mitigation and there will be prepared for the next disaster this are the, this is the disaster management cycle and this is the management means this is the logo of this a disaster management in india and the nodal office just remember nodal office is at district level and the chairperson 
is our Narendra Modi ji, which is the PM. Okay, PM is the chairperson. And this is what this is how this triage works. And you will be able to see this is uh, triage which is being happening in in lifetime. Fine. Okay, fine. In which red, yeah, yeah, party it is the PM. Yeah, location it is the nodal office at the level of district level. If you see this red red one, it means they are, they need the urgent care. Okay, yellow means they need some delayed care. Yellow means they can walk their ambulatory patients. Means black means they, they are like less preferred because they are maribund patients. Maribund are these dead patients. Fine. Next. You able to see? This is how a normal standard deviation looks like. Fine. This is how a normal standard deviation looks like. Normal standard deviation curve, which is a in which mean equal to median equal to mode. Fine. Then it is a bell shaped curve. It is a bell shaped one. Next, if you see the SD is means in a, if, if the standard deviation is one, there will be the 68 percentage of cases will be within it. Okay. 68 percent. If the standard deviation is 2, then there will be around 95 percent. If there is a standard deviation of 3, there will be around 98 percent. Fine. Just remember 98 percentage of cases will be present. Fine. And these are the two. Yeah, guys, you are getting it correct. Yeah, Lokesh. If there is a right skew, also known as positive skew. If it is a left skew, it is also known as negative skew. And how will you know? Yeah, positive means more mean, median, more. Yeah. Means if you mean decides, means, yeah. Then the highest value means the tip, means the tail decides the direction, fine. If the tail is towards which direction, towards the right direction, so it is a right skew curve, fine. And to know which is the mean, <coughs> median and more. Just remember, just remember this left. If you make this L, then you just, you, you need to put this like this. Means, means you need to turn this L into like this. If you turn like this, then this will be this. Okay, so the mode will be the highest in a case of left skewed, whereas in a case of medium it is the second and the mean will be the least value. Fine. Just remember. Here also the here also the opposite of this of it. Fine. Mean, median, and mode. Fine. So here the highest value will be the in a case of right, it will be the mean. So just remember this, this, and you can able to solve the question. Fine. Next one. If you're able to see this diagram, first diagram, if you're able to see. Then it is what if you are able to see this graph means uh, this chart which is being continuous, it is what it is the histogram. And and there is a quantitative variables and it is in frequency. Fine. Which is telling about the frequency and time. So it is what it is the histogram. Next, if you are able to see this histogram along with some along with some line, what is this one? Is this frequency polygon or yeah, frequency curve? Yeah, correct FMJ aspirant full moonlight, Ravat and location pari. Yeah, it just well. Like we have few few thirty more minutes left. Like we'll be done and we'll be going home happily that we revise this many subjects. Fine. Yeah, correct. Yeah, correct. Yeah, it is what it is the frequency polygon. It is what it is the frequency polygon. And next, if you able to see the same histogram, uh, means above which there is a curve which is being drawn. Yeah, it is what it is the frequency curve. Just remember, it is the frequency. Next, if you able to see this type of graphs, means this type of charts which are being separated, okay, separated, okay, and it is what it is the, and it is the bar chart, it is the bar chart, fine, and it is in which the qualitative variable is given, fine, qualitative variable is given, and there may be a different charts, there might be a component bar chart also, and there might be a multiple. Okay, just remember there may be a multiple and yeah yes only it is the bar chart and if you able to see a diagram in which there is a there is a progression with time means like you are telling about this trends of events you are telling about this trends of even with passage of time and you will able to see this dip and if you able to see this dip it will be what it will be a yeah, full moonlight and Ria pari it is what it is the line diagram fine it is the line diagram and if you able to see a graph which is cumulative means which is adding on, adding on, adding on, and which is not seeing any dip, which is not seeing any dip. Then it is what it is the cumulative value polygon means like 2 plus 2 equal to 4. So it will start at 4. Then if it is 4 plus 0, it will remain as 4, but it won't dip down. Fine. Just remember these things. Fine. This understanding will move on to the next part. If you see this image which is scattered along the median line. So it is what it is the 
scattered diagram okay and this is what this is the pie chart okay and next if you able to see this numbers written in this manner for easy segregation it is known as what stem and it is known as stem and leaf block okay okay guys then if you able to see this type of funnel type of appearance so it is what it is the funnel graph it is known as what funnel graph next if you able to see this box along with this whiskers box and whiskers what is this diagram known as yeah full moon life yeah correct Ria. yeah it is what it is the it is known as box and whisker plot <coughs> okay and this is what this is the forest plot which is being used for this meta analyze meta analysis a yeah, correct very fine correct Ria. next if you able to see there are few diseases in which like during covid times like most of the cases they were subclinical okay fine so there are few diseases which shows uh, like most of the diseases which shows this subclinical manifestation but only few they won't so show this uh, phenomenon known as iceberg phenomena in which there will be no invisible cases or carriers so it will be what so it will be remembered by this mnemonic known as mtr there will be measles tetanus and rubella not, not rubella it is rabies fine you know tetanus and rabies if they are highly mortal in nature so just remember fine just remember these things so there will be no subclinical cases either they will they will be present and they won't be present fine just remember okay and next if you able to see this type of maculopapular rash this type of maculopapular rash and you will able to see the spots what do you will think of which disease is this which disease is this, guys? It is what this is the measles. What is the name of this spot known as? Yeah, yeah, it is what it is the coplic spot. It is known as what coplic spots. Fine. In which of the following diseases you will be able to see this rashes of this all stages? Hmm? In which of the following diseases you will be able to see this rashes of all stages? Yeah, it can lead to SSPE, measles, yeah. And in which disease you will be able to see these rashes of all stages it will be seen in a case of chicken pox. Remember, it will be seen in a case of chicken pox. And in, we know if there is a meningitis along with rash, yeah, 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 sure, yeah, if yeah, correct, thank you, as, as, as parent for this uh, kind of like means uh, if there is a measles, there will be features of CCC like cough, coriza, conjunctivitis will be given in the questions, fine. And if you able to see. This type of rashes along with meningitis we already studied it will be what it is the nigeria meningitis when it is the nigeria meningitis not now means like meningitis means it is nigeria meningitis means bunera means there will be a purulent discharge given fine don't worry don't get confused and if you able to see this is what this is the step wells the step wells being means means used as a mode of transmission in a disease known as gunyama okay and it is because of this stem cells are banned in india and pig is a amplifying host for which of the following disease for the japanese encephalitis and this is for just image the disease is being spread by monkeys it is what it is there yeah dragon colossus which is also known as guinea worm yeah fine yeah dragon colossus so monkey Okay, just remember. Fine. And with this understanding, we'll move on to the next part. Like, you know, this is what this is the logo of this Suraksha clinic in which um sexually transmitted infection and RTA are being treated with kids. Okay, which has given us syndromic management. Fine. And to remember this kids, you can remember us great girls wear red, blue. Great girls wear bright red yellow bats. Take care. Just remember. If you if you see this, remember, yeah, yeah, from the aspirant, yeah. If you see this mnemonic, gray. First one, great is for the gray. So first for any urethral discharge, we'll start giving the gray. 
fine we'll start with the gray fine once we're done with the gray then we'll move on to this next one is the green okay next one it will be the white because and blue all of this will be giving green will give for vaginitis whereas white blue and red will be giving for this will giving for which of the following things yeah, remember this gray words because you will be getting confusion with this gg word so great girls if you remember this first word it means if you are getting confusion then uh, it will be easy enough for you fine then red one all of these three things will be for this ulcers whereas first one will be the penicillin sensitive one next one will be the penicillin resistance next one will be for the viral or the general herb uh, ulcers fine next one yellow remember low for lower abdominal pain fine and bags for this black for bubos okay bubos just remember next if you see these are the rule of halves which is being used for this yeah next yeah, welcome Mary. fine if you able to see this rule of halves which is being used for this hypertension then this is what this is the tracking phenomena which is also seen in a case of hypertension next this is what this is the national health mission fine in which you are able to see this son and a family with a child fine next if you able to give this pmj which provides um which provides insurance of 5 lakhs and there is no no limit on family members on family members this is the national tuberculosis program logo and this is the dots program okay direct observation uh, links program and next it is the, there is an online portal known as nikshai portal fine nikshai portal yeah nikshai portal program then if you are able to see this this is the logo of icds okay and the heart of icds it is what it is the anganwadi workers fine fine and next it is the online tv one that is also known as nischai which is what which is the pregnancy testing kits testing kits fine and there is this this is this is for this pradhan mantri jan dan yodana means if there is dan dan means like if there is any rupee symbol be, be in between it is what jan dan yodana just remember next this is what this midday meals has been replaced as portion nabiyan just remember next one if there is a family planning just remember if you want to plan it will be in a triangle in fashion fine next one it is what this is the jssk which provides a free diagnosis drugs delivery diet and free blood transfusion and deli delivery services for mother and children fine then there will be a NBCC and this newborn stabilization unit also. Just remember, this is what this is the Janani Sisu Suraksha Karika. Fine. Then there is a program known as Suman, in which every night there will be a there will be a means scam by this um, both private and the government practitioners. Fine. Next one is the Anemia Mukta Bharat. Means initially means for for children means for means for initial infants. There will be the tablets will be of pink in color okay because this infants and this small children the mother will uh, decide the tablet so it the so just remember if the favorite color of this mother will be pink so they will be having this pink bottles and the small small pink tablets fine next the if the boy means if they grown if they become boys they will choose their favorite color which is what which is the blue okay which is this adolescent or big are the children's then there is red for this pregnant means adolescent uh, lactating and non lactating females fine and for them the composition will be 60 milligram of iron plus 500 microgram of folic acid just remember fine yeah there, there is a strategy known as 6 into 6 into 6 strategy by this anemia mook program fine no, six into six. Uh, it is a huge one. Like uh, so, we don't. We won't means because we have lot to cover. Like we'll cover next. Okay, next session. Don't worry. Okay, just remember it's six into six. Means six strategies will be there. Six beneficiaries will be there. Like infants, females, and adolescents, and six um, methodologies are are implemented. Okay, just they will ask this thing. Fine. Next, this is the this is the national vector program from vector bone disease control program. Fine means you will be able to see this mosquito and the most common is the malaria and most common viral is the dengue fine and this is the national aids control program okay next one if you are able to see this lotus it is what it is the 
National Leprosy Program. Fine. Next one. If you are able to see this, this is what this is the mission Indra Dhanush. Okay, this is the mission Indra Dhanush. Okay, this is the mission Indra Dhanush by which seven vaccine preventable diseases are being um, are being prevented. Okay, next there is also known as scheme Indra Dhanush, which is being used for this. In a case of ESA hospitals, there will be a yeah, there will there will be a seven color bed sheets and seven days. But initially there were seven days and there was different phases of this mission Indra Dhanush was being launched, which includes this later on vaccines also. Fine. Next we had this switch program for polio vaccine. Okay, in which trivalent polio has been converted into the divalent or bivalent polio. Fine. And we know this is the logo for this blindness control and the most common cause of blindness. It is what it is the cataract. Right. And if you are able to see this flower uh, on these hands, okay, and this is what this is the national program for prevention of control of non communicable diseases like cancer and diabetes. Fine. This is our favorite app, which is the RK Seta app. Fine. They are correct for it. It is the cataract. And if you are able to see this sun, we are able to see this um, sun here also in I iodine mm, means iodine intensification program. Okay. Fine. Mm. In which two levels of iodine intensification will be done means at factory level it will be at 30 ppm whereas at consumer level it will be at it must be at to fulfill the must requirement of 15 ppm just remember fine and this is the logo of the national health insurance okay just remember one more logo yeah the corona RIK Seto. okay fine. next one if you able to see this is the logo of the ESI ESI and in ESI if you able to see means the employer pays higher of point mm, means they will pay the highest premium of 3.25 percent whereas employee pays 0.75 percent just remember 0.75 percent okay yeah correct this is the ESI next you able to see this is the IDSP program in which three um, forms being used and the syndromic form and the presumptive diagnosis form and lab confirmed means syndromically initially they will be treated then they means by this healthcare workers then they will be treated by uh, the medicals or the doctors by this presumptive diagnosis and then there will be a lab confirmed diagnosis after which the exact um, treatment will be provided fine and ujavla it is against this female tra trafficking and ujavla ujala it is what it is the led lights and ujwala it is the cylinders okay don't get confused with this um, the terms fine next it is the logo of this ayush which is having which is depicting this leaves fine and next it is the energy which is providing this non-skillful works fine fine non-skillful works and there is this program known as lexia which is used for maintaining this labor room quality which is used for this maintaining this labor room quality don't forget okay and next it is the ma initiative for breastfeeding for breastfeeding okay this for labor room quality fine next it is the food and safety standards in india fine and this is also this award known as kalaki power which is for this regeneration of this public health services okay and these are the things you need to know about this psm and we'll have a show means we have um short of time and we have few more uh, slides left so we'll start with the uh, like forensic medicine we'll complete in another 20 minutes and we'll go home and see fine because after this forensic it will be more mm, yeah start tomorrow like tomorrow we have more things just uh, 15 more minutes bear up bear like uh, we'll be done part of it with this uh, forensic and rest tomorrow we have lot to um, complete fine the tomorrow is the next session fine tomorrow is the next session fine if you see this this is a classical case of hanging the hanging might be of two types if there is a complete hanging the foot will be uh, hanging above if there is a foot touching below it is the partial hanging okay and next if you are able to see this in a case of hanging this knot will be compressing the yeah sure the, the link will be shared don't worry fine okay yeah <clears throat> and yeah there is a hangman's fracture which is known as what 
C2, the fracture of C2 um, means fracture and dislocation, okay, which is actually what spondylolisthesis of this C2 over C3, okay. And if you are able to see this knot will be compressing the, um, yeah, that is the typical knot. If, if this knot compressing this sympathetic chain, then, then um, this leads to this symptoms known as ipsilateral dilation of this pupil along with this opening of the eye. So, it is known as what? It is known as la fascia sympathetic okay and in and in hanging the ha means the knot will be means if you see this ligature will be of having three features one it will be the ligature mark will be incomplete and it will be oblique okay and it will be suprathyroid okay and it will be of suprathyroid just three features next one there are few methods of homicides this is known as what throttling and in throat you will be able to see this type of bruises known as six penny bruises okay and we know we, we see this copper penny bodies yeah same side not yeah correct yeah and we see this copper penny bodies in which condition yeah yeah answer guys we we'll see this copper penny bodies in a, in a, in a case of chromoblastomycosis fine and this is what this is known as mugging okay this is known as smoking if someone uses elbow yeah that's nice that's nice rose and radhika fine yeah yeah fmg aspirants yeah they're still still making it happen fine and there are few other few other methods this this if there is a ligature is being used it is known as ligature strangulation and if it is iron color is being applied it is known as <coughs> garrotling also known as Spanish windlass techniques, yeah, correct rose, yeah, yeah, in strangulation you will be able to see this complete ligature mark, okay, and it will be a straight one, okay, and it will be infratyroid, infratyroid, okay, just remember, yeah, stain me, yeah, and then if you able to, yeah, yeah, this will be yes, done in Spain, yeah, and next if you, if it, the neck is constricted between the two bamboo stick, it is known as Banstola, okay, and there are few other methods. So we are just um, obstructing the airway with a um, with a pillows or with the pinching with hands and obstructing the nose and the face. It is known as what? It is known as smothering. It is what it is the smothering, and in a case of any um, bricks fell off an area when someone bit acute sitting killing. Yeah. Next one, if someone is uh, sitting, means or if, if there is some some parts uh, has been fallen and causing some traumatic asphyxia, it is what it is known as mm, traumatic asphyxia. And there will be able to see a face known as fascia commotica. Means you will to see there is a color of this skin, and this is because of this condition, the face and this over here, there will be, yeah, there will be a Contusions will be present, yeah, correct. Uh, and this lacerations over the slits will be present in a case of smothering. Fine. Traumatic accident means, yeah, traumatic aspects can be accidental, uh, can be even homicidal. Fine. And if you able to see this discoloration over here, it is known as fascia ecomotica. Fine. And next, if this combination of this both, it is known as barking. Okay. Barking. Fine. Next, this is how a, how a person chokes. And for this, we will use this. Hamlet's manual. Fine. Next one, this is known as what? Positional asphyxia. Next, if you are able to see, in a case of hand, in a case of drowning, you will be able to see this lungs which is being filled up, filled with fluids, which is known as what? Emphysema aquasum. Next one, if you are able to see this goosebumps appearance, known as Kyotis. And this is known as what? Washer woman's hand. All of these things will be seen in a case of hanging. Fine. Yeah. We will be able to see this small small hemorrhages, also known as Poltoff's hemorrhages. Yeah. Code is answer in us. This is known as washer woman's hand. And next, while while drowning, they may clench something and be, be, it will remain as regular. So it is known as what? Cadaveric spasm. Cadaveric spasm. Just remember, fine. Yeah, yeah, correct. Pari, correct. FMG aspirants, correct. Radhika, correct. Rose. Yeah. Then, if you are able to see, this is 
postmodern science initial there will be deposition in the fashion of triangle it is known as tachinoir sclerotica next one it is this cattle traffic cattle trucking of the retinal vessels it is known as what which sign yakines cross it is what it is known as what it is known as cavorkian sign it is known as cavorkian sign so it is the retinal vessels okay yeah correct fmg aspirants yes shubham yeah it is correct fine next it is what it is the rigor mortis initially there will be a primary relaxation then there will be this rigor phase rigor mortis then there will be secondary relaxation fine just remember and it also follows a uh, few rules like distance rules rule of 12 just remember as as things fine facts next if you able to see this is what this is the post mortem lividity or staining fine and just you need means and it will be get fixed by 8 hours and just remember few things about it you will see this cherry red in which condition yeah it is also known as sagellation cherry red cherry red will be seen in which condition yeah anonymous yeah fmg yes parent back we are yes shubham yeah it is seen in a case of carbon monoxide poisoning whereas the cyanide will show brick red appearance brick red appearance okay brick red appearance of hmm yeah uh, means in a case of crao and tasax you will able to see this um this one <coughs> cherry red spot fine just remember this cherry red spot that is a different one fine whereas um whereas um yeah crao there is a if there is in a branch retinal artery occlusions there will be also the track uh, cattle tracking okay but this is a different one this is a um um this is what this is a post mortem signs just remember fine a nice correlation means if you able to correlate this way you will you won't forget because these are the easily con confusable stuffs okay that's nice you are getting it uh, here so that i also get uh, means others also getting clear fine and this is known as what gray rays also known as adipose formation which will be happen in a case of worm and moist climate okay next this is what this is the mummification which will happen in a hot and humid climates and what is this sign what is this because of this yeah there is no orderless yeah correct what is this of this what is this sign it is h2s means gas the being deposited over this chest wall it is known as what yeah correct it is gas it is the marbling yeah because of this uh, clostridium welch the perforations and this marbling it will take around 36 hours okay correct shubham and pari fine and there are few types of incision you need to know this is what this is the most commonly performed which is the eye incision in which some trachea will take every organs in a single go and this is what this is our y type of incision this is the modified y this is what this is the modified y modified y and if you do some if you use some radiological methods okay just remember like from axilla you are starting it is the y incision and axilla you are coming to this um the zipi process zipi process then you are extending it is y whereas you are uh, starting near to the um mastoid process and you are means you are coming into the neck and you are starting from this um sternal notch it will be a modified way which one what is x x is x will be we will be doing in a case of police custody means in which most of this slap is being used fine which i want to explain uh, from just as aspirant this one this is the eye shaved incision usually we'll do a single incision fine and we'll take the all organs okay for example in few conditions um uh, means we need to press so means for example if in a case of some hanging or any uh, homicidal things um we'll use this y means we'll use this type of incision fine if there is any chest trauma we'll use this type of incision known as modified y we'll start from the axilla we'll we'll go to this zephyr process and they will extend down okay yeah yeah there are different types also but uh yeah in inverted y we, po we perform this but the most common one are these three and next in few cases what we'll do is we'll start from this mastoid process and we'll come into this sternal notch and we'll start extend from here fine at the end here it will be the extension but here it will be the 
different changes fine and okay and next it is what if you use any radiological methods it is known as virchopsy okay it is known as virchopsy and the x incision will be used in a case of custodial death custodial death okay which is been brought okay it is seen in the case of custodial death you are welcome fine next the human identification the even in the means identical twins it will be different uh, this is fingerprint the fingerprints fine the most common one is the loop one so love wife and children fine so the most common one is the loops are the most common one then holes then arch then composite okay this is the whole one this is like this whole one and this is the loop and this is the arch one okay this is how this arch fine this is how you need to identify yeah fine tomorrow i will just check it and i will bring it to okay okay so so fine next this is a, this is a method known as superimposition fine by which you are bringing a photo of a dead person sir ji aapki college se ha acha sahi hai okay hari hari nice nice to see you here and if you able to see um, this uh, uh, rugos it is known as what rugoscopy and next one if you able to see the slip print it is known as what chelioscopy and there is also one more method here if you able to see this pores it is known as poroscopy poroscopy and for fingerprints we need to need 10 to 12 points just remember we need to need 10 to 12 points yeah yeah correct for and rose it is what is chelioscopy and if you able to see this uh, tattoos in a normal person it's okay they will use it up or else they will use will do this lymph node biopsy okay because on near to the nearby lymph nodes this pigments will be deposited fine or we can use use this ultraviolet rays to notice it fine next to differentiate this skulls fine if you able to see this male will be having this this is the male skull will be having this narrow pubic angle okay this is the narrow pubic angle okay and there is a sulcus in female this there is a presence of this sulcus known as yeah there will be a wide in female obviously if it is narrow it will be wide uh, uh, nice rose it will be a wide pubic angle and this is what this is the pre auricular sulcus auricular sulcus which will be present in females okay present in females just remember next this sciatic notch sciatic notch will be deep in males whereas here broad in females just remember yeah a yeah, thank you thank you anamazo it's uh, it's give me a few more motivations like uh, to do more sessions with you guys okay thank you fine and these are the types by which you can able to differentiate female per female means you can get a conclusion whether the body is a male or a female fine and the most means like the maximum sex differentiation creation will be yeah yeah most identified the maximum of this sex differentiation will be uh, yeah thank you shubham yeah most of this uh, sexual differentiation maximum score we can do with this pelvic bones fine next one if you able to see this type of pink crystals remember pink crystals will be seen in a of because of he means of this blood will be seen in a case of nagayamas test or nagayamas reagent if you able to see this brown crystals brown crystals are um, this type of brown rhombic crystals remember means men in a break they used to go to the means uh, tea means they will get this tea breaks to get a puff so okay just remember if they get a puff they will used to get this uh, tea means for tea break they will go so remember brown crystals this used for semen okay so obviously men okay then it will be uses this brown it will be having this brown crystals and it will be it's known as what take man's test remember t is brown in color and it will be consumed by the men okay just remember yeah okay this is a kind of mnemonic you can remember to get it through fine yeah nagai must test it's a pink crystal which is used to identify this female crystals correct yeah lokesh next if you able to see this yellow remember you why this why with this why you will able to see this mark this from this glass which is being used in this bars so if you see in bars we'll get this beer wine and any other means like not wine okay yeah barbarous yellow crystals yeah you can remember in bar you will get this beer which is yellow in color so 
bar beer which is yellow in color so it is a bar beer crystal there are bar beer says there will be yellow crystals fine and it is also the cement crystals fine just remember yellow it is also for the cement fine if you able to see this is what this is the aconite okay and aconite it is also known as meta zer means sweet poison since if you want to remember about the sweet poison you just remember about their x okay fine since why it is x because she broken she is x because uh, she or he is x because they broken your heart okay they broken your heart okay so it is, it is a cardiac poison okay and as it is a, as it is a broken your heart then when you see them again means you will be having this cunning uh, cunning eyes and which will be like uh, which will be um, like dilating uh, means there will be a repeated constriction and dilation so it will be known as hip sign okay hip sign and you know means why this why they are why is the x are known as sweet poisons okay because they are they are sweet uh, until unless it's yours and once once you had broke up they means you they turn as a poisons to you fine just remember fine the same with me so it's like uh, same with this uh, thing also it is also a cardiac cardiac poison fine yeah fine if you see this cardiac poison this is this is the yellow area now. that is that time we studied right like uh, rose that we saw it that is what um that is the hmm, mustard oil adulter that is not the oleander this is <laughs> see him he's speaking facts <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> yeah sure yeah okay the, this is the cardiac poison this is the yellow oleander fine whereas this one that is the argemon mexicana okay just don't confuse with this plants fine this is a cardiac poison and it will increases this um increases the potassium law means like potassium in the blood and it causes cardiac arrhythmia okay cardiac arrhythmias right this is what this is the yellow oleander oleander fine next one you will be able to see this is what this is the common cobra because we know common people they wear this pets okay okay yeah thank you uh, thank you from j aspirant okay yeah common cobra will be having the specs fine next one if you able to see this band they are known as right right and both of them they will be neurotoxic there will be neurotoxic in nature. Agar, agar if something is swimming with this having this fins, it is what it is a, it is a hydropedia, means it is a snake snake, so it will be a musclotoxic. And if you are able to see this sharp, uh, sharp kind of, yeah, mm, yeah correct, pari, lokesh, uh, FMG, aspirin, sugam, rose, yeah, you are getting it correct. If you are able to see this V kind of uh, head or a triangle kind of shape, it will be known as what? It is what? It is the viper. It is a vasculotoxic it's the vas vasculotoxic one fine next one if you able to see this is what this is the datura also known as tona pill okay will cause us this all deep things dry eyes dry mouth and also mm, and also mm, there is a dilation of this people dilation of pupil okay it's also known as yamitash anonymous <laughs> no ganja is the next one fine next one uh, like and and this one the active principle is what it is the hyosin okay hyosin okay just remember hyosin fine and it is a roadside or a railside poison just remember fine next one this is our favorite marijuana or also known as ganja and the active component here it is the tetrahydrocannabinol it is the tetrahydrocannabinol yeah there is a nine find 90 findings you will like don't worry like don't focus on your mm, <laughs> girlfriend or ex or uh, boyfriend now just um how many more days like six more days left just done with uh, once you're done with your studies like done with your exams then focus on anything you want in your life fine just as of now um like uh, um um focus on your studies if you didn't focus now your girlfriend will become x and your x will become your super x fine so just now focus on your studies you will get more uh, more x to go fine <laughs> yeah so like in marriage mana you will be getting this running a mark hmm? okay run amok. okay yeah sure yeah fine next this is what this is the snorting of cocaine okay and you will see this phenomenon known as magnets yeah more more 
Yeah, this is what this is the Magnus phenomenon. Okay, it can lead to this box um, itching known as Magnus phenomenon. Fine. Yeah, that's all. That's the truth, right? <laughs> that's all. Yeah, you can use this mixture known as. Um, yeah, okay, but like. Uh, जब बोलेगी तब खत्म हो जाएगा लेकिन बस पांच चार मिनट है खत्म कर देंगे फिर चले जाएंगे ठीक है या देर आर मीन्स लाइक इफ यू आस्क मी हीच क्वेश्चन लाइक आई कैन टेल टेल फॉर ए ह्यूज मिनट्स लाइक देर आर पार्ट मोस्ट ऑफ द पार्ट्स बीइंग यूज बट द मोस्ट कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड पार्ट इन द मरीज वन प्लांट इट इज द ऑयल ओके हैश ऑयल मीन्स एट दिस दे विल टेल ओके दैट टुमारो द सेम टाइम सेवन थर्टी फाइन एंड इफ यू आस्क द लीव दी मोस्ट कॉमन मीन्स लाइक इन एस ए गांजा दे विल यूज दिस पिंक फ्लावर्स Without seeds and seeds, seeds and this stems they have this less content. Okay, just remember these things. The main component you need to remember is this tetrahydrocannabinol. Fine. Next one, if you able to see, this is this Brutonian lines. Brutonian lines. Fine. Next one, in this Brutonian lines, along with this stripling of RBCs will be seen in a case of which poisoning? Yeah, correct, guys. Flowering plants, no, the flowers of this plant, this marijuana plants will be having these flowers and they will be use this ganja. Usual ganja is the flower one. Okay. This will be used in a case of correct, it is used in a case of lead poisoning. Okay. And there will be a mm, means they will use this um, <coughs> fine. It will go and incubate the ALA dehydrogenase and fellow chilates. There are two enzymes, fine. And if the, if you found a poisoning along with the hair loss, it is what it is the thallium poisoning. And green color urine will be seen in terms of phenol or carbolic acid poisoning. Okay, carbolic acid poisoning. Okay, that's the number. Next, if you able to see this raindrop pigmentation, raindrop pigmentation along with black foot, along with mis lines, all of these things they are seen in a case of which poisoning? Yeah, guys, yeah. Can do dusting, can do dust stomach. Yeah, yeah. We can do. Yeah, correct, guys. Yeah, we can do. Um, in the case of carbolic poisoning, poisoning, we can do mm, gastric lavage. Fine. This is the case of arsenic, and it mimics cholera. Fine. Next one, if you able to see, this is what this is the abrus precatorius, which is used as a sui poison. Okay, sui needle poison. Okay, which can mimic the viper bite. Fine, viper bite. Okay, this is what this is the semicarpus anacardium. Anacardium, also known as marking neck, which is being used in forensic for um, producing artificial bruise. Artificial bruise. Okay, artificial bruise. Fine. Next one. This is what this is the resinus. Communist which incubate this 60s ribosomes. Just remember this. Yeah. Semicarpus anacardium, it is also known as, yeah. It will produce this common known as uh, bilavinol. Yeah. We incubate 60s ribosome. Okay. Ribosome. Fine. Next, this is what this is the Strichinus maximica, which is a spinal poison. Okay, which will produces the symptoms which similar to tetanus. Fine. Next one, this is the calotropis, which is used for artificial bruise, artificial bruise along with abortion stick. Abortion stick, and this is what this is the poppy plant, which produces which one? Opium. Yeah, opistoponus. Ah, uh, posturing will be done by seen in a case of uh, tetanus and also in a strychnine maximica opium. And when I know opium, there will be a pin point pupil. Yeah, Jejanta Calotropis. Yeah, this is the name of this Calotropis, right? Correct. And there are few methods. Just we saw it is the snorting. And if you apply any to any cloth or anything, and if you just smell it off, it is known as huffing. And if you just put some chemicals in the block and um, and take in it is known as bagging okay next one this is known as what skin popping okay, and this is known as what chasing the dragon chasing the dragon means once you lit up and then feeling nostalgic <laughs> don't worry once you lit up and you will 
chase the smoke it is known as chasing the dragon fine next one there are a few torture methods like okay and this is what this is on slapping the ears it is known as telephono okay and food it is known as phalanga and there and 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 <clears throat> and there will be a wet submarine and there will be applying the plastic covers it is known as dry submarine okay just remember these things next one this is known as parrot preach each this is known as uh, to make them to strong for a, a long time stand for a long time it is known as l plankton next one if the if the neck hand and the leg they are tied together it is known as what in car to something like that is just go and check this uh, uh, like spellings fine the only this spelling fine next one this is known as what sahar fine this one is sahas next one this is what this is the vitreolage okay and we know what is the section we will we use for this vitreolage what is the ipc section yeah it is the acid bond a b i am making you easy a for b for attempt c for attack hmm. What is the section you will use? Just remember 3, 2, sir, 6. So, 326A and 326B. You will use for vitriolage. Fine. Just remember, don't forget. Next one, this is what this is the peeping tom and which is what? Which is cotalogia. Yeah. Yeah, guys, correct. Deepika would go now. Yeah. If you see this peeping tom, tom means like it is also known as scotalogia, means, uh, yeah. It can be punished by 354C. Means if you are seeing, it can be punished by the C. Fine. Next one, it is known as what? Exhibitionism. Exhibitionism. Okay. And if you, if you, it means if they are having, if they are in for this inanimate objects, it is known as fetishism. Fetishism. Fine. Next one is this few operation. Last one is the trauma part. And once we done, we will we'll be done for the day. Fine. If you see, this is the, aberration and this is a grace aberration next it is the pattern aberration and this is what this is a this is what this is a pattern along with pressure okay pressure aberration okay pattern along with this pressure yeah this is a, a mosquito bite okay a bit larger mosquito bite okay nothing else Fine. Then this is what if you if the, in a case of hanging you will be able to see this pressure and uh, pattern by uh, both you will be able to see like mostly just remember uh, pressure aberration who are do, doing suicide they will be under pressure so they will be do so this is what this is the pressure aberration okay okay pressure aberration this is the pattern aberration fine just remember next one if you able to see this is what this is the bruise or this confusion and next if you able to see Mm, um, this is what this is the ectopic bruise. The, there is ACF fracture, it will lead to this ice known as raccoon ice. And next, it is known as what? If there is a middle canal fossa fracture, it leads to this battery cell. Okay, battery cell. Yeah, correct, Mr. Alpha. Yeah, correct, uh, Shubhamagar. Next one, this is the laceration. If you see over the bony prominences, any um, any blunt objects they can cause an injury which leads to this um, like some lacerated tissue and along with this incise looking lacerations just remember it is what it is the laceration next one it is the degloving injury degloving injury fine next one this is what this is the incision this is the incision and if there is a huge number of cuts over this forearms it is what it is known as hmm. Yeah, correct. Dimple, Lokesh, Radhika, Rose, and uh, Anonymous. Yeah, fine. This is what this is known as hesitational cuts. Hesitational cuts, which will be seen in, seen in case of borderline personality disorders. And there are two types of different zones. There will be active different zone, and there is a passive different zone. Means if you are means if you are it means if you are actively um defensing, it will, means you will get over this means flexor aspects. If you are passively, you are going just come on someone in attacking. We will get this passive different ones. So, this is active one and this is the passive one. Okay, just remember. This is being uh, asked in last FMG itself. 
fine and next it is known as harakiri or seppuku which has been like you previously um, done in japan's fine yeah flexor is active mm. extensor is passive fine just remember fine okay and full penetration can be um, full penetration can be known by this mark known as mark of this health guard okay just remember and if there is a double edge sword okay or any knife it will produces this this type of markings over two side and if it just a single edge so it will produce only only one side other edge other side it will be um, other side it will be a uh, like kind of curved one right fine yeah death there will be a because there will be a huge blood loss so there will be a hypovolemia and the patient will be dead fine next one this is what this is the pons fracture okay this is what this is the depressed fracture means because of because the, of this uh, child skull which is being so soft so it will be um, like a kind of ping pong ball also known as pons fracture this is what next one this is the depressed fracture also known as fracture a la signatura means the fracture will be uh, telling which weapon which is being caused means like mostly it will be the hammer so it will show this pattern of the hammer so it is known as fracture a la signatura a small part of the bone is missing it is known as what gutter fracture just remember it is known as what gutter fracture yeah dimple yeah lokesh yeah keep hammering went wrong <laughs> wow like it's like yeah it was a yeah, nice yeah, nice joke uh, by the way fine like um, yeah. yeah next one yeah, yeah your favorite like it is what it is the edh it is a idli shaped hemorrhage remember idli shaped hemorrhage it is our lentic shaped hemolase who will makes the idli better or the best of the soft idli it is the mama okay so just remember ma so remember ma so middle meningeal artery is responsible for bleeding in a case of ec edh and and initially means uh, initial few days also we don't care about mother and later means before marriage we knew we will just roam around the mother to get us married and once we get married we won't take care of mother like this is the usual scenario so this is the same as lucid interval so just remember it is the lucid interval okay since there are few facts just uh, to tell as a, as a story you can remember fine the lucid interval will be seen in a case of edh again he's speaking facts yeah that's true yeah fine and then we know this edh this will be uh, middle middle artery will be coming via this foramen which we saw today it's the foramen of spinosa fine next one it is the crescent shaped hemorrhage which will be was this is the subdural hemorrhage Next one, this is what this is the sub arachnoid hemorrhage, which is shows this thunderclap hemorrhage. Next one, you will be, this is what this is the intracranial hemorrhage showing the putaminer bleeding. Fine, yeah, I'm in Delhi. Oh, makes it leave middle meningeal artery, lucid interval. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, SAM, yeah, berry aneurysm rupture. Fine, that's why I'm shivering for this cold. Fine, and just in bullet entry wounds, just you need to know a few things. Uh, means if you you can see this black, blackish, means, mm, <coughs> blackish over this entry wound, and there will be a singeing of hair. There will be a singeing, and there will be a small small tattooing, blackening, tattoo blackening because of of this fire burn powder. Then there will be a tattooing for the, because of this unburned powder, and there will be a singeing because of this. Yeah, we are in blanket watching your session. Yeah, once done with my session, I will go inside the blanket. Fine, and we'll do this tattoo means, and there will be a tattooing. Fine, and after this, mm, there will be a there will be a bullet entry uh, entry wound, and there will be a aberration color, and there will be a grease color. Okay, these are all the points of this entry wound. Fine, entry wound. Fine, and if there is a close close, yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, sure. Once done with the exam, I have a wish sure we'll have a meet. Fine. Once if there is a contact shot, it will be showing this um stellate. Okay, if you see this thing, uh, means if there is a stellate uh, shaped um moon, means um it will be because of this close or the contact, especially the contact shot. Okay, it's because of the contact shot. Okay, fine. Contact shot. Just remember. And this is the difference between the entry and the exit one. Means entry, it's just like this, and in aversion, there means an exit one, there will be aversion of this margin. So you'll be able to appreciate this 
a version of this margins okay entry will be small whereas exit will be big okay so just remember how we are entering into our medical like we came as a small persons when we became a doctor like uh, like once you are done with the fmg you will become a big it means like a, it, you are good to tell right so that's what the same so entry wound and the exit wound okay next if you see this type of wounds known as taro close and contact means uh, just i will tell you the difference means contact means this is contact means um, this is a contact so the so the gun gunpowder gun, means like gunpowder and the fire and the bullet everything will be deposited inside so there will be a full blow so if there is a full blow it will show this crucial type of, of wounds fine whereas in a case of close means it's not uh, it's contact close means this okay so here if you shoot means you will be able to see this aberration color grease color you will be able to see the singeing and you will be able to tie everything tattooing on the outside okay not inside fine and next one is the near in which you will means in which yeah a step by step is going backward fine <laughs> yeah fine next this is what this is the spare of foot marks which will be seen in a case of windshield injury next one this is what this is the hyper extension hyper flexion injury because of this what is the name of this thing what is this called as guys what is the name of the syndrome yeah this one is what yeah correct location is known as whiplash syndrome this one is whiplash syndrome next one if you if someone is wearing seat belts seat belts after bombing in <laughs> yeah this is this is what this is the seat belt sign okay the most common to be injured is the mesentery okay okay longitudinal uh, tear over the mesentery just remember fine yeah guys yeah alpha causalia and the kansi cross yeah, you are getting it correct fine and there is just few things left just i think so one or two more slides then we'll go back and like go home when if you see this uh, if you see this uh, vehicle hitting over the man means mostly on the lateral corner of the tibia there will be a fracture it is known as bumper fracture which is actually what primary impact injury next once he is hit by a car he will fall over the bayonet and once he fall fall he will get injury over any other places which is a secondary impact injury once he fall over the bayonet then he fall over the ground once he fall over the ground which leads to this tertiary injuries are the secondary injuries means this is secondary impact injuries this will be the secondary injuries okay fine yeah this is the bumper fracture it is the tibia fracture this is the tibia fracture means especially the lateral condyle of the tibia fine lateral condyle of tibia just remember fine next the blast injuries like okay blast injuries uh, in a case of primary blast injury the damage will be because of the primary waves means the most common organ to be damaged is the tympanic membrane secondary it's because of this marshall striat known as marshall striat which is known as acl means there will be a means the small small pl flying projectiles they will come and hit you so there will be um, aberration contusion and laceration so aberration contusion and laceration fine next one is the tertiary means means this will make yeah you will go and bombard in M mc right so so tertiary means is you are displacing somewhere and you are falling lead to this skeletal muscle fracture or something fine this is what this is the tertiary injuries fine next one it is this lightning bones also known as it shows this flower pattern known as arborizing pattern arborizing pattern also known as Lichtenberg pattern okay and these are these are all seen in a case of lightning injuries okay these are seen in a case of lightning injuries and if you just uh, touch a small um, mcg like to can we job to do <laughs> no obviously like obviously means we cannot do much don't worry like things will happen like good things will happen just keep hope for next few more days like keep going okay and if you are able to touch a small voltage areas you will lead to this type of bone known as jewel bones okay jewel bones fine and if there is high voltage it leads to this bone known as crocodile bones crocodile bones fine next means next this bones um this bones means in this in just need to remember differentiate between the superficial partial and the deep partial superficial partial you will be able to see this formation of the blisters and there will be a huge pain 
whereas in the case of deep partial there will be a relatively less strainer and there will be just a, um, yeah like mostly nani like tomorrow uh, like we will hope so like uh, admit card will be released and you will know you, means you will get a good means like you will get the centers which you wanted fine and uh, means and, and deep partial you will just get this print peak sensations so just these are the two differentiating features you need to know fine or else others will be no superficial will be just erythema and there will be pain fine and in full thickness everything will be in, involved including the hypodermis right yeah there will be means in deep partial there will be a wound contracture will be more when compared to this and you know this values rule of 9 and for adults we know but for in children just remember instead of 9 it is multiplied as 2 which is 18 okay here we have 18 but here we have just 14 here fine whereas others most of the things they are same fine that's it we reduced here and we just added here fine this is the values rule of 9 like last like last slide and before the last slide fine and if you able to see this baby which is being hit by their uh, their parents or their mid caretakers this is what this is the bad third baby syndrome okay and there will be this small mm, small fracture over this metaphysical so they are known as what bucket handle fracture and you will able to see there is a multiple fractures at multiple stages of healing multiple fracture at multiple stage of healing okay and you able to okay these are about this features of this battered baby syndrome and you will able to see this butterfly bruise okay butterfly bruise fine because they will use to pinch right once they pinch they will get this type of bruise known as butterfly bruises fine next if you able to see this sign which is known as spalding sign which is seen in a case of intrauterine death and the first sign will be the presence of air in large vessels known as robert's sign okay robert's so, to identify the stillbirth, we will use this test. It means floating test known as Breslow's Breslow's second life test. In which, um, in which, um, the if the baby is swallowed, then the stomach should float. Okay, because the stomach also will be having some air. Say, right? This is the um, Breslow's second life test. Okay. Which simulation? Okay, fine. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it we call for the day and thank you for your this huge patience okay and just believe in yourself once you believe in, you, believe in yourself you will always even a not just success you will have a great success ahead okay just few more days ahead just uh, um, keep going okay we'll see you tomorrow with our last session fine yeah yeah sure yeah yeah sure you will get the link for sure 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 okay fine just i'm going to after the session we'll just um share you the pdf okay i won't go anywhere like if if the team available they will share you now or else as soon as as early as possible you will get it okay fine and thank you for uh, staying with us like dr fmg uh, aspirant anonymous zerzo and uh, um, sushma and kansik and lokesh shubham rose and everyone like alpha radhika if i miss the, some of your names and some of your comments i'm really sorry okay but uh yeah I, I too enjoyed it okay that's what i'm doing yeah pdf will be shared don't worry dimple okay yeah kaushalya yeah thank you yeah if i miss some nani yeah thank you and aditya yeah, like everyone like was part of the session i am really thankful to you and just uh, stay awake tomorrow also we'll have a last session and then we'll just party off after six days we'll have a good party fine yeah sure yeah we'll wait yeah sure hey have a good night guys like have a sound sleep and we'll see you tomorrow fine bye yeah bye ravishram sharma bye shubham yeah Yeah, bye. Thank you. Thank you, Alpha. Thank you, Chushma. Good night. Yeah.